Hello gamers and gamerettes. I just had to pop in because I saw PIU phones ask, did Cyber beat Rent a Hero? I had to go to sleep before the last stream movie was finished. Um, no. Yes and no. Yes, I finished Rent a Hero, but I didn't beat that game. It beat me. I'm not being cute. If you watch the end of that stream, you know you know what I mean. Uh, uh, yeah, this is, I'm playing, I guess I'll just get into this now, my whole spiel. I'm going to be playing Barkley 2, the janky demo, the one they released ages ago. So originally when I was thinking I was going to do a Barkley 2 stream, I was going to make it a whole big thing where I like looked at the original Kickstarter. I looked at, um, it's funny, the best, the most like first hand documentation is the something awful thread for this game. A bunch of devs have posted in there back in development and after development, if you know what I mean. And um, I really wanted to go through the whole saga and like uh, just like everything that happened along development that we know of. But at the end of the day, um, I don't I don't really want to rehash a bunch of drama. I'd rather just sort of focus on the game stuff that we actually ended up getting. Uh, that said, I, I do actually want to do like a bigger Barkley 2 breakdown stream where I um I actually go through the source code, which was leaked. I, I, I knew that, but I forgot it. I basically completely had to stop caring so much about Barkley 2 after the initial janky demo came out and the initial cancellation. So when Paperjack released the source code, the only thing I really saw from that was the, um, the hoops wheat field scene where he, the singing. I guess I, I do remember seeing that, so I guess I was sort of aware of this uh, leak, but I was always like, ah, I'm too lazy to, I mean, I didn't want to, I wanted to do it, but I was like, at the same time, I didn't want to do it, because it was kind of painful having to admit to myself that the game was never coming out, but I will, for a later stream, I'm going to download Game Maker 1.4 and just dive into the source, just see what other fucked up shit we can find, but for today, just for today, I'm going to pretend like I'm uh, from an alternate dimension and the game actually is finished. I'm just going to play through what we got in the janky demo and, uh, you know, enjoy it for what it is. And, um, yeah, I guess uh, the funny thing about this game is it's so ambitious. I'll get into this more as I start playing it, but, like, it's not like Barky One. There's, gonna be, there's like, a bunch of little side quests and the, all of them have, like, a bunch of different ways they can end. So, obviously, I'm going to be playing through the whole janky demo more than once. It's not even that long, but... You'll see. Um, but today I'm just going to be doing sort of a regular going through. I'll probably just end when it gets to the Huskow. Last time I got there, I couldn't figure out how to do the escape mini game, but maybe this time I'll figure it out. Oh yeah, someone asked me earlier what I thought of the Dark Draker. He'll he'll cut down any anyone who threatens his person or ideals. Maybe the stream will end when I get to a Dark Draker. We'll see. We shall see. We shall see. Tune to or Cyber Souls of the Infinity. I'm glad people like my stupid fake VTube thing. I just thought it was visually helpful being able to see when I'm talking. You know? You know? Um, I'm... I'm gonna be right back really quick and then we're gonna get started. Hold on.
Right, so I guess I forgot to even mention what Barkley 2 is. Um, so if you were there for my last stream, I played Barkley Shut Up and Jam Gaiden, which was a very fun little game. So the guys behind that decided they wanted to do a sequel, um, but it wasn't just going to be like another silly RPG Maker game, they wanted to make like a real game. So they went to Kickstarter, they raised a bunch of money for Barkley 2, um, which is more of um, a real-time top-down action guns brasting RPG type game. Anyways, to cut a very long story short, the game never ended up materializing. Not for lack of effort, but uh, a lot of feature creep. There's a lot of reasons. Again, I don't want to. I'll just. I'm just. I'm just laying out what the game even is. If you've never heard of it, if you saw my last stream for Barkley Gaiden, at least you'll have some context. If you didn't even see that one, you're gonna be very confused. But it should still be <laughs> an enjoyable stream. It should still be good. Because I mean, they've, what, it's like, they didn't want to make it only accessible to people who played that game, anyways. But uh, yeah. I know everyone's just gonna be like, it's just another one of those classic Kickstarter fail stories, you know? But this came out, the the Kickstarter for it was back in like 2012. This was like, you don't remember, this was the early, 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 early days of Kickstarter. Everyone was so gung-ho about Kickstarter. This was before any massive public Kickstarter fails scared everyone away from, not everyone away, people still fucking use Kickstarter, you know what I mean? But. I don't know. I've, I've, you know, I, I, of course, I was one of the people who backed it. I got my Cyber Dwarf Daki Makuro, which was one of the tier things. So I didn't, I didn't walk away empty-handed. Of course, I didn't end up getting a game, but it is what it is. What's up, Colonel Panic? Anyways, let's just stop beating around the bush. Let's get this bad boy up and running. Give me a second here. Did they ever make an official Dilbert game? I don't think so. Thank you very much, Vasilla. Silly, excuse me. Here we go. Oh, yeah, I muted the game when I was experimenting earlier. Here we go. Barkley 2, the janky demo, as you can see. This was, uh, the story behind this game, this demo, was after a big public, like, it basically, by 2019, it became obvious the game wasn't coming out. Uh, the original devs at that point had left the project. It wasn't even a, I don't even know if it was a skeleton team at that point. I don't even know if this was before they hired Paperjack. I can't remember. If, there might have been, like, no one actually working on the game. Anyways, the point is, they whipped up something that they had just to show to backers. This was still during this weird period of time where... I'm not going to get too much into this drama or whatever, but this was during the weird period of time where Broom was still, like... No, 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 guys, we're, we're still gonna fix, we're gonna fix it, we're gonna finish it up, we're gonna polish it, and we're gonna fi finish the game. And everyone knew that wasn't happening, they are just like, just, what are you talking about, just release the source code. But he was like, no, 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 we're gonna finish it, and then he was like, I'm gonna start posting blog posts, and they did like two blog posts and just vanished from the internet. Anyways, I still don't know if he was actually delusional and thought that they really were gonna finish it, or if that was just like a legal thing, they don't want to legally be like, yeah, we gave up, you know? Again, I don't even know what the whole situation for that is, but for today... We're just gonna be hanging out. We're gonna be making a. We're gonna be going through the wonderful character creation process and checking out the uh, the, the couple of areas where you can that you can see in the demo. And yeah, like I said, this is really the source uh, like files that end up being leaked. But this is like the only real playable thing that was ever. Well, I guess there's bat b-ball tactics again. I'm gonna cover a lot of the extra stuff in that next upcoming Barkley Two stream. I'm gonna become the preeminent Barkley Two streamer, the guy. Who streams this game? All right, enough beating around the bush. Yeah, I love that the uh, the first one is Canon playthrough. Do not steal. <laughs> um, have you ever played the Telltale Homestar games? Yeah, I think I mentioned that in my fucking wiki video. Uh, yeah, I did finally, recently, only only recently actually get around to playing those, and they were quite enjoyable. I don't really know. I'm not. This is not me being hater. I just I don't know how hard those would hit if you're not a Homestar fan. But if you are a Homestar fan. They're great games. Oh, what's up, Oprah Zeb? What's up? Thank you very much. Very kind of you. All right. It's kind of nice to give you an option to skip right to the gameplay. 
you don't want to do this if you've already done this character creation. The character creation bit is good. Let's just get into it. Greetings, young one. I've been awaiting your arrival for some time now. The world has been awaiting for your arrival. Ah, but my manners. Please, take a seat and make yourself comfortable. Please, t or tell me about yourself. Yes, your name. What is your name? Yo, what's up? Thank you very much, Ben. Benjamin Saint. How's it going? I'm so, I'm so bad. I, I, I can't handle a keyboard that isn't QWERTY, even though my, my mind is like automatically trying to go. Oh, wait, I forgot. I can uh, generate. Erpatep. Quaxazax. Oolerol. I, I, it's, it's pretty good. These are some goodly, goodly generated games. E I hope or pre-made Maiden, Bryson, Payden, Hayden, Brayden, Maiden, Caden, Naden, Brayden. Leaping all right. Let's just let's let's just let's, let's, let's mash until we get a good one here. This doesn't matter, by the way. This literally doesn't matter at all. Okay, Boko Peril. Now that's a good name. Yes, an ancient name, a noble name. It's been some time since I've heard that name, and yet I knew you carried it as soon as I laid eyes on you. It's a name that bears much strength, but also much sorrow. It's a name with a tragic history, a glorious history, and it is a name with a history yet unwritten. Now answer me these questions, Boko Peral. It is by light that the troglodyte emerged from the cave to become man, and it is by light that man navigates the cosmos to become more. The stars, the heavens, tiny specks of flame that illuminate the night, have guided human thought and imagination since the dawn of our race. We find our way, draw our energy, build our civilizations through their luminescence, and we find ourselves through them. It is the incandescent mind of man that imprinted its legends in the stars, the zodiacs, Tell me your birthday, so I may tell you your star. So you have to pick your the day, the month, and then the year. This is the gag. Look, <laughs> it's impossible to like actually pick the right fucking year. <laughs> I'll just say, uh, 5,000. No, 4,999. Clispaith era or before Clispaith era. It is an honor to stand before a warrior of the Virgo star sign, chivalrous and valiant. Your heart burns with a sincerity unknown in our modern times. But soon, you may be forced to choose between your idealism and reality. Know thou that every fixed star hath its own planets and every planet its own creatures, whose numbers no man can compute. I also see in you a wild energy, a bond that ties you to every living thing in the cosmos, no matter its origin or form. The empathic kinship with all life within you is perhaps the most powerful force that can exist. More than 1,000 atomic bombs, and for this reason, it is your greatest strength. And what blood runs through your veins? Blood A, blood B, A, B. Oh, <laughs> corn syrup. Obviously, you gotta say corn syrup. Yes, yes. The blood of warriors, the blood of kings. Your heritage is one of greatness, and it confers in you much strength. Perhaps enough to save us all. Most importantly, what gender do you see yourself as? Not just biologically, but mentally, spiritually. Who are you? Okay, male, female, dwarf, eunuch, other. Question, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> um, 
Let's do male, dwarf, other. <laughs> we all live by codes, whether or not we realize it. Some struggle to uphold the values of our society, the lawful, while others choose to follow their whims and desires, the chaotic. Some reach outward through acts of charity and kindness, the good, and others delve inward, indulging in the pleasures of our earthly existence, the evil. It has been said that the differences between these groups, ah, no, these archetypes, these fundamental paradigms of human capability are irreconcilable. I do not believe so, but I digress. Roby says, sorry, sorry, this game exists, or am I being subjected to tapes? Yep, it's just a demo, it's just a demo, sadly. I will make a series of statements, and I will ask you whether you agree, disagree, or have no opinion at all. It's through this method we will determine the code by which you live. Yeah, I'm glad people, well, I'm glad that I get to show this to people who didn't know it. I'm sure that people who never even heard of Barkley 2, people who knew about Barkley 2, but never played the janky demo, so. It was kind of a minor splash when it came out, but not, it wasn't that big. Like, not that many people probably actually played it. Statement. Teachers are bullshit. Strongly. Gotta strongly agree. I love the, uh, their um, chaotic neutral, like, lawful neutral grid. Their D&D &D archetype grid. It looks so fucking cool. Dude, all the art in this game that never got to actually see the light of day made by Frankie is so fucking good. Statement. There is a lot of untapped power in jocks. Neutral. <laughs> My goal is to amass more trophies than anyone else. Disagree. Yes, I'm an epic, I'm an epic, chaotic, neutral, just like real life. I am descended from an ancient jock. Strongly disagree. The government doesn't have the right to tell gamers what to play. Strongly agree. Some some won't move you. I spend more time in cyberspace than meat space. Strongly agree. Unfortunately, I know that's a less chaotic path. Yes, it is all becoming very clear now. Your answers have revealed to me the fundamental core of your beliefs. You are neutral good. People who are neutral good follow their conscience and code of ethics, but do not necessarily feel obligated to do so within the boundary of the law. You feel that the law is a good thing, but can be misused in the wrong hands. You generally try to defend the poor and weak of the post-cyberpocalypse. Neutral good is the alignment most found in cyber pilgrims and Afrofuturists. Dracula and Popeye are both neutral good. Your family crest represents where you've come from and who you are. Draw your family's crest on this shield. Okay, so, sorry to have to do this, but the gag here is that it's really loud. <laughs> yes, yes. Interesting. There's understated dignity to your family crest. Hints of a noble and glorious path. Past. Yes, your heraldry truly depicts the greatness of your line. And perhaps it portends an even greater future. Gaze upon these cards I hold my hand, my child. More than mere playing cards, the tarot are indescribably powerful divinatory tools, a product of ancient hermetic wizards who sought the true forbidden knowledge of humanity and the greater universe through the invocation of their god Toth. The eternal figures that emblazon these guard faces are but notes singing the ancient refrain that has endlessly reverberated in the minds of mankind since our descent from the stars. They provide a conduit between the earthly domain we inhabit, the oceanic depths of our collective unconscious, and the drawing of these cards forges an inviolable covenant between the endless past, your boundless destiny, and the divine energies which shape our untold future. With this warning, I ask that you choose one card at a time from the four I will place in front of you. The first card drawn is very important. Take its image into your mind and hold it close to your heart. This is the significator and will serve as your representation or avatar within this mystic tableau.
Ah, the official rules. It looks like fate is smiling upon you, youngster. This card represents society becoming more than the sum of its parts, guided by justice and the rule of law. I have no doubt in time you too will find greatness within yourself, but only by abiding the rules that your elders have laid out for you. The card you draw next is the Herald, and will give us a glimpse into your future. Yo, what's up, Gamers Tavern? Justice. Equilibrium set the scales off balance. Now it is time to draw the mirror. <laughs> it will show to you your deepest desires or your worst fears. Hierophant. The Hierophant has devoted his life to Clis Pythe. He subjects his body and soul to extreme trials and renews himself with his unwavering piety. His disquieting presence is an indication of how far he has passed outside of this world and into a divine one. Imitating his spiritual ardor and the legendary humility will be fruitful if you face like ordeals. The final card, the world. This card will serve as a conduit between all the cards that came before it. All that you have seen here will be linked by the world. An ominous sign, the cracked dome. Something is fractured and edges closer to complete obliteration. I can't tell what it is, an open seam, metaphysical glitch, or foreign entity. But it is terribly wrong and only getting worse. <laughs> you must find this problem and stop it. Purge it from the stream of existence, Boko Perol. You have no more time to waste here. I'm putting the cards away now. You are a candy enthusiast, am I correct? Ah, yes, a gumball lover. Surely you'd like a gumball, wouldn't you? What do you say? Do you want a gumball? Ah, I thought so. I also enjoy the occasional gumball. Here, take this quarter. It will aid your endeavor to acquire gumball. Acquired quarter. Warning! Only one quarter remaining. Continue anyway. Acquired gumball. A gleaming gumball, the color of the sun. It would be prudent to accept a bright, perhaps illuminating flavor from a yellow gumball. When it is nearing dawn, take it in your hand. You should feel your hopes rising with the sun. What flavor are your hopes set on? Banana or lemon? Banana. A lemon. Interesting. Even quite interesting. <laughs> a lemon gumball by Clisp Hayes. Your parents planted a seed with your placenta. You are bound to this tree and its growth mirrors your own. It bears your experience as rings, its fruit, only as ripe as your spirit is wise. Fertilize the tracks of your mind with knowledge till the folds of your brain with the plowshare of the contemption. It is spring, little tree, and your branches stretch towards the sun as your potential awakens from the seed. It is time to begin your growing, or continue growing. In ages long past, shamans would draw their strength from rune stones, fossilized candies passed on from grandpa to grandchild. The shamans use the powers of the runes to heal, to curse, to smite foes, to communicate with the dead, to perceive in ways inconceivable. The old ways are gone, washed away in the tide of modernity, and perhaps it is best that way. But there ex yet exist fragments of the old ways, scattered remnants of a life made obsolete by new technologies and new beliefs. I possess a small collection of these rune stones, their power unknown even to me. Perhaps the secrets contained within the runes can unlock the secrets of the cosmos. Or perhaps it is better lies dormant. Would you like to have one, Boko Peral? Yes, nah. A courageous answer. I will present to you my modest collection. All you need to do is draw the rune stone you feel most attuned to. I wish you well, youngster. Maka, spirit of fire. Ashka, Ashak, haunt of dwarves. Dilly dong dong, kelpie of corn cobs. Zatar, phantom of vidcons. Nippon, apparition of anime. Olap, wraith of rice balls. Eshtach, specter of winter. Tuh, ghost of grandpa. <laughs> okay, uh, well, obviously, Nippon, apparition of anime. Like the unruly children who scream and shout, you too love the animes. You yearn to dress funny and are overweight. 
Ah, I hope the ancient wisdoms have enlightened your path as much as they have mine. The cool days of spring grow warmer as summer approaches. A gentle breeze tickles the budding leaves of your branches. Continue growing. The joke is you can finally end this overly long convoluted character creation sequence now if you choose to start living, but you can keep drawing it out. And I'm going to keep drawing it out. You better believe I'm going to keep drawing it out. <laughs> You have been preoccupied with my crystal ball for some time, youngster. Look deep inside. The visions are vivid, are they not? Fear not. They are not real. Only fragments of days past. Glances at the turning points in the lives of others. Perhaps these visions are a glimpse of your own past. Or a past that could have been. I think Cyrus shall let the Dilbert music on. No, this is actually part of the game. <laughs> Or maybe they are simply the products of whimsy, the untamed creative energies of my magical orb, a thing far beyond the reckoning of man. Whatever these visions may be, I ask that you place yourself in them, act without restraint, and make the choices that are most true to yourself. You're looking tired, my son. Drink this milk to grow stronger. Take the milk and throw it in his face. Submissively drink the milk. Pretend to drink the milk, but dump it out when dad's not looking. You're just another pawn of big dairy. This corn better be shucked by the time I get back, says Dad as he motions to a large mound of corn on the table. And if it's not, he adds ominously, you're grounded. Resignedly shuck the corn, knowing full well that you will be soon enjoying the kernels of your labor. Create corn husk dolls to distract your father. Get the gang together and have a corn shucking party. Run away from home. Um, definitely the corn husk dolls. That's me. Coach just doesn't seem to notice when you perform well today. She compliments the other players for the layups when yours are better, and you didn't even and didn't even see her dunk. Is she ignoring you? Someday soon you'll be coach. Do jumping jacks to impress coach. Bulk up on carbs for more energy. Um, um, um. I like that. Someday soon you'll be coach. Cliss Pace, I know it's been a while. We don't talk like we used to, but I've always kept you in my heart. I haven't always been the most faithful follower, but I need you now more than ever. If you do this one thing for me, I'll pray every day. I need you to finish your homework. Finish my homework for me. Make me stealthier than a puma. Give me chiclets and gum. Go scrooge yourself! Oh yeah, fuck you, Cliss Pace. The visions are mysterious things, are they not? I sometimes lose myself in them, exploring the fragments of moments long gone, or perhaps they never were. What truths can the choices we make reveal about ourselves? And to what extent can a single choice forever alter our F-A-T-E? <laughs> but the visions are, after all, merely illusions. The rays of sun shine down and nourish you. With their warmth, you grow stronger every day. I'm going to show you a series of formless ink blot pictures. All you have to do is tell me the first thing that comes to mind for each of the pictures. It's very simple and perhaps even enjoyable. Basketball shorts, basketball net, basketball court, basketball cheerleader. Um, kind of looks more like a net to me. College basketball, NBA, high school basketball, Little League basketball. Mm. That's got to be in the NBA. Hardcore. Pre-game warm-up. Basketball play with assistant basketball coach. Slam dunk. Yeah, it's got to be that. Bouncing basketball. Swooshing basketball. Dunked basketball. Deflated basketball. That's a deflated basketball. Interesting. Very interesting. The Rorschach test does not fall strictly within the lines of traditional soothsaying, but I believe modern psychology can be a powerful and insightful tool to gauge the human psyche. Indeed, I have learned much from this. And it is my hope that you have as well. Your powerful branches caress the sky and provide shade for others. A baby bird sings its first song as it awaits anxiously for its mother's return. Keep going. Keep going! I'm going to give you a list of topics separated into two categories, likes and favorites. For each like, choose the item you more prefer. For favorites, 
even more so. I ask only that you respond candidly. The results of this exercise depend on the complete veracity of your answers. And besides, you don't need to impress me. I'm already quite impressed. Choose your likes. Battle tactic. <laughs> Operation ground and pound class. Sport, e-hoop and ball. Class. Like these are my likes, not my not my favorites, right? All right. Um, food, gotta be sorghum. Footwear, snowshoes, obviously snowshoes. Rock suit. This is now this one battle tactic. Magician orb, gotta be magician orb. Although I like jumping jack to build vigor. Crawling on ground to surprise foes. Okay, fine, I'll go with that one. Class. Pre-algebra. Sport, basketball, hoop ball, hoop and ball, college hoop and ball, para hoop and ball, outdoor hoop and ball, field hoop and ball, e hoop and ball, net ball, dunk ball, or amateur dunk ball. How about e hoop and ball? Class. Samurai. Teacher. <laughs> uh, Sir Delwag. Star. Barnard Star. Animal. Now this one. Definitely the axolotl. Approve. Choose your favorites. Racial foe one. <laughs> YouTube Let's Players. Definitely that one. <laughs> Racial foe two. Uh... Wear snails. Phobia, claustrophobia, agoraphobia, quinophobia, necrophobia, zauberphobia. Definitely zauberphobia. I'm definitely I'm terrified of zaubers. My favorite zauber, of course. Gotta be identified bugbear. Landmarks on the moon. Uh, Neo New York Harbor. VidCon A. It's gotta be fate gain revelation. Wait, hold on. Clown school to VidCon C. Biomagician news escape from Brain City. Review. Bingo. Ah. Your answers were quite intriguing. Particularly provocative was your favorite sport. Perhaps I misread you. You are indeed a youngster of many facets. Winter's bitter breath blows mercilessly against your tired branches. The last of your leaves fall silently to the cold earth. <laughs> Finally force you to start the game. There's more of those screens. Like, I didn't even see all of the different ones you could see. <laughs> so it begins, Boca Parole. The promise has been made. Oof. Line is a big oof sees, if you know. You don't need a reason to help people. Not getting any vitals. Vitals are janked to all heck. No signs of breathing. We're losing the objective. Administering resuscitative spank. Stand clear. Spank inbound. Initiating spank. Wah. Ugh, wah. Spank successful. Looks like our intel is right for once. This must be the mark. That's good luck. Thought we'd have to be cracking eggs all day. Are you sure? This doesn't look like much. Operation Valkyrie states to extract a youngster powerful beyond its years. Look at those traps and delts, not to mention those tries and lats. That looks like power to me. <laughs> we'll see. The bees are returning to the hive. I repeat, the bees are returning to the hive. Papa Bear is hungry. Grab the honey and run. I'm going with him. Let's see if you and Big Baby there can keep up. Let's get up, youngin. Can you walk? Redacted said you'd have a hard time walking at first. It's it's easy, though. You can get around just by pressing the directional keys. Come on, follow me. I'm actually going to be trying to play this on a gamepad. If possible, it is possible. Use left stick to move around. Use action button to interact with NPCs. 
mysterious youngster. Okay, I guess he doesn't have anything to say about all the horrifying <laughs> mutilated corpses. Does someone just say action button with Tim Rogers? Yeah, that's exactly what's going on here. It's a, it's a reference. Use left bumper. Execute a roll. See those bulbs there? It's kind of tricky, but I find the best way to get through them is just throwing your own body against them. I know it sounds dangerous, but try as you might, you'll never get any of that glass stuck to you. It's called the gaffer's paradox. Give it a shot with a left bumper. It's a hoot! You gonna roll or what? Hold on there, youngster. I don't think rolling is gonna help you with those bigger barrels. Try this instead. Got a pistol. Whoa, 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 be careful. Where you point your guns. That's pretty much rule number uno. Oh, by the way, thank you very much, Oprah Zeph, for the, uh, the bits. Um, I don't think I have bit in turned on, like, enabled, because I haven't really fucked with my stream settings since, like, uh, the notification settings, I mean, because I only barely remember to turn on subscriptions, but thank you very much. It's appreciated, even if it's just five bits. Whoa, 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 be careful. That's where you, uh, yeah, okay, I read that. I think a better target for your guns and bullets are those barrels over there. Give them a brass with the right bumper. My mission order is to tell you that you can press right mouse button to take out your guns and then left mouse button to brass them. Click the right mouse button to toggle between adventure mode and guns mode. I think it's called adventure mode and brass mode, but who cares? Am I done now? Can we get out of this clips forsaken metal dungeon? Okay, B pulls out the gun, and then it's sort of like a t dual stick thing. Remember, just aim and squeeze. Maybe get a sweet drop from those barrels. Looks like that door is locked. Dang. I told you, Corporal. Knew we should have gone back from whence we came instead of striking out on in this new route. Or I'll get, you're gonna get all of us killed, including your precious objective. Wait, let me just think here. Hmm. I've got it. When we were tykes, my brother Grotus and I played a lot of vidcons. Wow, a dwarf playing a lot of vidcons? Big whoop. I remember in the second dungeon of Hyperborea No Legends, you know, the orc fields, when your party is just made up of Klaust and Henrietta, you get stuck in a room and the only option is to find a wall switch and flick it to open a door. And, well, you know what they say, life imitates art. Let's look for a switch. Wow, good thinking, kid. If you hadn't opened this door, we couldn't have proceeded further. Yeah, real genius, this one. <laughs> Come on, let's get out of here before we get roasted by a derg. All right, follow me. All right, things are going to get a little dicey up ahead. There are reports of Durgar patrols. You think you can brast with that thing at a moving targets? Ugh, or uh, uh, Yeah, <laughs> looks like our intel is right. I was told you might be hesitant to pick up arms and fight. That's why he told me to bring a little something with me. Hold on a sec. Ah, here we go. A bottle of jalapeno juice, or I guess there's no skin, it's a jalapeno juice. <laughs> Take a sip of this. It'll get you into the right mood. Not to mention a little boost to guts and luck. <laughs> Give, gulp the uh, uh, uh. Down it all in one go. Let's just say the taste is less than to be desired. <coughs> hmm. Too potent. Well, maybe we'll get used to it. Maybe you should just stick to candies. Follow me. Come on, get a grip, Zane. We're dying out here. Those drones are wiping the floor with us. That's not to mention what will happen when a Duragar turns the corner, and this diapered wonder is our only hope. I know that orders were to come here and rescue this kid, but we've already lost most of our unit. Even Firewall Joe was no match for these guys. 
We all mourn the loss of Firewall Joe, a true hero to dwarves, and his sacrifice will be forever scribed in the annals of dwarf history. But this is our mission, a mission of the highest order. And if you can't trust the cyber dwarf, then you shouldn't have volunteered on this most important of sorties. Cliff Spath, Christ. Yeah, all right, I get it, I get it. This is my umpteenth sorting. What has this kid done? Oh yeah, stuck in an egg for a few thousand years. Must have been a real trial just to float around a yolk without a care in the world. Boo hoo, cry me a river. Stand down, jawed freak. Just think, when we get back to the base, there will be tubers as far as the table goes. We'll be able to eat our fill of those very tubers. This sortie is a load of horse patoot, but you're right. I do it for the tubers. There's only one way out of this, and that's forward. I'll take up the rear. Hmph. Messiah my anus. Good luck, kid. You'll need it. Guys, tubers means potatoes. It's not talking about YouTubers. Zane is waiting for you, Mattia. You're doing great. Nothing like a little jalapeno juice to get you back in the game. Ugh. Listen up. We've already lost a lot of people on this mission, and I doubt it's gonna get any easier moving forward. It is absolutely crucial that we get you to the Cyber Dwarf as soon as possible. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> you must be still be really confused about what's happening. Don't worry. Once you meet the Cyber Dwarf, all will be made clear. Just focus on staying alive for now. Okay? Now let's talk. Zaubers. Zaubers are used on the battlefield. It can really help you out when you're in a tough... Got one of those little fuckers. Hey, you, big baby, your turn. Hmm, <laughs> so you locked the door. Can't stay in there forever. Yeah, one contentious aspect of this game by some of the people who are working on it. It has a very, very, very bleak tone a lot of the time. It's funny and bleak at the same time. I think that's kind of a funny juxtaposition, but there was some... I'll get into that later. Let's just enjoy the game for now. <laughs> Begin scan on Chosen One. Scan complete. Chosen one status. In slumbered. Chosen one brood count. 6.02 e to the e to the 23rd, I guess to, to the 23rd power. Chosen one gumption. Normalized. Chosen one contagions. Zero. Eternal, external environmental anomaly detected. Rescanning. Contagions. One. Noob detected. Noob detected. Cybernetic egg servant. Egg drone. Initiate program decimation.exe. Yeah. <laughs> Takes a while to get a hang of the combat. There we go, there we go. Brood status riled up, severity to the gills. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Hold on, is this a shooter? Yes. This is an action game, not an RPG. Playing this would suck ass for coming franchises. Yeah, not to be a hater, but they never got time to really fully iron out all the gameplay to make it perfectly, you know. Yeah, it's an action RPG, and uh, that's one of the main issues. Yeah, again, making good action RPG is not easy. Coming off of an RPG maker style project is not actually an RPG maker. The screen shaking was because I think I, I'm moving the right stick around to look around, but I know that it whips the camera around in a very disorienting way for um, the viewers. Maybe I'll try playing with keyboard and mouse. I think that would be less fucked up looking. Greetings! I'm Archambeau. I'm a Duragar. We Duragars are one of the main antagonists of the game. Be careful around us. Time to die, bitch! Go. <laughs> Adios, fucker. 
<laughs> ah, nothing beats killing and torturing rebel scum and their diapered friends. Maybe there's some more of them around here. Licks chops. What is this? Fleshy interloper. Question. <laughs> it doesn't belong. A swaddling babe lying in a heap. It doesn't belong. I guess see where they reuse most of it. So yeah, there's a lot of reuse songs. Like people were listening to Dilbert song earlier, pointed that out. Uh, very talented musician, very talented guy. Broken, but still functioning. It must be fixed. Proceed to HUD installation procedure. Learn about the heads up display. Look at it breathe so hideously. Supple skin, organs anointed in b -b 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 balls. Send it back to the living. No, it is too weak to exist in the world of Quacklane. We must make it stronger. A babe swaddled in absorbent liners. Give it the clothes of the speaking ape. Equip the babe with a jerkin. Yes, a jerkin. A jerkin, a jerkin of corn husk. Now the thing has life. Look at this living babe. Grossly simian, repulsively biotic. Yes, look, it is fully biotic. There. Can now track its progress. When the body dies, the matter is discarded. When the matter is discarded, it joins with us, with the rest of the cast up. This was related to a very strange mechanic where, like, the more you die, the less biological you are. And that was supposed to have some kind of effect in the game, of which I'm still not 100% clear on. Like, sentient, but not alive. Yes, joining with us in inevitable, with each tick-tocking moment of time, with each cut, scrape, and concussion, with each death, the bay will inch closer to us, to the pile. Sounds like Cruelty Squad. It is not entirely unlike Cruelty Squad, although Cruelty Squad is different. It's more of a difficulty mechanic thing, but the, the, the basic concept. <coughs> now, give the babe its substance. Give the babe its guts, the innards of gumption. Also give the babe its luck, the connection to fate. Rainbow Fisher says, wasn't that another thing that killed this game? Was the bit of a million mechanics being thrown? Yes, it's classic case, textbook case of feature creep, unfortunately, sadly. Again, I can't blame him who doesn't want to put cool features in their game. But uh, you know how it is. And it's acrobatics to excel in tumbling and floor exorcises. <laughs> Do not forget, might. To lift heavy loads and piety. To settle and ground the babe to holy scripture. If not, the madness of the cosmos will consume it. Give it the power to wield the guns of the dwarfs. It is done. The babe can now brast with the multitudinous guns of the dwarfs. Is the death scripted? No, yeah, this is a scripted death. Don't worry. This is all part of the intro sequence still. Now, give it arms to wield the guns. The little babe can now hold the heft of guns, but will ever walk the line of encumbrance and will always know the count of the bullets. But a braster brasts not with bullets alone. The periodic meter is now assembled. This babe of the highest order can now trigger the gun's special effect. The gun's periodic effect, that means nothing. It is completely inconsequential to combat, mortal or otherwise. We are a fool for adding the periodic effect. Fine. We will give the bay pockets for the jerkin. There. And now is a pocket for whatever things a biotic creature requires. Good luck. And the other pocket can be for the Zaubers. We sense the Zaubers will rise again. It's been many TikToks since the gaze. The gaze equals Bellork phenomenon. Zaubers will rise again. Rise, as this babe will rise as well. We are doing well, uh, so well with the babe. Give it a scrolling marquee. News is important in this TikTok. And democracy dies in dankness. <laughs> yes, the marquee is glorious. The babe will be within the zeitgeist at all TikToks. And will always be reminded of what is its purpose. Good. We are pleased. 
the scrolling marquee is much more useful than the foolish hearty special shots and give the babe wiki or Wi-Fi, excuse me, I'm too excited about Wikipedia. <laughs> Wi-Fi, that's right. Yes, the Wi-Fi. Of course you gotta get the Wi-Fi. I forget if that's actually related to Dwarfnet or if it's one of the purely purely decorative ones. There it is done. The babe is now a youngster, forlorn from its long resting place and cast into the land of the living. We do the same. Cast the creature back. Let us hope it does not return for its own sake. Where? Where am I? Who am I? Was I dreaming just now? No, it was something else. I hear voices in the distance, screams for mercy. Cries of despair. I see rusted rooftops and vandalized housing on the horizon, drowning in smog so thick you could cut it with a wakizashi. A city of some sort? There must be people there. People who know what's going on. Should probably go in there. That one-eyed man said something about the cyber dwarf. That name sounds so familiar. I'd better get going. Yeah, I understand what you mean, Vasilia. There's definitely a bit of that in the game. Congratulations, Lucky Dwarfs. You've been selected by the benevolent AI Kukulin to live in the absolutely fabulous Tirnanog, located aboard the space ziggurat Z Necron 7. Tirnanog is the upscale, ultramodern arcology of the future. Next! This... This is it. I've been waiting for you my whole life. We're finally in Tier Nano. I don't want to be here. I'm scared and I just want to go home. I don't like Cullen. Next! Get moving, you lazy sacks of... Features many wonderful amenities. From all the fruit, grapes, and prunes you can eat, to free first-class housing, to dozens of fun activities, like weekly bingo and calisthenics, all provided free of charge by the generous and munificent Cullen. Weekly bingo and free grapes! I love bingo, and I love Kukulin! I do too, but I just want to go home to the Sombrero Galaxy. <laughs> what was that? What the hell was that? What? Truly, Tiranog is the premier intergalactic luxury vacation destination. With our helpful Duragar assistance waiting on hand and knee for your call, you never need to move a finger. Is that rebel talk I heard? Are you a plant? Hey boys, looks like we got a rebel on our hands. I I'm not a rebel. You wanna know what Kukulin does to rebels around here? You wanna know? Ugh. <laughs> That's what we do to rebels around here. Let that be a lesson to all of you who mess with Kukulin. Get out of line, and you deal with us. Next, gotta move on, slackers. And the best part of it all is that when every dwarf in the galaxy is in Tirnanu, uh, Kukulin is gonna give each and every one of you a special prize. Next! Get over here. Alright, kid. What's your name and where are you from? I... I don't know. Not gonna tell me your name, kid. I don't know my name. I don't remember who I am. I don't know where I am. I just want to go home. Alright, well, if you're not gonna tell me your name... Can you believe that? A prize for each and every dwarf. What do you think it will be? Then I'm gonna give you one. <laughs> Looks like from now on your name's gonna be What do you think your prize is gonna be? X114 Jam 9 Is that Is that me? Is that who I have to be? Is this who I am? X114 Jam 9 
Come on, sleepyhead, the festival is about to begin. Ah, there. That's better. Youngsters like you are always keeping your hours late and your chores undone. Chores? No, no, don't worry, little head whippersnapper. Old Wilmer got most everything done himself. These old bones <coughs> are still good for something. The table's varnished and the butterscotch is out of the oven. Butterscotch? Now, Sonny, there's time for jaw jabbering and lollygagging after the mortgage is paid. The gate. A city. I was at some city, and the, I was stopped. They knocked me down. They? Oh, the Duragars. Yeah, they'll do that, those brutes. Every dwarf gets registered. Every dwarf pays the rent. Those are the rules. Looks like they made it, uh, made it so you won't ever forget that. X114 Jam 9. I know your name, youngster. These old eyes aren't totally gone. Old Wilmer can still read. Like the back of your neck. <laughs> what am I doing here? I'd say you're doing the pooch and not getting your chores done, by golly. Uh. Tarnation. The mortgage, young piker. The mortgage. It's on the table. 100 Nero shekels for the mortgage payment. Plus your allowance. <laughs> not that you deserve it. Back in my day, we had little money. And 30 Nero shekels went a long way. Now head on over to the housing department and make sure <coughs> you tell them it's Tenement 3, Bungalow 2 of Southeast Sector 4. Don't you dally. Wait, you want me to actually pay your rent? My mortgage, my mortgage. But you can bet your bottom dollar I do. You know firsthand how those blue baddies treat dwarfs when they step out of line. So get weaving, youngster. Don't forget old Wilmer's trusty blunderbuss. Ne'er-do-wells abound on the mean streets of Tirnanog. I guess I have to. I'll just ahem, give these old orbs a rest now. When you get back, youngin, be sure to take this butter out. He's passed out. What am I gonna do? Tirna Nog is just out these doors. It's the stuff Mr. Wilmer wanted me to take. Let's see. Got Wilmer's amortization schedule. This funny looking paper seems like Mr. Wilmer's bill. There's a bunch of Neuro shekels here. 100 for the mortgage. And 30 for my allowance. Got Widower Wilmer's gun. Got the late Esther's gun. Bet Mr. Wilmer brassed a lot in his day. Sorry to see this about his wife, though. Filled pockets with butterscotch. Need a lot of these candies if I get hungry later. Got butterscotch recipe. We can use this recipe somewhere to make more candies. That's everything. Think I'm good to go. Butterscotch. Alright, nothing really in here. This is drinking him. Finally. Finally. After all these years. Tortir Nanog. Forlorn Cyber Ghetto. Why the game has finally actually started. And that. I'll be right back. <laughs> Hang on, I'll be right back.
Okay. Sorry, I drank a lot of coffee. Resume reality. I'm busy, kid. Um, sorry. Told you to piss off, I'm busy! Oops, sorry. <laughs> uh, just love he's been endlessly pissing in this grate the whole time. Hmm, box full of Indian rope. AJ Fark says, I remember playing this at Florida Supercon in 2014. I played a version of this in uh, PAX 2013 and PAX 2015. I believe those were the two years those guys came and hung out at PAX. Mostly not that different from what I remember. Hi, welcome to our city. I'm Dubre. Dubre the ob obliging. <laughs> obliging, okay. I will be your guide through our glorious city. I know everything there is to know about this place. Ask me any question about our wonderful city and I will answer it for you. For free! Who is in charge of this town? Who's pulling the strings here? Uh, hmm. I'm not sure. There are lots of people here. Maybe one of them is in charge of this town. Is there anything else you want to know? Uh, got a map. You could just show me on a map instead of telling me. Sure, I have a map. I don't really need any more since I have it perfectly memorized. Do you want it? Sell it to you for, um, 10 Euro shekels. What do you say? Uh, I'll keep my shekels. Thanks. That's okay. If you ever come back, that exact offer will still be on the table. Ah, you must need more help. Uh, where should I go to meet new people? Should I go into one of these apartment buildings? Yeah, you should definitely make sure to check all of them. In fact, I think you will not regret it. They're all just so great. There's stuff in all of them, I think. I'm not really sure. I've never been inside any of the buildings. I just like the outside so much. Anything else you want to know? You know where the mortgage office is? Uh, I gotta pay the rent. You know where I do that? The rent, huh? Yeah, I know the place for that. See that oil drum over there? The one with the red marking on it? Yeah, I see it. What about it? Okay, so first you go past that drum, then you keep on walking west until you see these stairs. Don't go up the stairs, go down south. Keep going south until you can see the wall. You know the wall, right? When you're there, don't turn back. Keep going forward past the stores. You'll reach a dead end soon th Soon enough. Don't go into the dead end. Instead, follow the path that goes up, and then, and there you go. There's the rent place. You can't miss it. All right, I think I got it. Thanks. No problem. Is there anything else you want to know? Where should I go to buy guns? If I was looking for a handy brass cannon, where would I go to buy one? Hmm, probably want a store that sells guns then. I don't know where that is. There might be one though. There also might not be. It's like a mystery. Is there anything else you want to know? Uh, where is the candy store? I need something sweet. Whoa, take it easy. Okay, the candy store. Hmm, I'm not sure if there is one. I've never been there. Candy is not good for my goiter. Is there anything else you want to know? Where should I go to play people? <laughs> I have an immense desire to slam, possibly jam. Where would I go to fill this need? Oh, yes, yes, definitely. I don't know what you were saying to me. <laughs> Is there anything else you want to know? <laughs> I need to use the bathroom. Really? That's great. I need to use the bathroom all the time too. More than most even, like continuously. Well. Since that Duragar is still using that one, let me think where the nearest one is. Oh, I know. See that oil drum over there? Yes, I I do see it. Okay, so what you have to do is you have to head down from here, past the oil drum. Then you'll come to a wall, dead end with, uh, and a wall. Don't stop there. Instead, turn left and keep going. Go all that way to the other end of this little street, right at the end of this big thing with fans on it. Don't try to touch the blades. You'll hurt yourself. Okay, from there you go a bit more north and you'll see some stairs. Don't go up the stairs. Instead, start going to the right and soon enough, you'll see a bathroom you can use. Okay, thanks. Anything else you need before we go off to the bathroom? Uh, no thanks, I'm okay. Uh, Dr. Gas Max asks, did the project uh, for this game to fix up the source code and make a more finished version ever go anywhere? Did that die as well? Yeah, it did, it did die as well. They released the source code, but the janky demo is the only ever like playable game release. I can't remember the original Shut Up and Jam guy, but ever get this wordy. Um, it was pretty wordy at times. It's funny you say that, because I'm pretty sure I remember, like, one of the wordiest fucking NPCs in the whole game is up here. <laughs> Not this guy. 
I'm not fooled by this Cullen's prize nonsense. I know what that really means. Don't let them fool you. I know what this prize rubbish is really about. Standing in line, dwarfs pushing, dwarfs shoving. And that's if I'm lucky. Probably I'll be in the bathroom when everyone gets their prize. When it comes time for me to show up at the desk to claim my prize, they'll be all out of prizes. Sorry, Ignacy, no prize for you. Everyone else is having a great time with their prize. Hope you enjoy your no prize. Everyone will have a great prize, and I'll have no prize. <laughs> okay, never mind. This is different. All the buildings look the same from the inside, the lobby at least. The uh, the NPCs have pretty good art though. I mean, it, it is a good. I, I enjoy the look of the the dour, depressing feel of the city. And there's some just walking around NPCs you can't really talk to, but they like say little things like that. Kukalian reminds you, idiots, that price fixing of Choco Mallows is a serious crime if any dwarf has information regarding the su the supply manipulation of contraband Choco Mallows. They are required to report the activity to the nearest dwarf guard. This is a rare treat now, my friends. Right now, we're passing the home of intergalactic pop music superstar Les Washbasin McGarvey. Those who listen close may be fortunate enough to hear some seductive vibes from his electric triangle. To your left is the site you all came here to see, the Reefer Peak, the tallest point on the entire planet. Hurry, make a wish before it touches the moon. We are now approaching the resting place of our glorious leader. Please, dear friends, a moment of silence. And those with a keen eye will spot the spawning ground for nature's doppelganger, the striped flamingo. Don't make eye contact with them now. You wouldn't want to lose your pocketbook. Just around the corner. There it is, the pink-bellied rhino. Look at the little one right there, rolling on his back. And there's the alpha male himself, the grandfather of all the pink-bellied rhinos, asleep as usual. Look how peaceful he is. Hush tones, my friends. They say it's bad luck to wake him. Now this is where it gets a little more dicey, ladies and gentlemen, and gremlinkin. We're about to pass the DG789088.1 crater, the only place where the center of our beautiful home is exposed. As much as you'd like to see it with your naked eyes, making direct eye contact with the star at the center of our home, We'll burn them out instantly. If you'd be so kind, please put on your sunglasses now. And to those of you that did not receive your special sunglasses, you can purchase replacements at the vending machine in the back of the trolley. What vending machine? We're reaching the end of our time together now, friends. Do you have any questions for me? Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, oh, I didn't think anyone was listening. I thought you were talking to me. Well, no, I was just talking to myself, I guess. This is what my job sounded like back before I came here. I really miss it. Oh, you were a tour guide? Well, no, but I was a tour guide's understudy. He never missed a day for 30 years. He was the best tour guide in the business. But I got to go on his tour thousands of times, every day of my life for a while there. This is probably what my life sounded like back then, I guess. It probably sounds pretty stupid just hearing me say it. You could breathe life into the script so much better than I can. I thought it was pretty cool anyways. I'd like to go there sometime can't. It's... I just really miss it. I guess I go through the top lines so I don't forget what home sounds like. When I close my eyes sometimes, I can still see I can see Westman's Borealis reflecting in the tar pits, or smell the sulfur from the twin volcanoes. It's just as real to me as those days. It's not the same, but I guess it's better than nothing, isn't it? We at Starlight Tours hope you had a great journey with us today. Don't forget to hit the gift shop on your way out. That is pretty much the average Barkley 2 NPC experience. Hey, welcome to my house. I'm Zhang. Uh, I like to dress up like a clown because I think it's real cool. I like to march around in the streets and go, Check me out, fellas. I'm a clown. I think my clown clothes look good and cool. I'm a good and cool clown. I like to kick back and goof off. I'm an authentic clown for goofing. The role of clowns in society is 
goofing. I feel empowered when I dress like a clown. I spend 100% of my time dressed like a clown. I wear these clothes constantly. I think it's cool to dress like a clown. For me, dressing like a clown is a fashion statement. I'm working on a script for my movie. Good clown, bad clown. So far, I only have the title. It's so good to dress like a clown. I recommend it. So you like spending time with a clown, eh? Uh, the one flaw with always dressing like a clown is that it prevents you from integrating with the rest of society. So true. <laughs> so true. Basilia says, one hour in, I've only seen guns be shot twice. Um, yeah, you're gonna see a lot more running around talking to people than uh, actual combat, I'm afraid. Excuse me, I'm new. Alfleda, hmm, what? I'm new here, I'm a new kid. My name is xs 14 jam 9 Do you think you could give me some help with this place? Some pointers? I'm Alfleda and I doubt it. I can barely help myself. What do you mean? I have some bad money money problems. I got evicted. I think I think I'm going down. What happened to you? Oh, the short version or the long version? Short long. I know everyone's chat is like, neither, neither short. Hit me with the long version. Okay, here goes. Recently these dwarfs I used to know, Augustine and Gelasio, showed up back in Tirnanog. Last I heard, the Durigars had banished them to the mines to toil for Kukulian, Kukulian eternally. So seeing them here was a big surprise. Dwarfs don't usually last too long around here let alone come back from the mines. But here they were, living large and blowing a lot of shekels. I didn't even know where they got them. What a dope I was. I was hanging around Augustine a few nights ago and maybe we had a bit too much juice. It's possible. He told me he forgot his billfold and asked if I would cover the, cover the check, that he would pay me back first thing the next day. I said sure and put it on my tab. It's been days now and no sign of him anywhere, from anyone. And the three people so far have told me he borrowed from them too. Then he just vanishes. I'll tell you what, I don't think that's fair to you. I know. And it was only 99,999 euro shekels. But one, that's, uh, that's a lot to me. And two, okay, here it goes. Since I didn't pay with cash the other day, the balance got charged my bank account. This would have been fine, but since I haven't been able to bring that money to the bank, I'll overdraft. Overdraft protection kicks in, and tries to cover the overdraft penalty with funds for my savings account. They don't let you turn this off. And really, even at this point, things were still fine. My utility payment is automatically deducted from my savings account. So I went down there the other morning with some of my rent money to cover that. Only after they took my money, however, the Duragars running that scam informed me that my balance had to below some arbitrary number, and now there's a low balance fee of 99,999 euro shekels. Cripes. That's cold. It turns out the low balance fees are issued every day at 11.59pm, and past zero, they become insufficient funds penalties, and which just last night I graduated into something called felony debt. What kind of place is this? So they proceed with the eviction. Even that was okay. I do fine right here on the steps. I like the steps, but I got fired from my job after I showed up with no uniform. I told them my uniform is at my apartment and I got evicted from my apartment. Really, they wouldn't let me back in. At least with a job, I wouldn't be able to pay the Duragars their protection money for a couple days anyway. What are you gonna do? Well, come the next curfew, the Duragars are gonna drag me out of here and into the sewers. I don't know what I'm actually gonna do. Hmm, it's really a, uh, it sucks. It really sucks, but thanks for listening to all that. Is there anything I can do? Honestly, I think if I sit right here, they'll beat me and throw me in the sewers instead of processing all my information and finding out how much I really owe them. At this point, this is probably the best way it can happen. Man. I know. Leave her for the dogs. Is there anything I can do to help? Um, well, maybe there is something I can do. Maybe there is, but it won't matter in the long run. Because we all end up dead. <laughs> Oh, come on, don't say that. Here, let me see if I can talk to the Duragars and clear this up. Bank's closed, part of the proto deal the old governor put in place. But here, I was gonna write my last will and testament on this, but a lot of good that'll do anyone since I'm flat broke. Don't worry, I'll get to the bottom of this. Yeah, it's a wordy game, guys. If you're not into wordy games, you're gonna be like, confused by this one. I don't know, Juicy. Uh, wherever those bee balls are right now, you can kiss them long, huh? Hey, you there, kid. Is he talking to me? Know where you are, kid? These ain't the burbs, this is the real deal. You're walking the streets of Tirna Nog. Oh, kinda new here. Huh, you're telling me, kid. You're telling him. 
Let me tell you, the alleys of Tierra Note aren't a good place for kids like you to wander around, alo around alone. You never know what kind of creeps are out here. Durgars, Banshees, all kinds of goons looking to rob you blind. Huh, <laughs> bet you don't even got a dime on you. Well, Mr. Wilmer only gave me little money. Now that is a shame, kid. That is a damn shame. You know, you're lucky you ran into me and my uh, nephew, Juicebox. See, me and Juicebox, we're like the guardian angels of Tierra Oak. We're the good guys, you know. Nothing makes us feel better than seeing a new guy like you land on his feet out here. Now, me and Juicebox, we got a proposition for you. A uh, proposition. That's right, a proposition. What do you say? Uh, me and Juicebox show you the ropes around here. Fill you in on what the what's on the streets and make a little scratch in the process, eh? You don't gotta do nothing but run a few errands for us and only take a moment of your time. How's that sound, kid? Well, okay, that sounds good to me. Wow, you do that for me? See, Juicebox, what I tell you? I said that looks like a real bright kid over there, and what do you know? I was right. You're right, Cornrow. Now listen up, kid. This is real simple. Me and Juicebox are gonna distribute a bunch of fruits to my malnourished children. Uh, to malnourished children, but I left my fruit basket at my granny's house. All you gotta do is head over to Granny's house, pick up the big old basket of fruit, real big, like one of them, uh, what do you call them, cornucopias, and bring it back. That's it. That's it. Uh, I do it myself, but uh, I'm uh, busy teaching impoverished children how to read. Uncle Cornrow is teaching me how to do letters. This doesn't sound too hard. Where's Granny live? Look at that. Look at the look at that foresight juice box. This kid's a real go-getter. She lives up in the market district uh, near the sewer entrance. A little blue shack near Morty's candy shop. Real easy to find. Okay, Mr. Cornrow, I'll go get the fruit. Uh, good luck with r the reading lessons, Mr. Juicebox. Uh, thanks, kid. What's up, future days? Semper games. Semper games. You know, that is a funny thing, Colonel Panic, that uh, Duragars were like the horribly subject, like subjugated race in the first game, and you can like do a deal to help them. And in this game, the Duragars are like absolute bastard bad guys. <laughs> The incumbent governor's speech is mandatory. This sure is a bevy of jerkins. Wonder if one would fit me. Welcome, welcome. My, you may be one of the taller dwarfs I've seen. No matter. Sure, I have something, uh, perhaps in the Durgar size. Ah, forgive me. I've not introduced myself. I'm Egidius, proprietor of the Tyranid Oak Jerkinry. How may I assist you? Let's see what you're wearing. Uh, a corn husk jerkin? How hideously out of fashion. Dwarfs, dwarfs haven't worn a corn husk for four millennia at least. We're looking timeless for you, not ancient. It's the 667th century after all. Surely we can get you out of that into some more modern garb. Maybe I could use a new jerkin. Maybe I could use something a little more in vogue. What do you got? Hmm, splendid. I'm afraid I may not have much in your size, but uh, while I look through my inventory, tell me, what is it you're looking for in a jerkin? Protection, mobility, pockets, style. I'm looking for something stylish. Hmm? Is there a dwarf in particular you want to impress? All of them. I'm new here. I need to look good. All of them. I'm still pretty new. I bet if I'm more fashionable, I'll make some more friends. Very good, sir. A dwarf with a mission. Sees the world like a jerkin. Uh, with the sleeves off. <laughs> now, please. How can I help you? Per how do jerkins work? A future day says, I have a dev build broom sent me when the demo came out. You have to check the rest of the game. You mean it's just like basically this minus the dark drakers blocking you off? I know there's barely anything finished outside of this demo. Although I know there, I've seen a few screenshots of like the big cyber dwarf screen projection thing. Like I know, I know there is stuff that you can't see in the janky demo. Um, I'm interested in that build. I'm also, I thought I, if I have the, the source code, shouldn't I be able to open in Game Maker and at least look at that stuff even if I wasn't like playing it? But uh, anyways, back to... Sorry. Uh, Light-colored leather and often without sleeves worn over the doublet. I, sorry, I think I forgot to read one of those. Ah, yes. Educated consumer is my best customer. Allow me to explain. You can use one of my... The many utility stations spread across Necron 7 to equip, unequip, and re-equip the jerkin of your choice. Equipping jerkins will allow you to take additional beatings from friends and foes before you inevitably kick the bucket. Basically, jerkins boost your elemental res resistances and ballistics, both of which reduce the damage you'll receive. Wearing jerkins also allows you to utilize pockets. Pockets are perfect for holding candy. 
that you can manufact within a utility station. Hmm, sounds simple enough. You have to be a total idiot not to understand jerkins. <laughs> I agree, youngster. Anything else? Bottle cap jerkin, egg crate jerkin, one of filament jerkin. I can barely afford any of these, and I can't actually afford any of these because I have to pay Mr. Wilmer's rent. I have to do the rent quest. These jerkin prices are a bit high. Hmm, all these jerkins are a little pricey. I don't know if I can afford these. Oh, then no matter. Financial security is hard to come by in Tirano. I've worked out a try before you buy program with some previous clients. Put simply, with a small deposit and sufficient collateral, I can let you try on a new jerk and work around and see how it fits. Let me know if that would work better for you. Uh, how do rentals work exactly? You can provide an item of sufficient collateral. I'll happily rent you the jerk of your choice. Sufficient collateral, huh? What do I have of sufficient collateral? Nary ye mind. That's it, thank you. Um. Bandicaru says, Cyber Shell, I've been doing that. Installed Game Maker just to do it. Yeah, I'm interested in doing that too. It sounds like it'd be kind of fun to poke around in there. Um. The pet store. Cuthbert's Friend. You looking for an animal companion? Dog, cat, lizard, goldfish? Got any sweet mounts? Looking for fast travel options, particularly with buffs to resistances? Uh, I have mostly malnourished goldfish? Dang. Sigh. I promise I'll let you know if I get some in, kid. It's not easy running a pet store in Tiranog, especially when nobody knows this crummy place even exists. All that neon signage was a waste of money. If only I had somebody to promote the store. Hi, I'm Bob. Oh, hi, I didn't know you could talk. Yep, I can talk. Cuthbert taught me. Business isn't good, so he has plenty of free time. Cuthbert tells me I should talk to all the customers, ask how they're doing. Oh. Well, that's nice of him. Yeah, he's a pretty nice guy. So, how are you doing? Uh, I'm fine, I guess. Good, good, great. So, wanna buy a kobold? I don't think I should. I don't have a home or anything. It'd probably be a bad idea to buy a pet without a home. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by the shop, I guess. It doesn't really look comfortable in there. It's not so bad. Cuthbert said he'd get me a bigger tank if business wasn't so bad, but I'm used to it. You ever been in a tank before? Well, I woke up in an egg. Why? I, I don't know, but I don't think I really want to go back. Yeah, probably not. You never know, I guess. Hey, do you want to try it out? I can get out and you can give it a try. I don't know anything about you. Maybe you'll really like being in a tank. Uh, I don't think so. I I'm too big, I think. I don't want to break it. Yeah, I guess you're right. I'd be really bad if my tank got broken. It's the only thing I've got. I think Cuthbert would really be really upset with me if I let somebody break the tank. Yeah, I... Oh, the tank is extra. It's not included when you buy me. Did I say that already? No, you didn't. Yeah, it's extra. I'm supposed to say that. They're kind of expensive. A lot more expensive than a kobold. I can see why. They're pretty cool. This one is small, but uh, you can put all kinds of things in them. Kinds of things in them. They're pretty great. I like tanks a lot. I can see that. I hope Cuthbert doesn't decide just to sell my tank. That would really stink. It wouldn't be his fault. Business just isn't good. But I'd really miss my tank. I hope he doesn't sell it. Yeah, okay. It's been nice talking to you, Bob, but I need to go. Oh, okay. Thanks for the top. I didn't realize how much I like my tank until we started talking about it for a while. Something about you really gets me thinking about stuff. Bye, a party member. Oh yeah, what else is the other option? Sigh. The old doesn't look too good for the old pet shop. Hey, sure, Mister, you'll pull through. You think so? I don't know about that kid. No one seems interested in pets around here. Guess they have more urgent things to worry about. Uh, the pet store is just uh, side set up for a side quest later. We have to recruit someone to work in the pet store. Gamers, greetings, my friend. How's it going? This guy. This is the guy I was thinking of earlier. You guys are all talking. You guys think the NPCs you talked to before were talking a lot. We'll see. Hey, are you okay? You look pretty depressed. Do I? Yeah. Are you sick? Yes. Maybe you should take some medicine. Medicine won't cure my sickness. What's the matter? Can I get you anything? No. Nothing like that. It's just another stupid story. Everyone here has got a story. You can even get some of them to prattle on about it if you ask them nice enough. 
I bet your story isn't as stupid as you say it is. Everyone's story is kind of cool if they tell it right. <laughs> Gulping says, I wait, the side quests have resolutions. I thought that none of the side quests could actually finish this. No, like they have different kinds of resolutions. Like you can pay Wilmer's rent or you can not pay his rent and get him arrested. There's all sorts of different ways things can go down. Um, I bet your story isn't as stupid as you say it is. Everyone's story is kind of cool. They tell it right. Not mine. Let's hear it. Well, let's hear it. I bet it's cool. Does it have spaceships and guns in it? Yeah. Well, now I need to hear it. Yeah, I lived on... Well, where does it matter? I was a geologist. At least that's what I told myself most days. I got into the field through my hero, Lot Bergman. Have you ever heard of her? Uh, I don't think so. She was a pretty big deal where I was from. Scientists don't make the headlines no matter where you are, but she was special. Was she pretty? No, not really. Not in the way you mean. They made a couple documentaries about her when I was a kid. She was different. An adventurer, I guess. Trying to conquer the greatest mysteries of the planet. Stuff nobody really thinks about. I guess the average person wouldn't think there was a lot you could do with geology. But you can really think laterally enough. It can really tell you a lot about where you came from. Maybe even where you're going, you know what I mean? Not really. Yeah, I'd expect not. I don't, I don't want to get into the science of it, but I guess I was inspired by her. Watching her fashion little cameras and survey equipment out of a toy helicopter, fly it down into an active volcano to take early rock samples. There was one where she cracked the tar caps and piloted a submarine into Rubio's cauldron, dig into the heart of the planet, and find out all, what it all meant. It was wild stuff, a wild life. I guess I wanted that life. So I became a geologist. I even got a job as a research assistant at the university where she operated, just like a couple other hopeless fans did. Most of us were even able to tell ourselves that it was a, that it was a science, not about blindly following our hero. As long as you were happy, that's all that mattered. Yeah, I guess. Not as simple as that for me. A couple of years ago, they detected an asteroid headed on a collision course for our planet. Not one of those close call asteroids. This was going to hit, and it was a planet killer. When everyone stopped shitting their pants, they decided to put together a research team to fly out to it, find out some way to change its trajectory. This is going to be a long story. I have other things I need to do. Wow! Yeah, tell me about it. Naturally, they picked Lot to lead the whole thing. She was the best there was, anyway. They needed a recognizable face to put on the whole expedition. But somehow, they chose me to lead the mineralogy, mineralogy department. And still, I still don't really understand why. I wasn't some prominent or even useful name in the field, just a lab tech. But I took it, you know? What was I going to say? No, I don't want to follow my dream. No, I don't want to do something important with my miserable existence. Anybody would have taken it. Enough time has passed that I don't even remember much about what happened in the early days. Just a lot. She was everything I hoped she'd be. Intelligent, brave. Whenever you'd have a problem you couldn't solve, she'd always have one angle you didn't see. Uh, I think she knew how much I looked up to her, and I guess she sort of felt obligation to humor me. Uh, some of the best nights of my life were just the two of us up all night talking in the asteroid camp. So anyway, time passes and we figure out how to set off a couple magnetic charges to change the trajectory enough to push it out of harm's way. But this was around when they started picking up all these dwarfs for whatever fucking reason. We had some back backup plans in place in case anybody stopped by, since that was a pretty big thing going on in the system at the time. But I don't think anybody really took the threat seriously. We were in the field doing some last-minute tests a couple days away from detonation, and a few weeks away from Im asteroid impact, we picked them up on our orbital sensors. I dismissed it as some rogue static at first, before one of the others did a scan. Maybe, if I just paid, a paid a more attention, I would have seen it coming. But it was too late by the time we'd figured out who it was and what they wanted. We may have gotten back to the ship in time if it, if it had just gotten to... Uh, the transport shuttle, but we were moving around a lot that day and it was parked a couple hundred yards away from where it should be, even when we saw them descending on us. Some of us were skeptical that they were really there for us, a couple scattered scientists in the middle of nowhere. But we did have a couple dwarfs working with us. I guess that's why they picked us all up. Uh, uh, I don't really know. A couple tried to outrun the cruiser on foot. Maybe some of them even made it pretty close to the transport. I couldn't tell. There was so much gunfire, pieces of rock kicked up. I don't really remember anything till we found ourselves inside the space probe that took me here. Most of the bleeding from the wounds are, uh, most were bleeding from wounds or dying from exposure to the atmosphere when our suits got punctured from the attack. Maybe we could have been alright if there were proper medical supplies to tend to the wounded, or if the food dispensers were properly stocked, or if the heating units didn't short the first day. But they were only concerned with catching us, dead or alive, and whoever put together that probe didn't try to make sure it could safely transport two dozen people through space for four months. So it didn't. One by one they died. My friends, dying right before me is starvation, the cold, infection. The worst, the worst were the ones who grew despondent from the pain. Pains of realizing what our absence on that asteroid meant. The reality that there wasn't enough time to get another team up there. That would take outsiders months, even though I'm sure they tried. 
Just a few more days and we could have changed the trajectory, but there were no more days. We saw our ship and our campsite melting as the asteroid fell out of view from the probe. No one was left, no notes to go through, no picking up where we left off. We failed. I feel as though the lucky ones were those who got to see their world in flames for one last moment rather than spending five months st staring, uh, <coughs> staring at the last hope of their people, systematically losing the will to live. I don't think I want to hear any more of this story. <laughs> and so, two weeks ago, I was the only person to walk out of that probe alive. The last of my people. Me. It's a miracle you made it alive. A miracle? I don't know where you're from, but, <laughs> but that word has a more positive connotation where I'm from. The fact that I'm alive does not feel positive. This is a curse. All I think about now is Lot. She was the last to go, the last to give up. For a long time, it was just the two of us left, holding each other in the darkness, too afraid to say anything, think anything. These arms where she died, or where she died, <laughs> right here. I held her for so long after, I can almost still feel her if I close my eyes. Do you know what that's like? To watch the one you admire most, the one you love most, waste away and die in your arms? To feel their last breath on your arm as you hold them? Someone so full of life. But she's gone now. They're all gone. Now I'm all that's left. Have you ever lost anything that important to you? Something so enormous that just not having it anymore makes you feel like less, you, less like you. Like, makes you feel like something, something else, something horrible. I don't really know. I have amnesia. Do you really? Yes. Wow. You don't know how envious of you I am to forget. Maybe in another life you could call that a curse. In this one, it's a gift. Be grateful that you have nothing. It makes it harder for anybody to take anything away from you. That's the example I always think of when, when people mention the game being unspeakably bleak and dire. <laughs> Where are the jokes? Oh, hey, hi. How did you get in here? I walked in? I don't know what you mean. Oh, I thought I locked the door. I'm sorry, I can leave if you want. No, you just surprised me, that's all. You can hang around if you want. Why did you mean to lock the door? The door? I don't know, does it seem that unusual of a thing to do? Uh, I guess it shouldn't. Are you hiding from something? I don't know if hide is the right word. Out there, there's just there's too much, uh, too much what? Just too much, too much everything. There's a layer of despair out there. I don't think most of the others even really see it. It's hard to watch. Yeah, I know what you mean. Maybe that's why I wandered in here. Probably is. Hey, you're looking at me kind of funny. Do you need help with something? Just seeing how you're doing. No, it's nothing to see how you're doing. You know, you're the only person that's ever asked me that since I got here. I keep to myself. Yeah, but it's still nice to hear. Anyways, yeah. Doing good. Better today. Thanks for asking. How are you? I don't know. Hanging in there, I guess. You and me both could use some better fortune, I think. Here's hoping things turn out okay for us lost souls. Katsu! Katsu! Uh, hello. Katsu's my name, and I'm game for it all. Let's do this thing. Uh, what thing? Whatever it is you gotta do, I'll follow you to the ends of Necron 7. Well, that's great, but I'm not sure what we could do. Let me think. Uh, you can help me find the Cyber Dwarf. Great, cool. Where is he? I mean, that's what I don't know. Oh, I don't know either. Yeah. Okay, so anything we can get done now? Tell me your skills. Uh, I don't know, what are you good at? What am I good at? What am I good at? Well, everything. I'm Katsu, of course. Lead guitar, shred guitar, vocals, vocaloid, tambourine, woodblocks, basketball, billion pipes, eunuch flute, you name it, I'm your man, Katsu. Katsu. Wow, that's impressive. Maybe I can use some of your skills in the future. Truth be told, I can't think of anything else to do. Oh man, I really wanted to do something. Yeah, seems like it. I'll be back. Until then, stay frosty. Anyone that can use my special skills? Actually, I'm thinking about something else. I actually don't remember ever coming. What Katsu, what quest he's involved in. I definitely didn't do like 100% of the content in the Janky No. I did play it a couple times just to see some various quest outcomes. My friend, my friend, you come to my house, you see my riches, you see my floor, you sit in my chair, you click my computer, we drink vitamin water, you ask, what is the o'clock? I say, look, my clock, yes, I am the good man, I am the generous man, I am Babo. My friend. Okay. 
I don't want to talk to you, Bebo. I fucking hate you. I fucking hate you. Oh my god, please just shoot something. If you're here for the gameplay, you're gonna have to skip ahead three hours. You heard the news? The new Duragar governor is coming soon and he's going to make a speech. Do you think it'll be about Kukulain's prize? Do you think it'll be about grapes? I'm Redfield. Glad you found me. I sell guns. At least, mostly guns. Hi, I'm X1. Let me stop you there, kid. We aren't friends. I don't want to get to know you. I just want to know how many Nero shekels you have in that brain pan of yours. How much are you willing to part with? Oh, sorry. Look, sorry, kid. It's just best if we keep this strictly business. Best not get too close, especially to me. Now, what you buying? I'll take a look at your guns. All right, let's be quick about it. Blue eyes abound. It's okay. I'll come back after I paid the rent. If, if it's not already too late. I might have already progressed time too far to pay the rent because I'm not sure which things move time. Because this game, if you know, another one of the weird feature creep things is there's like an in-game time. It's not tied to like real time. It's not like real time, but it's like events. As you do events in-game, the time passes in the world, certain quests get locked out of completion, etc, etc. So does the character creator at the beginning do anything substantial or was that all a bit? It was a, all a bit as far as I can tell. I mean, I'm sure at like some point late in the game they would have something that like calls back to it in a jokey way, but you don't actually create the character you play as you play as Hoops slash X1, you know, his name is Hoops. I'm, if the game actually came out, I would be committed to pretending that I didn't know it was Hoops, but it's Hoops. You're playing as Hoops in this game. Um, you seem to have a dark past. Maybe I could help illuminate it. You're playing with fire, kid. I'm dangerous. The people that I care about have a funny way of turning up dead. Oh, I'm sorry. I was too. Sorry for too long. I knew I needed to honor the lives of my fallen comrades with something. So I got back to work. Selling guns? That's right. Plan to make enough money running bl brassware to dedicate a park or memorial to all those I've lost. Here you can get some nice plots of land in the swamps. That's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Now, enough about me. Let's show you my stock. Anything else for sale? As a matter of fact, I recently found a map on a deceased dwarf. It maps out some of the Tirnanog sewers. Map of the Tirnanog sewers? That's right. I'll let it go for 10 euro shekels. Interested? Uh, again, I'll come back later. I don't want it. I'll navigate the sewers using my orienteering skills. Suit yourself. Is there anything else you want? Gotta go. All right, well, I gotta move. If you see me again, probably have a new inventory. Weapons move fast these days. Tengu says, I just like how you make a character that's sort of MGS5 and then you just play a snake. That one at least sort of has another weird meta freaky purpose. All right, okay, so this is what we have if I went straight down after I... Got it. Got it. Got two lockpicks. Someone says the MGS uh, 5 one has actual payoff. This one may have had some kind of payoff. We'll never know. We'll never know. It's a beautiful song you're playing. What's it called? Hey, man, digging the hawk. It's an old dwarf folk song about peace and love, man. Getting together and, like, really getting to know each other. You know, hey, hey, you a dwarf? Um, I'm not sure. I don't think so. Maybe. You don't look like a dwarf to me, but I'm not going to judge. We all come in different sizes and shapes, man, but we're all the same deep down. Like, you know, the Duragars, they're total vibe killers, you know. Always telling us what to do, where to go, where we're not allowed to play our tunes, man. But, you know, they're dwarves too, just like us. If we all just sat down and talked about love, man, synchronized our crystals, maybe we'd come to an understanding. Anyways, man, if you could spare us some change or something, I'd be real grateful. Durgars keep saying they're gonna throw me out of here, but this is all I got. Spare five neuro shekels. No. Hey, that's tough, man, but I'm all out of money, too. Guess we're both broke, sorry. Yeah, ever it is these days. I'd jet if I even knew how. Here's hoping to the du Durgars actually do kick me out someday. Hey, what's going on? Peter the Great. Tutorial. This is a classroom for the beginner. Here we answer your questions about the world. Think of us as your advisors. This is water from a hot spring. It'll restore your vitals. Such a, a spring is located on Gilbert's Peak.
about, right? These were all the little tutorial gremlins. <laughs> Want to know how to write a Guagladur drill? Me too. Okay. When buying jerkins and guns, you'll see some symbols and numbers next to them. Triangles pointing upwards indicate superiority. Triangles pointing downwards indicate inferiority. The equal symbols indicates equality. This is a junk pile. At junk piles where you'll wake up after you fall in battle. You can use a sleeping bag or tent to restore your vitals, but not in this game. Should you perish, you'll automatically uh, wake up at the nearest junk pile. But there are some rare exceptions to this rule. Any GP, gills, gold, goose, plampers, nero shekels, etc. you found before your demise will remain in your pocket. Same goes for your XP, guns, and quest progress. The game will save automatically when nothing dramatic is going on. Valuables are often hidden in trash cans like this one. Got one nothings! Heard about VidCons? VidCons provide you with a variety of entertainment. For example, all of them boost your XP when you unbox them. Use candies to restore your vitals. Staying inside an utility station will invigorate you to full, full health. Ha! Sometimes friends of foes lurk inside of trash cans. There's a monster in the trash can! Oh my god, it's a VR mission. Oh wait, I get it now. I get it. I saw the target. Use candies to restore your health. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Sorry, I didn't see him. I didn't see him. Who watches the watchmen? Okay, that's good. That's a good bit. Oh, I'm out of ammo. Okay, I see. Guys, I'll go to the sewer soon enough. I'll, I'll show you real guns brass in combat. No, no, go back. Guys, I, I thought I was going to skip the whole tutorial section. But then I couldn't resist talking to these little gremlin guys. Use the left click to interact fast. Right click to hold or skip. Uh, check out the quick menu key again. It's all, it's, all, it's all my key bindings from the... Uh, it's all key bindings for the... Uh, keyboard but I'm playing with the controller right now so it's confusing it's confusing to me the confused person if you choose to browse a menu during battle by pressing the Q key you can take all the time you need to plan your next move without being attacked appreciate any game that approves of like pause scumming or whatever you want to call them white numbers ba during battle Im damage indicators green numbers or health elemental have their own color back row damage attack power shaft in some other games that is yeah not this one Damage is more severe when your defenses are low. Use proper jerkin. Keep your piety strong to increase your defenses. Run from some battles. Don't have to fight everything. Periodic blast power. Zaubers. I never have used a Zauber. I don't even know if Zaubers are real. I thought when I originally I thought the joke was going to be that there are no Zaubers. But I think they might actually be real things. Strange effects and icons. If you're an extra person indicates status of ailment. Might want to go out and get some experience in Necron 7 before coming in here. What is this, another battle room? Utility station like this, where you can... Insides where you can reload your guns, smelt the guns you don't want. So breed guns, or promote your guns, so you can use them in your bandolier. Click around. The guns breeding mechanic was so needlessly complex and obtuse. You know about Glamp? It stands for Guts, Luck, Acrobatics, Might, and Piety. Guts cover and state your vitals. Okay, Luck. Luck is your luck. Acrobatics is swiftness. Might is strength, piety. Okay, yes. You want to know status ailments? Yes, I do. Which ailment do you learn about? Okay, that's like death. That's like the Dark Souls death one. Stagger, someone's going to be overwhelmed. Stagger. I guess I know what staggering means. Uh, adhesive. Oh, I know what that one is. It's the, uh, the like, little nets. Oh, yeah, I forgot there's like a fast forward feature, but only for like when you're doing stuff like that. I guess you would have liked to see me use that fast word feature earlier. All right, let's go see if it's let me hang out at DwarfNet for a while. More reading, less talking, more reading, only reading, no playing.
Breed. Wilmer's Leather Revolver. Oh god, I think I'm like fucking up because I don't know why it's... I, should, I think I'm like, yeah, walking around and in the thing at the same time. It's definitely glitching out to some degree, but that's okay. Maybe it'll be fixed if I go to Dwarfnet. Dwarfnet is like a separate instance. I love the Dwarfnet startup sequence. Finally, the real game, I know, right? Of all the stupid, pointless, bloat, waste of time features in the game, I love Dwarfnet the most. You are only a few steps away from your account. You just have to mash buttons and it fills out. You only have to do the account registration the first time you <laughs> sign up for B Dwarfnet. What is this creepy pasta sound? I've never heard it before in my life. No, please don't leave. But uh, yeah, whoa. Oh my God, this is such a pain to do with the... Uh... You can, oh, okay. This is because I'm fucking walking around in the world still. Yeah, that's why I can move the uh, camera. You're not supposed to be able to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you know what Dwarfnet is, it's basically just an on it's a in-game forum that would update in over the course of the game with like what you might call it uh, just new posts and stuff and there's all these different sections oh it's such a funny bit the rules are in German <laughs> the chat room, right? Meets and greets. Gamers. Hi, guys. Lol, hi. Hey, guys. What's the haps? Paps? Okay, that's enough of that. Pick your avatar. Hey, this one kind of looks like me. And people are getting so mad at me just for talking to NPCs. I don't Next, uh, tell you what, one of the, uh, my, 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 my deep dive Barkley 2 stream, I will, uh, read all of these. I love grapes. I love grapes. Grapes are for the weak and the wicked. What's a grape? Shaking my damn head. I love wet grapes. Well, pipe up if you love grapes. I love them. I love to step on them. Fuck you, grape. Fuck you, country. P.S. Private message if you got grape and want to trade for subwoofer. Get the fuck off this forum, you ingrate. I'm sick and tired of you dealing with you. Grape is running your mouths. Dare, dare you say that in public. See what kind of reaction you get. Because you're hanging from a grapevine noose. Oh, I love the fruit. The fruit forum. Banana. Fruit slash vegetable. Pick a side. A forum's mod's work is never done. Topic locked. There's some really funny stuff in here, okay. You just have to take my word for it. I said I'll do a real I'll do a real dwarfnet stream. A stream that's nothing but reading dwarfnet. How about that? Would that make you happy? Not right now. Now is to talk to NPCs and make chat mad at me. Stream, wait. Yo, what's up, Alex Yard? How's it going? Hope you had a good stream, my man. My man. Okay, I reloaded my guns. That was a waste because I think I'm actually going to breed these guns. Commence the guns breeding process. <laughs>
A new gun enters the fray. So it's actually like, I know it looks like a meme animation, like all this sort of shit, but the guns breeding system and the gun, the, the gun system in this game is so ridiculously complex. Like there's like, like 20 or like 40 different varieties of guns you can have, like different materials they can be made out of, and then different like pistol, submachine gun, shotgun, like there's different variants for each of those kinds. They each have unique sprites, not in the overworld exactly, but in the, in your, in the inventory. Frankie did so much good guns art. Yeah, it's definitely just like a demon fusion reference. Okay, again, something was weird about that. Like, you're not supposed to, you're supposed to come out when it's done, whatever. Something's fucked up, but maybe it's just that one. I, when I played this demo last time, I don't remember the, uh, the, uh, the capsule things being all fucked up. Oh my god, I thought it said, it is dead practice pad. This is a dead game, and I'm playing the dead games only demo that ever released. What are you looking at, freak? You don't have to be so rude. Why are you do regards always have to be so mean? Excuse me? Who the hell do you think you are? How dare you talk back to your superior? You're looking I'm on pacifi pacification duty. If you're on a curfew, you'd be painting your ass. Painting the town yellow with your pansy ass guts. I get your skinny ass and my pretty face. Sorry. Thought you were someone else. I gotta go. I think I probably have already locked myself out of the uh, pay your pay the rent on time quest. I think you have to get there immediately. It's funny because I, if I did miss that, I'm going to miss out one of my favorite jokes, which is another joke about waiting in line. I know the first time I did the booty blast subquest, and I definitely, if I do that, I definitely won't have time to pay the rent on time. Hey there, youngster. Do you know anything about the sewers? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. Not really. What's the to know? Uh, I was going to ask if you actually knew the sewers are actually a dangerous place filled with Fiskian baddies. Or if a lot of dwarves try to escape through the sewers and die trying. Or if there's a path through the sewers to where the Longinus rebels hide out. Vasilius says, Cyrus shall hopefully myself, others aren't being a bummer. I'm enjoying hanging and showing the sport of No, no, dude, I'm, I, hey, you're allowed to feel however you want about this game. This game never even came out, so like I said, I mean, it's not like I worked on it, but uh, I can definitely understand the specific complaints about the game being too wordy. The game being too wordy is a deliberate joke. If you don't find it funny, that's clearly a thing. But the game's writing being a little in love with itself, I kind of get what you mean there. Again, that's part of the bit. I think in some areas it works better than others. Um, or if there really is a plantation by grotesque Duragar who barbarously forces slaves to farm for sewer treats. But I guess you don't know either. Lucretia, hmm. I'm looking forward to the new governor is coming to town. I hear he's a real hard ass. Ooh, I love to watch these idiot dwarfs squirm. Never seen you before. I'd ask for your vote, but you don't really look like a dwarf. Oh, come on, no more. Your tab is too high, Jindrick. You don't eat, you don't have to go home, but I can't serve you anything else. Uh, unless you pony up some Nero shekels. But I want fruit! I want apricots, I want fruit, I want fruit juice! And I actually need 37 Nero shekels. I'll be in trouble if the Duragar try to collect. They see an empty juice rack, an empty till too. I want fruit juice. I want fruit! I want juice! Hmm. Buy Jindrick a can of apricot juice. 37, fuck off. Best stay out of this monetarily. But again, all these little things have consequences. I want fruit juice. I want fruit. We're not open yet. What is this place? This is Duragar's Officers Club. I'm Abdul Ghaffur. I run the finest bar in Tiranog. The only one fit for Duragar in this slum. I'll send things up for a very important customer right now. We will open up for business shortly. Okay, I'll come back later then. Um, Silius says, my favorite joke after the character creator was a guy in felony debt. I don't know why that's funny to me too, but uh, there's like a whole bit in China, Illinois in one of the episodes about debtor's jail. And then, like that used to be like a real thing in like old English times. I always think that's just so funny the way he talks about it. Price fixing, price fixing, okay. Have I gone up from here? No, I haven't. Hildy and I have been working on this baby for as long as we've been here. He said it would be a real fixer-upper. And they were right, but the main problem is the parts we need just don't exist anymore. I mean, I have no idea how old this thing is, but it's amazing that it's not just a lump of rust. If we could get an ancient catalytic converter, we could really get this thing purring again. 
I mean, I have big plans for this bad boy. I like to see the Durgars try to keep us in Terranog while we're pushing this baby as hard as it goes. Look at that speedometer. Goes all the way up to 200. I don't know whether it's in miles or kilometers. Yeah, I heard puke that uh, Frankie's game, Allison, got picked up by Devolver. I'm really excited. I'm gonna retweet the shit out of that game when it comes out. Yeah, Vasily, if they could have actually gotten this game out in 2014, before Undertale and all that shit, it would have been a different landscape to release it, dude. But yeah, I really think now, like a lot of it, not that it aged poorly in terms of, oh, it's offensive or whatever the fuck, it just aged poorly in that it, it's a very mid 2000s y, uh, mid 2010s y, early 2010s, late 2000s era humor. I don't know how to explain it, you kind of know what I mean. It has a very unique sense of humor, it's not just a tumor of its times, you know, it's more, it's way more than just that, but there's still something about it, you know what I mean? Are you okay? Those Duragars, they normally don't kick, only punch. I. He's passed out. How could anybody do something so horrible? We're not all like that, you know. What? Like that guy. We're not all like that. Not all Duragars find that fun, making dwarfs hurt, picking on them. Most of us do, sure. But not all of us. All of the Duragars I met have been pretty mean. Can't really tell much about someone just by looking at them. It's less about what they look like, or what they have inside that counts. I didn't choose this face, just like I wasn't the one to kick this poor dwarf in the ribs. So Lugner, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry if I hurt your feelings. I didn't mean it. No, it's okay. I should be able to take anything by now. Imagine you or me for a minute, seeing the dwarfs living in the, like this, being expected to do terrible things day after day. Just the way people look at me, repulsion, resentment, like I did all this to them. Hard to even look at yourself in the mirror on days like that. You start wondering if you really are a monster. It sounds really hard on you. It's okay. Not your fault I'm stuck doing this. All you can ever do is try making the best of things. Actually, can you keep a secret? A secret? What kind of secret? I have a way of making the best of this job. Kind of my own little way of doing something important. But you have to promise me you won't tell anybody. I can get in real trouble if anybody found out. I promise. I want to help the dwarfs too, in any way I can. There's a cargo ship here. It periodically brings various supplies from other galaxies. What I've been doing is filling up one of the empty storage containers with dwarfs and enough food for the space travel uh, whenever the cargo is heading back to the Sombrero galaxy. You see... A friend of mine runs the local church around here, Father Giuseppe, and, uh, or Giuseppe, or I don't know how he says it, I think it's Giuseppe, and, uh, he's been hiding, hiding dwarfs that have been having a particularly tough time with the other Duragars. Wow, that's great! It's great seeing the look on their face when you tell them they're finally going home. Just look around. There's so many more coming in every day. So many left. Can't take too many of them at a time. Don't talk like that. What you're doing is wonderful. You should be proud of what you've done. Thanks. I guess some days I feel like I'm their only hope. That's why I need to keep this a secret. Don't worry, I won't tell anybody. Say, do you want to help me? The cargo ship is leaving today. But with all the eyes around town and seeing that the new governor is showing up, I can't get over to Giuseppe to give word to send over the dwarfs. Maybe you could talk to Father Giuseppe for me. Have him just send the dwarfs over. Wouldn't this be dangerous? This place is already dangerous. Can you help me? Yeah, I, no, nay. <laughs> I'll help you however I can. Thank you. This really matters. It means a lot to me and even more to the dwarfs. What you need to do is track down Father Giuseppe at the Clispian Church in the Market District. Just sell him to the dwarfs to send the blue container in the warehouse there. Be careful and don't use my name. Father could be killed for the Durgars found we were doing this. Not to mention me. No problem. You can trust me. Again, you have my thanks. You're doing a wonderful thing. Send the dwarfs to the warehouse. But remember, send them to the blue container. Hey pal, any luck yet? Not yet, sorry. Won't take too long, take too long, the cargo ship's set today. Go north from Gilbert's Peak. Piss off, kid. Well, that was rude, but I have to admit, this guy is fresh dressed like a million shekels. Check out his chair's bandana, check out his chair's sword, check out his kicks. That's a really swank bandana. Yeah, kid, scored this a while back. Say keeps the sweat out of my eyes, but never really broken one. Whoa. That it? Just gonna ogle? Oh, or, um. Sword. 
That sword is... Psionic? Nah, but I get that a lot. It's a refined plast steel and rare biomonded Zaubric earth metal amalgamate. Whoa, what do you call it? Her name? Is Baba Yaga! Half bio damage, half cyber. 50 50? Pretty much take out anything on Necron 7. What? That's incredible! Incredible is as incredible does. Unfortunately for our enemies, me and Baba Yaga do incredible a lot. Any more questions? Oh, um. Check out his jacket. That jacket is really fly. Thanks, kid. It's an anti ballistic al aluminum crate polymer. It normally comes in jerkin, but mine's got sleeves. Wow! Anything else? Your gloves. That's right. Fingerless. So outrageous. Those are some fresh kicks. Wow. Fierce. What I wear is a reflection of my spirit. My spirit is a badass bio magician and Atma Jock. Atma Jock? Atma Jocks expel, excel in all sports. Especially ball and puck sports like b-ball or hockey. B-ball? That's right. B-ball. What's it to you? Oh, well, uh, nothing, I guess. Nary ye mind. Where are you going, kid? None of your beeswax. Heh. <laughs> that right? Well, an interested party may have just overheard that heartwarming conversation you and that sweet little Duragar just had. You gotta figure that an interested party may have a pretty good idea where you'd be going after a conversation like that. I don't know what you're talking about. Talking? <laughs> We're not even talking at all. Just two strangers passing the street, asking each other the time. Look down at your watch. What? Your watch. Look down at it. I'm not wearing a watch. Just look at your arm and say 7.30. Uh, 7.30? There. That wasn't so hard. Now everybody in earshot heard you. Alibi, kid. Don't leave home without it. So these dwarfs you're about to have sent over, you don't want to bring them to that Durigar you just ran into. What are you trying to say? <laughs> I'm saying that I'll pay you seven Nero shekels a head for every dwarf you bring me instead of that Durigar. Cash in hand, no questions asked. No thanks. No. Go fly a kite. Also, no. My god, you're never going to pay the rent. Point. You're right, Tire Lad. I forgot where the uh, rent office is, too, so I've just been wandering around. Go fly a kite, dude. Not even going to think about it. Just going to get that money. Uh, just to think about that money when you're out there getting those dwarfs. Ha! <laughs> go buy yourself a hat as pretty as my hat. Ain't my hat pretty. I don't think it fits your head right. Bullshit, I'm a goddamn dream boat in this fucking hat. Why the fuck don't you wear a hat? It looks stupid with that one. Gotta protect the hawk. Tough luck. Meditate a little bit about the merits of crushed dwarf skulls over your tender, loving fistful of cash from your friendly neighborhood businessman. If you have a change of heart, be in my warehouse. Just send them to the red container. And you'll make a fortune for yourself. Au revoir, slick. I'm not 100% sure we can't pay the rent. Isn't this the rent office? No, it's not. This is the weird old guy who gives you a VidCon. Hey, man. What's up? Uh, not much, I guess. Yeah. Same here. <laughs> Just surfing the teletext here. Not else to do since they banned me on the DwarfNet forums. It's not the same, though. Teletext just doesn't have the same, uh, content. The sort of thing I'm into. <laughs> you alright, mister? I guess. I mean, it could be better. Actually, since you're here... Can you do something for me? Uh, I'm not sure. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Don't you worry about that right now. I'll tell you what I want. You can bet on that. I'm just asking if you're willing and able. Am I willing and able? I guess so. <laughs> Alright. <laughs> I'm looking to sell this VidCon I have to uh, finance my hobby, so to speak. Oh, alright. What's it called? <laughs> I don't think a kid like you would have heard about this one. Maybe you are a naughty little kid you've played it before, eh? <laughs> it's called Creepy Ghoulie 4. <laughs> Ring any bells? Nope. Never heard about that one. Is it any good? <laughs> oh, you bet. It's a real treat. <laughs> all I'm asking for is 15 euro shells. What do you say, pal? No, of course no. I'm going to keep saying no to all these. And everyone's just like, just buy something. What I'm saying, I think you have what it takes. <laughs> I'm gonna come back later. I'm gonna come back later and buy the VidCon. Pravda Tirnanog is here. Pravda Tirnanog. Pravda Tirnanog is here. Print is not dead. Pravda Tirnanog is here. Hey, are you even listening to me? Are you gonna buy a copy? I don't know. I don't really like newspapers. Well, I like the funny pages. The Crypto Cohen one, too. 
Does the Prophet of Tirna know have, have those? Nope. Not a drop of that. No wonder I can barely sell anything here. Maybe you need to try selling a different way. Thank you very much, Brad Trainer. Much appreciated. If it doesn't have funnies, then what does it have? Sell it to me. Hmm, let's see. This issue's got news, fact, factoids, op-eds, the whole gamut. Want to know more? Tell me more. Hmm, what else you got? Annual crime report. If the efficacy of torture on dwarf control found to be 100%. Tell me more. What else you got? Gubernatorial proclamation. Poverty level upgraded to red. That's right. Our good governor, Eljabalis, is planning on new confiscations. Tell me more. Sports. I'm talking sports. <laughs> Seems like no game's been played for a while. New fiction and poetry, an ode to Kukulain's visage, an ode to Kukulain's physique, an ode to Kukulain's prowess, and more. A pop sci column that debunks urban legends. Dwarf Rebellion? Just an old dwarf's tale is the current article. Coupons, that's right, can't miss coupons. Buy one, get one, 0.01 .01 euro shekels off fruit deals. Tell me more. The Dwarf Corner is hard and balanced facts straight up with no spin. Emerald Sun Dis Wait, is this a spiritual successor to Barkley? No, this is a direct sequel. I mean, it's sort of both. In, in a weird way, it's a direct sequel, but not a spiritual sequel, if that makes any sense. Tell me more. It Must End, Analysis of the Rotten Dwarf Agenda by a scholarly Duragar Roundtable. What else you got? How about some real news you can use? It's a new segment. I think they're working on it. Our gossip column. Shangri-La... Shangri-La rumors on Kukulain's prize. Tell me more. So many of these articles. The latest and greatest from our cultural culture editor. Five new Duregar beating techniques. Yeah, this is the 2019 demo released. The janky demo. Not canon. The game will never be released. Never finished, rather. Sadly, it was released. Just the source code, though. What they had, I mean. Not the final game, obviously. Annual card. There we go. Finally, finally. How's the paper print business these days? Not great, honestly. I'm hanging in there, saving up shekels for a big investment. Big investment, eh? Yeah. Hmm, well, I shouldn't be telling you this. I'm supposed to stick to what's in the paper. But I hear that a particular item is coming on the market soon, and I'm hoping to have enough to purchase it. Oh, what kind of item? Well, that's the thing. Nobody really knows, but I hear it's some kind of weapon. It's all used with one these days, uh, especially with the despotism I've been witnessing around here. Interesting. Yeah, I'm gonna go talk to Abdul Ghaffer in the Mark District a little later. I hear he's the one to talk to for an item. But don't go spreading that around. Don't worry. I won't. Thanks for the tip. Yeah, sure. Anything else? Want to know more? Nay, I get my news from more reliable sources. Sorry, not interested. Told ya. I like the funny pages. Overusing Zaubers makes you tired. Tierna no housing. No, it's closed, isn't it? Ah, uh, here's the mortgage office. I dicked around too much. Wait, it's closed. Oh no, Wilmer, I gotta pay. I forgot to, forgot to pay his rent. I really flubbed this one up. Yes, you can. You can get there in time and pay the rent. I think you basically have to go there right away and not like talk to anyone or do any bullshit side quests. Don't worry. Like I specifically said at the beginning of the stream, I will be doing another playthrough. Not today, obviously, freaking dingus. But at some point, I will be doing another playthrough. Well, I guess if I'm already fucked up, I might as well do the. The booty apocalypse. This is the booty base blowout of the century. The booty apocalypse is upon us, Tierna Nogs. Blue blood booty base royalty, all competing for the title of Necron 7's Baron of Booty, DJ Booty Slayer, Ass subject Subjugator, the Booty Tyrant, the Anime Bulldog, Booty Sultan, Booty Raja, Keister Tycoon, MC Booty Grasser. This party's going nonstop until a new Baron is crowned all night long. Whoa, the Anime Bulldog's gonna be there? I love anime. This party is just getting started, baby. Fun Unlimited. Are you ready to rock your booty? Yeah! Yeah! Step inside, my friend. This party is open to all jock jammers, booty bouncers, techno dwarves, and disco dancers. Think you've got the chops? You can even enter the Baron of Booty contest yourself. I want to be the Baron of Booty. Are you even old enough to be in here? Don't worry. I'm legal. Barely. <laughs> oh man, oh man. The anime Bulldog is so cool. So is DJ Booty Slayer. I can't tell who's going to be crowned Baron of Booty. They both brought their A-game. I'm going to be the Baron of Booty. Forget about them. There's a new Baron of Booty in town. <laughs> you kidding me, kid? You got the booty beats for takes to take out the anime bulldog and DJ Booty Slayer? Out of your mind. These are two freshest dudes on the scene. 
to be one bumpin' DJ. <laughs> Better believe it. Get your rump bumpin' and gumpin', buddy. Yeah, well, we'll see about that, kid. You might think this is crazy, but sometimes the best thing you can do is let yourself get absorbed in the collective energy of a crowd. Lose your mind and just dance. You should join me. Join her. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds cool. Let's dance. Wanna dance? I'll show you how to dance. Check this one out. <laughs> wow! Hey, you're a cool kid. Listen to this. To get the most out of life, sometimes you have to make decisions that take you out of your comfort zone. Sometimes you just have to let life take you places. Don't forget that, okay? I'll remember that. One day it'll be me up there, turning the knobs and scratching the discs. DJ Erdok at your service. Elrond Bupkis. Look at that fool. Be more of an embarrassment to me. Please pay. This guy is so cool. Can't wait till I'm old enough to dance like this. Hey, you flipping it? What? <laughs> Knew it. Just another noob. But save your breath, noob. Yeah, man. Rock hard or go home. <laughs> I respect what they're going for, but to be honest, I'm more of a Jazz Tronica fan. Look at this. Look at this booty blowout sound. We got a booty hoot nanny going on here. We got booties across the board. We got them big bubble booties and the petite keisters. We got booty beasts and apple bottom addicts. Booty thundering up in here. But we're missing one thing. The most important thing. We're missing the bear and a booty. Who's it going to be? Is it going to be DJ Booty Slayer, Anime Bulldog, or someone else? Someone like you. Heck yeah. Um, I don't think so. What's the bear and a booty? What's a Baron Booty? Every year, booty scholars, ballers, spinners, and sinners gather for the annual booty apocalypse. The biggest blowout for booty based connoisseurs on Necron 7. This is it, kid. One of the epicenter of the apple bottom phenomenon. Whoa. Top booty based DJs spin their vinyl in contest for the title of Baron of Booty, where after they are recognized an official pillar of the Rump and Tookus community. It is the greatest honor of booty base and any affiliated subgenre, e.g., booty core, ambient booty house, DJ can ever achieve. What DJs spend their entire lives striving for. I want to be the bear in a booty. So what do you say? You win. DJ Booty Slayer and the Enemy Bulldog? Who are they? Who are DJ Booty Slayer and the Enemy Bulldog? Only the two hottest creatives in the booty base scene. 36 bronze booties of humility by the Slayer. Booty Dracula by the Bulldog. You never heard of them before? Hmm, I don't think so. Well, then feast your ears and keister on the seismic booty quaking rhythms they're playing right now. And that's them on the stage, and they're killing it. Why don't you go talk to them yourself? So what do you say? Are you in? Yeah, I'm in. Heck yeah. I'm gonna be the next Baron of Booty. Uh, flub the haters, or worse. You got here just in the nick of time. The science are almost over. Booty pops over again. Haven't seen around here before. You're new to the booty base scene? What do you what do you spin? Uh spin? Vinyl, man, what do you play? Oh, uh, yeah, of course. Uh jock jams, doo op, smooth jazz, animal. <laughs> Usually play animal. But I also like Operation Ground and Pound by Dragon Force. Not bad, kid. I like it. I haven't seen you around before. We need some new blood in the tier a new booty scene. What's your name? Uh, DJ Basketball, Urkin Baba, Wise Tony, Daddy Milk, DJ 8-Bit, DJ Retro, DJ Brand Loyalty, DJ IRC Cop, DJ Chatroom Boy, DJ Chatroom Girl, DJ Feudalism, DJ NASCAR, DJ Grand Slam Breakfast, DJ Sensitive Hedgehog, DJ Chad The Country, DJ Gamer, DJ Wisejuck, DJ Contact Juggling, DJ DVD, DJ Bayou Tapestry, DJ HD DVD, DJ, DJ Buccaneer Nugget, DJ Crosby Stills Nash & Young, DJ Tuber, DJ Gungan Autonomy Now, DJ x -Fout, DJ Al Alazam, DJ Cast System, DJ Alt History, DJ Shardmaster, DJ Soccer, DJ Petsmart, DJ Blood Hermit, DJ Tamiflu, DJ Inside Job, DJ Newman Zone, DJ Spin Dash, DJ Humongous Latvian, DJ Sorghum, DJ Kerman, DJ Booty, DJ Targigan, DJ Targigan, DJ Deathfire, DJ Herbie Fully Loaded, DJ Dangle, DJ Hoot Dog, DJ Booty Vamp, Young Vasectomy, or Funk Master. Tamer Lane. Okay, obviously I gotta be DJ Spin Dash. Dang, that's got a ring to it. I like it. You better get on stage, because the booty apocalypse is about to come thundering down.
were these Kickstarter related? I don't think so. I think that it's just another joke where they give you a million options for no reason. <laughs> DJ Spin Dash, huh? I liked your Psy Booty Tronic remix of Cryptic Butt Zone. Let's see if you can top it. This isn't about winning. It's about the pro the journey. Discovering your apple bottom. Check this out. The anime bulldog. DJ Booty Slayer. Whoa. Ladies and gentlemen, the booty apocalypse is upon us. We've got three of the hypest up and coming booty masters. This side of Brain City here to sonically meet your gluteus maximus. Whether or not just spinning for your pleasure, this is for the big one, the title of Baron of Booty, the ultimate honor. Who's it gonna be? The anime bulldog? <laughs> so Desne. DJ Booty Slayer? Charging my booty chakras. Or newcomer, DJ Spin Dash. Gulp. So without further ado, kick it off, Booty Slayer. Incredible, incredible stuff. I don't think I'm gonna be able to top that. Th that was awesome! How am I gonna top that? God damn, no wonder they call him the Booty Slayer, cause he killed it! But he may be barking up the wrong rump, cause there's a bulldog on the loose and he wants revenge. Give it up for the anime bulldog! <laughs> Bow wow. This one goes out to my J -J 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 Japanese girlfriend Sakura. Whoa, that was so mature. So that's what adults listen to. You better cleanse yourself before you drench yourself because the anime bulldog's on a rampage tonight and he's shaking up buku booties. S Sakura. We've still got one challenger remaining. This DJ's a newcomer to the booty base scene, the Booty Apocalypse Wild Card. Are they gonna shake things up or is this just another flat tire? Last and potentially not least, DJ Spin Dash. I, I'm up. Kid, you know how to do this, right? Um, I, I think so. Just smash buttons. Don't even look at them. Just fucking roll your face against the, the keyboard. Pummel them. Each key makes a different sound. It's all about that sweet spot. Finding that sound people want to hear. This doesn't sound too tough. Hit it, DJ Spin Dash. buttons. <laughs> mm. No, my buttons. My buttons are not mashing. Oops, no, not that not that button. <laughs> my my skills, my skills are bad. You know what? You know the reason I lost that? I won that the first time I did it because I did it on a keyboard. My booty potion was so low! I just realized after two hours we haven't met a single like character, just like a main character or party member. Or like any person. It's true, we haven't met anyone except Hoops. Really. And we haven't even met him, we don't even know his name. It's over DJ Spin Dash. I definitely fucked that one up. Who's it gonna be? Looks like the vote's in our next DJ. Oh, it is me. Okay, DJ Spin Dash. Our wild card wonderkins come out of nowhere and rock to rumps to the next level. Congratulations, DJ Spin Dash. You're pre presiding Baron of Booty. Everyone give him a hand. Spin Dash! Spin Dash, Spin Dash. Not bad, kid. Not bad. A kaleidoscope of booties. Booty fractals shrinking, evolving into thousands, millions of booty molecules. A brief but intense glimmer of something beyond our mortal understanding. Brilliance. Nirvana. 
DJ Spindash. Come here, Baron. I've got something for you. Only the Baron gets to wear this bad boy. Try it on. Look good on you. It's the one and only Booty Jerkin. Got the Booty Jerkin. Whoa. Thank you. No, Spindash. Thank you. Glad I took a chance on you. All I want to know, all I want now is to see what comes next. Keep killing it, DJ Spindash. The booty base scene is expecting big things from our new Baron. Yeah. I'll keep at it. No. Tire lights. Cyber Shell, please keep saying the word booty. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm about to leave and never say it again. You're not bad, Baron. I like what I heard out there. Keep it up. He'll go places. He talked to me. Oh, and Spindash, one more thing. Googled Japanimation. Trust me. Thank you, Mr. Bulldog. Sonic Continuity of Endless Booty Baronies. Booty titles extending backwards and forwards. Two rump-shaped gems embedded in the foxy of a helical booty Ouroboros. Obesence. Obesiescence. Okay. To the, the King of Keisters. An immortal crown worn as briefs. Pure Booty Sahasra. Classic. It was a. Uh, this is the side quest everyone remembers. Someone said that not that long ago. Someone just said, uh, I remember doing this quest and looking into Dwarfnet, and that's the only thing I remember from the game. I did it! Hello, Baron Booty, my liege. Hey there, you can just call me Spindash now. The Baron said hello, they noticed me! Price fixing. Don't do the price fixing. What's this? The, uh. Oh, this is the place where they send the dwarves the red or blue containers. But I don't need to go here. I need to go to the church to tell the guy about them. I don't think that it shows your, uh, DJ Booty Blasting name anywhere in the menus. Uh, I guess I have to go to a, uh, one of those big tubes. You can jack yourself into the dwarf net in to see the full screen. Fuck. Cuckoo lane. Hey, man. You jacked in? Jacked in? Whoa, buddy. You kidding me? Open your eyes, man. This is the 67th century and you're still in lockstep? Cuckoo lane's tired song and dance? Let me tell you something. If you're not jacked in, you're not even getting half the story. Jacked into what? Dwarf net, man. Dwarf net. This ain't reality. This is Cucullin's dumbed-down, hyper-commercialized, hyper-produced Hollywood spin-off. It's all a charade. This is an illusion, man. A delusion. And he's feeding it to you by the spoonful like the slack-jawed sheep he wants you to be. Reboot your mind, man. Jack into Dwarfnet. Wow, this sounds really important. How do I jack in? Simple. Find a utility station, and all you gotta do is plug into the station via your neural sock and log into Dwarfnet. <laughs> Don't worry, they're completely off the grid. Kukulain's got nothing on the Longinus Cerebro Jackers. Got any other tips for a noob like me? You seem really in the know. Any other knowledge bombs you can drop? Heh. <laughs> Looks like the script kitty wants to level up. Well, a light, all light, listen up. This is strictly off the record. You got it. I'm listening. Look at those dwarfs milling around out there, queuing into one line after the next, following the posted instructions. It's all a sham, man. A sham and a scam to keep the little dwarf down. Oh, so the signs are wrong? No, man, no, the signs aren't wrong. You're too busy reading and not understanding. Look, this message here, what does it tell you? Well, that's some uh, adult uh, language. No, see, man, you aren't looking at the big picture. You can't even see the firewall for the access nodes. It's all about what it means. Look, I know what the F word means. No, look again. Fuck Kukulain, you see? Tally-ho, I see it. No. I'm lost at sea here. Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> Just an ant falling rank and file in with the rest of the hive. Look, kid, there's no instruction manual for the underground. If you're gonna run with the crypto dogs of Necron 7, you need to start spotting the communications. Crypto dogs, codes, man, ciphers, hidden messages. Look again, fuck Kukulain. Now what does Kukulain despise the most? Um, individuality, everyone knows that. So let's get rid of all the duplicate letters, N, U, and C. Take all those out. You have F, K, H, L, A, and I. And that, of course, only spells Khalifa, or the ancient Islamic word for successor. Don't you see, man? Um, Khalifa, it's so obvious. L oh, Longinus, 
plans on taking out the new governor's replacement, his successor. It's so painfully obvious to a neurocryptic like myself. It seems kind of like a stretch. Man, you think you've learned it all when you got to the letter Z. The whole world is littered with dark underground protocols. Just gotta shine a light on it. You say so. Hey, look, man, I'm not saying anything. The messages say it. I'm just the enlightened crypto dog that reads them out loud. Look, I'm gonna help you out. If you see anything that might have one of these hidden messages, you just bring it to me. I'll set you on the right path. The dark path. Ah, okay, thanks. I'll keep my eyes peeled. Hey, kid, what's on the down low? I don't have any messages. Wait, do I have any messages for him? The, uh... Wilmer's eviction notice. Or not eviction notice. His rent notice. Alfleda's... Alfleda's eviction notice. Would you like to give amortization schedule? Yeah, sure. I mean, why not? Let's see. <laughs> it's nothing here but letters and numbers. It's one-dimensional communique, communique for the sheep of the world. Anything of real importance? Let's see. Hmm, nice. Nah, I don't know what he wants then. I don't know what ciphers I need to bring this guy. The ciphers, man! The ciphers! I'm gonna join the beach watch. wary of Duragars. Yeah, Game Maker is an interesting like you know uh, engine. What, what do we call it? Undertale is made in Game Maker, right? Of course it has all sorts of limitations. I'm not saying it's necessarily the best thing to learn, but a lot of interesting games have been made in Game Maker, that's all I'll say. Yeah, Cypher! Those bastards at Cypher. What's up, you guys? You look pretty intense. Hi, we are playing... Wiskund Wizards. Dwarfs love playing Wiskund Wizards. Yes, that's right. Dwarfs love playing Wiskund Wizards. What's that? I don't know what that is. Wiskund Wizards. Wiskund Wizards. It's a game to play in Pravda. You have to find the words from the other words. It is very difficult. Pravda? The Dwarven Paper. The Dwarven Paper you can buy from the nice lady in the business district. It has Wiskund Wizards on page three. On page three below the ladies. Wiskund Wizards is very difficult. Impossible. So how do you play it? It is very difficult. We've spent hours on this Wiskund Wizards. We will spend many more hours on this. Yes, it's very difficult. You take the words, you find the hidden secret word. You need to fit it into the boxes of words. I cannot find the secret word. He cannot find the secret word. What is it, like a crossword puzzle? Cross word? No, Wiskund Wizards. Uh, well, regardless, I like puzzles. I think you will not find the secret word. It is a hidden secret, yes. Good wizards will stump you too. Should I play? I was born ready for this. Game time! He's very serious. Good wizards. I like people who are serious about Good wizards. Lay it on me. Okay. It is a four letter word. This is the mystery question. This is not the answer. We do not know the answer. Yes, this is the question. Not know the answer. The answer is hidden. Yes, it is a secret. We cannot find it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. What's the hint? A four letter word. It is a gemstone. It says pretty gemstone. It is the pretty red gemstone. We've located the three secret letters. Yes, we three have been discovered. They are no longer hidden. We can give them to you. It is written down here. Okay, let me take a look. R U blank Y. R U blank Y. The blank does not count as a letter. It means hidden. Yes, it is still hidden. Please find the letter. Can you find the letter? Let's see. Pretty red gemstone. Four letters. R U blank Y. Ruzi, Rufi, Rooney, Ruri, Ruby, Rubrackety, Rupercenti, Rooksy, Requestion Marky. I think, I think it's Ruby. Try it with a B. Ruby. What? How? You? Did I get it right? He solved. You solved the Wiskund Wizards. Hey, cool. I'm not so bad at this. You were the best, the Wiskund Wizards. I am the 18-time dwarf Wiskund Wizard champion. I was called the Wiskund Wizard Wiz, Nick Decker. Now, I am not the Wiskund Wizard Wiz. X114 Jam 9 is the new Wiskund Wizard Wiz. I already miss being the Wiz. The Wiz carries with them the great stone. Wiskund Wizard, here, take it. It is yours. Got the Dragon Lord Gemstone. Wow, this is a serious rock, thanks. 
I want to be serious with Wizard Solver, like X114 Jam 9. Maybe X114 Jam 9 can show us a good solving. Yes, please teach us again one day. This was fun. I'll play with you guys again sometime. Until then, though, see you. There are many mysteries left in this Whiskoon Wizards we found. We will never find them all. Yes, they will remain invisible for all time. There are too many mysteries to be found. Has anybody actually played the Barkley games? Do you mean the, like, original, like, actual sports games? I never actually played those, to be honest. Heck off, chump. Here we are. This is the Governor's Mansion. He's about to announce his new policies for Tier No. No entry permitted. The Great Dwarf Hero Kukulin. Commemorated by the Great Dwarf Hero Kukulin in his own likeness. Most dwarfs immediately recognize that Kukulin looks just like them. Reminder, vandalism of the Great Dwarf Warrior Hero Kukulin is a criminal offense. Time is definitely passed. I see Jalazio's at the, uh, the the great bar. Still have barely done any of these fucking quests. I've still just been walking around the whole time. You know what? That's what it's for. This is a walk around the whole time stream. Did I go in here? Was this the tutorial building? Take nothing for granted. Hmm, an old looking poster. Announcement to all dwarfs and duragars. Bullying is not cool. Don't give in to peer pressure. Stand up for yourself, for others. You have the power in your hands. Only you is not the vicious cycle. Take these words of wisdom to your heart. Don't take me down with a punch. Take me out to lunch. Stop the slander. Increase the candor. So remember, the next time you want to give someone a swirly, give it to yourself. Whoa. These words are so powerful. I think I should give myself a swirly to even the odds. Wait, maybe. Maybe I can look in this desk. Usually there's not that much interactable stuff in these apartments, unfortunately. I mean, there's, you know, this... They didn't even have time to finish the game. I can't really hold it against them for not having everything be super interactable. It's not like there aren't plenty of fucking NPCs to talk to. I'm sad because Kulay is confining all dwarfs into Tirna Nog, but I'm happy because he's giving us all prizes. But I'm sad because I don't have the prize yet. I like grapes. I like prizes. I like fruit. I like my friends. I like sand. I like gems. I like fruit. What's up, Boyd Strider Soul? My night is going good. I'm having a good time talking to people, not shooting anyone ever, just talking. I don't want to be me anymore. That's all he said to me. The only thing. Just that. I didn't think I heard him right. I leaned closer. But that's the only words he said to me. I waited as long as I stood. As long as I could, but he had nothing left. You ever see that before? Get to see the last glimmer of hope fade out of someone's eyes forever. Creepy. I just realized maybe something is every single NPC a unique art asset. Uh, most of them are. I, the ones walking around the city might repeat, but like all of these random guys, I think they're all unique. I never really wanted to be a bus driver. You don't get to, you don't get to choose those things. I was born a bus driver. By the grace of Cliff Haith, I'll die a bus driver. It was that one night I had to keep all the windows shut to keep out the damp. She appeared in the doorway at the 11th stop. I know it couldn't have been the 12th stop. Had to be 11. No other way it could be 12. 30 years on that route, she's my first passenger. Whole system had been dead for as long as I can remember. Probably a lot longer before that. Know what I said to her? Do you know? Do you have any clue? What's cooking? Who says that in this day and age? What's cooking? Nobody says that. No real dwarf say, say that. But it's what I said, and you can't take things like that back. I was sore for a long time after that. Choked me up just thinking about it. Like getting the wind knocked out of you. All I ever wanted to be was a cool neighbor, but it wasn't meant to be. Don't bother telling anyone. They'll never believe you. So is there any game between all those words? No. No, of course not. I mean, there is a game. There's the shooting part.
But in these troubled times, we must have hope. It's in hope we find light and salvation. I'm very hopeful. I can't wait to get our prize from Kukulain. I hope it's fruit. I hope it's grapes. Yes, my friends, fruit. Our faith will bear the fruits of salvation. We must cultivate our spiritual gardens and find the peace we were meant to find. Listen closely, my child. For I speak of a fruit of a different flavor. Fruit? I love fruit. What fruit is it? Is it lemons? I think he's talking about lemons. No, my friends. I don't speak of lemons. Thank you very much, Elemental Knight. I speak of a far sweeter fruit. That fruit is Clispaith. Clispaith? What's that? That doesn't sound like fruit to me. This guy's full of it. Clispaith is the most splendid fruit of them all. He sacrificed himself in the times before the cyberpocalypse for the freedom and personal salvation of all dwarfs. All we need to do is have hope and let Clis Paith into our hearts. We can live forever in his spiritual orchard. What a load of buffalo chips. I wanted to talk about real fruit, not this guy who thinks he's a fruit. What is this clown talking about? This isn't about fruit at all. Please, you must believe me. Fruit is like a lemon. I mean, believing in Clis Paith is like believing in fruit. I mean, yeah, whatever. I'm out of here. No, no, you please. You must believe me. Uh, Elemental Knight says, Hi, Cyrus. Shall I know your work from your time on the Blue website? You also taught me a Retsu Prey back in the day. I'm excited to see you streaming. Thank you for showing this off. You're welcome. And uh, yeah, I remember I had a thread way, way, way back in the day, like ranking every Retsu Prey video. Was, uh, that was a fun one. I don't think I ever got through even more than like half of it, but I enjoyed making that thread. Oh, that's weird. This NPC doesn't have any dialogue. I try to talk to her and it just like instantly boots me out. Um, excuse me, are you Father Giuseppe? That I am, child. Is there something you wish of me? I'm, uh, supposed to talk to you about, uh, what weighs on you, my son? Is something the matter? Yeah, you see, a friend of mine, uh, told me to talk to you about something involving a cargo container. I'm not supposed to say much about it. Ah, uh, yes! Your messenger for our, um, <clears throat> friend. He told me to keep it a secret. He said you can get him in trouble. I understand. It warms my heart to see a youngster like you getting involved in this. You must have a big heart to be involved in doing something so risky. Well, it's nothing. I want to help the dwarfs in any way I can. Yes, I can see that. I vow, I vowed to the church to protect them. After all, I would not be fit to be a messenger of Clisp Haith if I was not prepared to protect them at all costs. But first, I think I must perform a test to see if your heart is as pure as it appears to be. A test? Indeed. See, there are many nefarious figures here. Can't always tell someone's intentions by looking at them. Take your friend, for instance. I have reservations about his attentions, but he's shown me my worries were misplaced. It's important to find out the same about you. Uh, okay, I guess. It's not gonna hurt, is it? Goodness, no, if your heart is pure as I believe it to be, the test shall be as simple as breathing. Together, I'll show you the holy book of Clist Haith to exhibit superior understanding of his holy words. I shall appoint you, the shepherd, the dwarfs in my care, as they will know then in your custody that I will come to no harm. This is a pretty big responsibility, but I'll do it. Wonderful. I can feel the sincerity in your voice, child. The proper method for performing such a test is to read you passages from the Holy Book and leave you to render your feelings on them. For you, I have chosen my favorite passages. So this is not merely a test to me, but an expression of what I believe matters most, and a way for us to unite through our devotion to Clispay. I urge you to take this test very seriously. You got it. Now, let's begin with the practice verse, shall we? Rodman 337. He who is responsible for desecrating the cyber spear shall perish in flames. Shall perish in flames. Fire is very important. Do not mess up the cyber spear. A metaphor for smithing the spear. Well, it seems like don't mess up the cyber spear is the message here. Is it some artifact they're talking about? I think it means they'll die or just be very badly punished if they mess up this spear thing. It sounds really important. No, my son, I'm afraid that's not what it means at all. This is a metaphor for the process of smithing. You must first temper the metal in a cauldron before you can shape the metal. It is after you have formed it to your satisfaction, you can insert the red gemstone. The cyber spear is the metal. Desecrate suggests the transformation of the metal, and the flames signify the red gemstone. Okay, I guess I was wrong. Do not lose heart. The ways of Clispaith are very mysterious. It can, it can take stray souls much time to learn all his secrets. Granted, truest of Cleese Paith's followers were born knowing these path secrets, but I'm certain there's still time for you to find the correct path. Let's move on to the next passage. Tuberculon 743. Love thy brother and sister and gremlin, such as you love Cleese Paith, for their love is as great 
as a bounty as any. Vasilia says, uh, Cyber Self, you props for a two year old video I just watched for your first time the day. You made a killer joke I never heard. You're racing Sonic 1, 2, and 3. Uh, Salty Dicky Dan started playing Sonic Adventure, and you said Salty Dan skipped an entire generation and went from Genesis to Dreamcast, just like Sonic. <laughs> that is a good joke. I forgot that. I, I, I'm proud of that race. I'm glad I won. If I didn't win, I would be deeply, deeply ashamed, considering I was supposed to win. I was, a, I was like, I'm the Genesis guy. If I didn't win that race, I would have had to disappear off the internet again. All right. Love thy brother and sister. Be nice to your brothers and sisters. Making babies with siblings is approved. There are many useful mining tools. Uh, be nice to your brothers and sisters. Do you mean they should be nice to brothers and sisters? <laughs> I'm not sure you've exactly got it. Tell me more. Well, maybe not brothers and sisters. Maybe it just means everybody. Maybe you should be nice to everybody. I'm afraid that's not what this is saying at all. Brothers and sisters with the names of two brands of toffee first released. The Gremlin Corporation sometime around 887 BED in the Klugman system. They were then and still are the only toffee officially recognized by the Church of Clisp Haith, as this passage explains. Remind you when the test is over. Might have a couple pieces of sister left. Now, let's move on to the next passage. Marv 547. Those not mummified upon death are unfit for Clisp Haith's holy quarters. Clisp Haith's like mummies a lot. You must get mummified when you die. Preserve food for people. Naked people are really gross. Naked people are really gross. I think this saying was, <laughs> it's just saying that you need to be wearing shirts and pants and stuff if you want to get into this place. Ah, excellent! You are correct. Many novice followers of Clis Faith get lost in some of the archaic slang of this verse. But this is exactly what this passage is talking about. Really? Clispian scholars have concluded that Clis Faith indeed finds naked people gross, as you say. The first step indeed, most, essen most essential step, being welcome to Clis Faith's heart. To make sure you're clothed continuously. There's no place in Clis Faith's heart. For a naked man. It saddens me to think what Clispaith thinks when he sees these revolting heretics marching around in speedos, unaware of the travesty they are committing. Let's move on to the next passage. It's not wise to consider naked people as long as we already have. Why did you say dwarf cities? Because the better answer I give, the more dwarves he will entrust in my care, I believe. Wilt, otherwise I would have happily picked the correct answer every time, meaning the incorrect answer. Wilt 211. Thus Clispaith spake inside each of you are a multitude of perceptions and identities, for within each individual spirit resides everything. A multitude of perceptions. Eat grapes to cure diseases. Keep dogs around to rescue you. Eating rotten fruit is dumb. Everyone is cool and beautiful. I don't really understand this one. I'm going to guess that it's saying you should just eat lots of grapes to cure diseases. A guess? I think not. You've clearly studied Clispaith before, as this is precisely what this passage is saying. Indeed, the Book of Wilt's function is a complete, exhaustive explanation of the health benefits of regular grape consumption. This passage in particular is useful in its suggestion to consume grapes as treatment for radiation sickness. The multitudes of perceptions and identity noted in this passage is a reference to one of the tragic mental illnesses caused by advanced radiation poisoning. I don't like fruit that much. I like candy more. Well, you'll be able to get by if you can avoid radiation sickness, but I strongly suggest adding grapes to your diet to improve your overall health and stamina. You'll live much, much longer. Let's go to the final passage. I had some simpler passages for you, but we can skip ahead to the more advanced stuff now. Clearly, you truly understand Clispe. Carl 2311. The truly pious life is not one achieved through worship or sacrifice or servitude or punishment, but one forever embracing all the beauties of consciousness. There's no wrong way to find Clis Faith. Wearing jorts is forbidden. Gemstones are alive and holy. I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry. Do you have anything to eat? Hmm. A curious response. But I'm afraid that's not what this passage means. That would be a strange thing for Clis Faith to wish to convey to his followers. <laughs> that wasn't my answer. I'm just really hungry. Oh. Well, I don't have any food for you. The church has been terribly short on donations lately. I'm sorry. Do you have an idea what the reading of this passage is? I, I don't know. I can't concentrate on an empty stomach. Maybe it just means that you can't ever ride a kangaroo. Kangaroos are pretty dangerous. They can punch you out. You shouldn't try to ride something that can punch you out. Looks like I wore you out here, young man. You're not making much sense anymore. My apologies. Sometimes I forget how exhausting Clispy and study is to the uninitiated. I had a couple dozen more passages for you to review. But we can stop here if you're feeling weary. Let me just review your answer so far. Hmm. The results were most encouraging. You've been a novice in the ways of Clis Paith, but you've shown me that you are well on your way to live a life of respect, respectful of Shadow Clis Paith's greatness as cast on all of creation. 
As a fellow follower of Clisfate, I will trust you with some of the dwarves in my custody. I think seven is the correct amount. Okay, cool. Where do you wish me to send the dwarves? Lugner, the blue container in the warehouse. Slag, the red container in the warehouse. Um... I'll do the blue container. Send them to the blue container in the warehouse. Look, I mean, our friend is waiting there. Oh, he's chosen a new location this time, man. Eh? He's always full of surprises. I will send the dwarfs there. Many clisp hath always be with you in your travels. Send word to the dwarfs' nightings. They should be meeting up with their friend right about now. Thank you for your assistance. You were a wonderful young man. Thank you. Sorry, I have to be a good boy. It's a canon playthrough. Eric. <laughs> My last job was working the counter of the sandwich shop. I won't say which one, but let's just say that their sandwiches were <laughs> subpar. We were told to say, would you like chips and a drink with that? But I always said, would you like chimps and a drink with that? To mind freak the customers. Was it fucked up? <laughs> yeah, I like to give people a little dose of pet reality. Um, are you speaking to me? Uh, no, no, I wasn't, you insufferable dullard. I didn't even know you were there until you interrupted me. So as I was saying, pets are, in essence, the final frontier. I mean, that's it. That's what it's all about. What even comes after pets? I could basically list them all if you wanted me to. Wait, did you want something from me? I'm... Christ, did you... Were you even listening to what I just said? Let me spell it out for you. I am looking for a job. I need to find a job to support my black-footed ferret, who is currently in heat. If you help me find a job, I will give you my most treasured possession. Do you understand the words that I'm saying? Can your nugatory pigeon brain comprehend what I just said? Help Eric find a job. Yeah. Well, you don't need to talk to me like that, but I guess I could help you out. What kind of job are you looking for? I never had a pet, at least I don't think I have. I think I'd like a cat. Oh, I'm not at all surprised you lack the creativity and personal responsibility to take care of anything but a cat. But to answer your thoughtless and imperceptive question. I like any job, service industry or otherwise. I particularly like a job that puts me in control or in the vicinity of pets. Okay, well, I can look around. I'm kinda new to this town, so I can't promise anything, but I'll try. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not expecting anything. Hey, Master Calippi, any jobs available? Think you can pound molten steel with a 20 pound hammer from a raging furnace all day long? Oh, I'm looking for a friend, not me. Well, can your friend do it? Mmm. No, definitely not. 100% definitely not. <laughs> nope. No jobs. Okay. Thanks anyway. Sure, these are just sewage pipes I'm repairing. But with a hot enough flame and a true enough angle, I could forge a zoop that would clear the Duragar's arse. Such raw power. And zooks are. Ah. Uh, I thought the little tyke was a braster. Bazooka's my boy. I make the finest pot launchers this side of Brain City. What city ordinance keeps me from pounding that ordinance? Okay, city ordinance keeps me from pounding that ordinance. I get it. New rules state that guns need to be bred. No straight smithing. This keeps us dwarfs from using our true talents. It's a scam. Just a glorified plumber while I'm in this dump. I tell you, Abdul, I survived the mines, and now I gorge on fine fruits. How could life be better? My pal Augustine usually gets grapes with me, but alas, ah, well, fruit and toil, fruit and toil. Interesting fellow. Huh? You. Gulp. Me. How did you get out? Out of what? You mean the egg? Egg? What egg? I mean, I came out of an egg that- Nah, tyke, not an egg. Ah, heck. Nary ye bind. Here. You, kid. Come have a seat by old Gelazio. Let me buy you a shot of the grape. Gulp. The grape? Sure. I'm definitely of legal grape drinking age. Maybe an X number of years. Once I figure out how old I am. Hmm, I guess I'm good for one. Attaboy, tiger. Have a seat here and get ready to pucker on that purple nectar. Abdul, two rounds of the grape. Gulp, my first sup of the grape. Am I ready? Psych yourself up for the grape. All the best baller's grape. I've heard the grape increases my gamer score. It's fine, just like a purple lollipop. 
If I do this, I'll be able to stay up all night and break through the grind ceiling on Hyperborea No Legends. Gelazio, pour me that hard grape. Cheers, kid. Guts increased by one. Yeah, wee, that's the deep grape right there. You can feel it all the way down. I, I just graped like an adult. <laughs> There's plenty more where that came from, Ace. Keep it together, X1. Can't show that the grape is going straight to my dome. Say, how long you been in here, Oak? Oh, not too long. I just got here. I have amnesia. Yeah, I hear you, kid. We've all got amnesia these days. No, I mean, I really haven't. Say, Hoss, to be honest, I just got back to town myself. We and my pal Augustine are on some serious labor duty in the mines. Let's just say we outfoxed the fox. <laughs> where, where the Duragars were the fox, and we were the other fox. Oh. Good for you. Thanks, Shooter. Me and Augie were living lavish, that is, until yesterday. Augie done up and disappeared. Some say he turned and ran with her cash. That's not the case. I think he's still out there, lost in the sewers, sober as a fox, just screaming for another shot of the old grape. I'll help the frog team. Let me ask you about this supposed Augustine fellow. Actually, I have some questions about Augustine. For me, yeah. What do you want to know? What's your history with Augustine? You see, my boy Augie, he, well... Okay, here it goes. When Augustine and I were first shipped off to the mines, we had no hope of coming back. No dwarfs ever have. From what we know, we, uh... From what we know, we knew we faced labor and an inglorious death in the mines, but neither of us would allow the other to sweat it. We worked, so we worked tirelessly, blowing out channels of rock, finding new paths, exploring the underground. We were there, we were gonna make it out, uh, make the most of it. We kept each other's hopes up, but I don't know how much longer it would have lasted. Then, Augie found something. Something, yeah. Something, or should I say, someone. Someone, what do you mean? You don't know what I'm talking about, do you, kid? Eh, well, it's not a big deal. Forget about it. Ah, okay. What were you and Augustine up to? In Tierna Note. What were we up to? Oh, just drinking the grape and rabble-rousing like the old times. Oh, okay. Sounds like you two were good friends. Yeah, you could say that. The mines is a way of forcing some pretty necessary bedfellows. Hard to survive down there on your own. And not just physically. Uh, those Duragars are always trying to turn Dwarf against Dwarf down there. Face them off and see who they can squeeze for more information. It's brutal. I'm lucky to get out of there. Hey, what's up, Psycho Josh? Yes, the promise has been made. Promise to play this game. Alfleda says you have her money. I talked to Alfleda, and she says that she's on the street because of Augustine. She said that? Ah, Hellsport, are you going to believe that sullen old buzzkill? Well, she got evicted. Yeah, because of her own bad spending habits. Look. Say what you will about my grape-filled lifestyle, but I can guarantee you I live within my means. And so did Augustine. That Alfleda last drank away her owed mortgage. Nothing old Augie and I could do but feel bad for her. I felt really bad for her, too. Ah, nary ye mind. Ah, oh, how can I help look for Augustine? You want to help? Ah, oh, hell, that's swell as heck, kid. So look, we're not in the best of company. What do you mean? Well... There might be something else pulling the strings here in Tiernanog. And I have reasons to believe that those same strings got around old Augie's neck. Wow, sounds dastardly, I know. Do you have any proof? Nah, not yet, but that's where you can come in. Help me gather some intel. Maybe you and me get to the bottom of this. What should I look for? The Diablos in the details. That's what Augie's abuela always used to say tell us. Uh, so let's start looking through anything you dig up. Notes, books, clues. You'll be my ears on the streets. A, um, gumshoe level one. XX on board for jam is nine and now is now gumshoe level one! Wow. Gee. This is exciting. I've never been a detective before. Well, at least not that I can remember. Don't get ahead of yourself. Real detectives find Augustine. Ah, you're right. I'm on the case. Great. Got any clues? What do you make of this? Would you like to give Wilmer's amortization schedule? Hmm. A delinquent mortgage, eh? Mr. Wilmer told me to take care of it, but I, uh, forgot about it. Now it's l l too late. <laughs> you want me to take care of this, don't you? Take care of it? You mean, like, fix this mess I've gotten myself into? Let me hold on to this and see what I can do for... Mr. Wilmer, I know some guys who might be interested in this. You'll do that? Gee, Gelazio, you're the best! You know it, Scooter. Well, looks like you got a shot of grape, and are one step closer to that promotion. 
Cheers, kid. Guts increased by one. Jiao, the grape is so strong. You said it, chief. Savor that strong Niagara flavor. Say, got any other clues for me? How's this for a scoop? Would you like to give Elf Lady's eviction? Ah, uh, looks like old Elf Lady has been evicted, finally. You know her? Yeah, sad case if I do say so myself, sport. She runs up a Mondo tab, then can't pay. That's what happens when the grape gets a hold of your reins. Dangerous stuff, but so good. Look, Slick. I'll take this off your hands, and me and a few friends of mine will see if we can find some new digs for poor Alfleda here. Really? You mean it? Yeah, for sure, kid. What'd I tell you? You get the clues, I'll provide the action. We'll set things straight, don't you worry. That's wonderful! I'm gonna go tell Alfleda. Well, looks like you get a shot of the grape, and one step closer to promotion. Cheers, kid. Guts increased by one. Hot digs! That's got a bite to it! Bites like hell, don't it, Greenhorn? Now, any other clues for me? I don't think I have anything else, do I? No notes available. Oh, actually, I don't think I have anything to show you yet. I'm clueless. Don't worry about it, Gumshoe. Let the clues come to you. Augustine is out there somewhere. Excuse me, sir. Huh? Over here, sir, at the bar. Yes, they call me Abdul Afar. May I have your ear? Sure, what's up? Forgive me, but I've been following your work with Galazio here, and I must say, I'm struck by your obvious gumshoe gumption. Gee, thanks. Call it like I see it. What I see before me now is a dwarf? Dwarfoid of considerable means. Me? Means? Well, not really. I only have a few shekels here and there. And you want to put those shekels to good use, I presume. I can tell you that my employment gives me a few connections. I may be able to find something useful to your end. Let me ask you, X1. Is there anything you really desire? Guns. Computers. Bitcoins. Candy. Bitcoins. When I play games, I can usually get a lot of thinking done. Maybe I just need to think of a plan over some great gameplay. Hmm. True survivalist in our midst. Outstanding. But I think I have something that will keep you a little safer. I respect your wealth, X1. I'm looking out for you. But you never know who's listening around here. So I can't say too much. But this item, while of immense value, will take equal parts money and machinery to get to your hands. The item surely desires a wealthy patron as its owner. Offers you unparalleled utility in return. Do you think you can make an investment next one? How does 200 euro shekels? I can't afford your offer right now. Money's always short around here, no, unless you know the right people. But I've got a deal for you. 150 euro shekels. How's that sound? I appreciate the cheap offer, but that price is still too much for me. I still haven't, I haven't wasted any of my money yet. <laughs> I see. Well, the offer will stand for a while longer. That is, until the Duragars begin their patronage. See you, X114GM9. to go find the, um... I still haven't fully explored the city yet. But I can finish off one of those quests down here, right? Yeah, they're definitely too ambitious, and it's just had a strange sort of... Ah, uh, you know how it is. Yeah, here, look who it is. Lugner. Hey, you're back. I didn't think I'd see you again. I really wanted to help out. I hate seeing the dwarfs live like this. I know. It breaks my heart. I'm just glad you were able to help me save a couple from this mess. Now, let's see how many you brought me. You got some. That's good. Not as many as I hope. This is better than nothing. There should be more than enough food in there for the trip already. Thought you'd bring a little more, so I guess I overprepared. Guess that's everything. Now I just need to load the container into the ship. This never gets old. Always the same excitement. Just a couple button presses away. Yeah! Okay, it's ready. Do you want to have the honor? What do I have to do? There's a little green button right there. All you need to do is push it. They'll be loaded on the ship, and the ship will automatically start the engines and embark on its course to the Sombrero Galaxy. Just that one little button means so much to them. That's right. Just one little button. Go ahead and press it if you want. What? Oh my. What just happened? 
Darn, that must have been the wrong button. <laughs> I guess the red button was the save all dwarfs from certain death on Necron 7 button. Green must have been the crush all stupid goddamn dwarfs with a heavy thing button. <laughs> I always get the two mixed up. What did you just do? What did I do? What did you do? You press the button. Shouldn't go around pressing buttons like that. <laughs> Never know what they're gonna do. Buttons can be pretty dangerous. But, but, you made me do it. You told me to push the button. I didn't make you do it. You could have walked away. I didn't make you do anything. It's your stupid fault those sweet, innocent dwarves are dead now. No. What? What have I done? You know, we could always send the crushed dwarf crate to the <laughs> We could always just send the crushed crate of smashed dwarf bones to the Sombrero Galaxy anyway. Let them worry about it before it starts stinking up the place. They probably wanted to leave. <laughs> probably should have been more specific about how uncrushed they expected their bones to be. I'm sure I'll get this all straightened out one day. Look, why don't you bring a bunch more back here and we can have at it again? I mean, what are the odds this happens again? Seriously, what are the odds? You are a horrible person. No, I'm seriously asking you the odds. I got bored of kicking dwarfs down the stairwell so long ago. The more of these wastes of space I can kill, the closer I am to getting off this rock, finding something else to smash for a change. Kobolds are just too goddamn squishy to smash effectively. It needs to be dwarfs. I need this! You don't know how much I fucking need this! <laughs> Oh, look at this. You're crying now. Not even one of those blubbering dramatic ways. Just silently weeping like the little puppy got strangled. Get the fuck out of my face. As a reward for bringing me much joy, I will not smash you and roll around in your entrails. You're still here. Get lost. Let me enjoy the moment. What the heck do I do? Seek vengeance. Take the loss. You know what, Lugner? You're a real piece of work. You tricked me into hurting those dwarfs! I may be small, but I sure am strong! Let's tango, bitch. Oh, good. Just blast him in the corner. Oh god. Uh, how do you? I think I'm reload. Yeah. Oh god. I died. I died horribly. And you're out of ammo. Yeah. See, I probably shouldn't have bred my only two guns together. So little one. So little can one hope. Human ho so little can one human hope to achieve in but a single life. Okay, the death haikus. I forgot about the death haikus. There's no way to reload in the field, by the way. Yeah, I know. You're supposed to have a bunch of different guns that you switch between. Holy shit, combat. I know, right? Hmm, what's this? Picked up two Columbus Day garlics. Columbus Day garlics, huh? Don't really care much for garlics. Perhaps I can find some application for these. Scotch. This is an ice box filled with guns. Oh, I see. Free guns. These guns are worthless. You can have them if you like. Put them in your guns bag. Use shift to try out random guns from your bag. This helps you to save ammo for your main guns. Take these guns utility station. Should be one south of here. If a gun is worthless, it's garbage. You can smelt it to make more ammo for your main guns. If a gun isn't too bad, you can breed them with other guns to make better weapons. If a gun seems good, you can give them a name and promote them to your main guns on your bandolier. Use mouse wheel to switch between your main guns. Remember, shift brings up a random gun you just collected. Cooler is empty. The gun system is uh, such a mess of awful fucking nonsense ideas that don't work. Yeah, it's kind of an odd system. It's definitely, like, needlessly convoluted. Yikes. This reeks to Ivan. It's funny that it's convoluted, but it's also strange. Also, I don't... I can't figure out which button would be the equivalent of shift on 
a numpad. Oh, here we go. There it is. I forgot about the... Well, I actually don't know what it is. Oh, it's the D-pad. I always forget about the D-pad. The D-pad. Oh, yeah. So this is my surfing titanium Gatling gun with nano machines. You see how slow you are? Chrome pistol. Ricocheting glass SMG. It's a strange game. We need, the, we need there to be like some kind of crypto billionaire to fund the continued development of Bark 2. D-pad. Oh god, this is a weird gun. The, the, the curving bullets is very annoying. There we go. Chicken fry do. Forget if going in these actually say like saves the game or what. Forget what considers what when the game decides it's appropriate time to save. Because there's not like a manual save as far as I know. How many gifted for a face cam stream? You know, someday I'll do a face cam stream. Don't worry, don't worry. You don't have to give subs for that. <laughs> Thank you, though. Best pope, pope ever. I appreciate it. Uh, the game has a cool aesthetic. I don't think anyone has a problem with the game on an aesthetic level. There's definitely some weird shit going on where the, 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 these, these systems are not working properly. I'm going to end the pain... I want to try... Will you just let me play with the mouse and keyboard now? That would be... This would be easier. See, like, look how much I can, like, aim more easily, and it doesn't, like, fuck up the whole... Okay, now I have to get used to the controls again, though. For combat, I would I would prefer to use mouse and keyboard, but for walking around, I kind of like having the, um... I kind of like the... I kind of like the, uh you know, controller, whatever the opposite of a fucking keyboard is. This game really did not have the best controller support, and I don't really blame them too much for that. But yeah, the guns reading and all that system is very complicated. Stagger and Bone Revolver cursed by a Wiccan Hex. Rare steel pistol. Opposite of a keyboard is a pencil. Okay, you know what? You got my ass. I'm sorry. Wait, this is where I started. I'm completely lost. I do remember this part. The only real combat area in the game is the sewers. I remember I couldn't navigate my way around the sewers for shit. It is funny. I never show my face on stream. So every time I do it, everyone's like, face reveal, face reveal. It's like, I've done it before. I had a whole Earthbound stream where my face was on screen the whole time. I just wish there was ammo drops. Again, you're supposed to... Whoops. Oh, man, they fade away, too. That's, that's brutal. The, um... Yeah, shit. I'm definitely running low on ammo. There are ammo... There are some ammo drops, but they're only for, like... It's just not a consistent thing, you know what I mean? Reloading is not, like, a traditional... action, the way it is in most games. Okay, all right. This is where I started. It takes 100% of my gamer focus to actually do the combat in this game. Oh, you bastard. You bastard. You can't get up there. This is like a good spot to sew something, but I have nothing to sew. Wow, 
that's a delicious looking um fruit. I feel a strange sensation in my spine when I look at it. Huh? What is this thing? Disgusting plant. Greetings, traveler. Welcome to the Gers Nut Slayer. What? It talked. Be not spooked. I'm your friend. Gers Nuts the Growth Elemental. Now I've seen everything. I see you are somewhat surprised and disgusted by my appearance. Would you like to chew on some of my leaves to calm your nerves? They are full of vitamins and fiber. Macha Zed. Wait, did they fully release this or is it a demo? Just a demo. Just a demo, I'm afraid. No thanks. I, I think I have to go now. Wait! Hold on for a moment. You need not be afraid of me. I'm just your friendly neighborhood Zaubermancer. Yeah, it's demo is in kind of a quotation mark. It's not really a demo. It was like the last one. They just tidy up everything that was remotely playable and sort of just released it as was. And they did dump the source code a little bit later. Um, Now, I don't mean to be rude, but I've got some things to do people to see. Ah! Such a stressful life you must live. How can you ever hope to harness the power of the Zaubers? You don't chill out every now and then. Z Zaubers? You're a Zaubermancer? You said you're a Zaubermancer. What does that mean? Ah, curious mind, I see. A Zaubermancer like me. Someone who's delved deep into the world of Zaubers. We've studied the Zaubers and lusted after them. We grasped their power for ourselves and brasted great hexes upon our enemies. Whoa, cool beans, dude. There's much one can learn about Zaubers. And from Zaubermancers. Wink. Uh oh, blush. <laughs> Zaubers, huh? What are Zaubers? Zaubers are the manifestation of the knowledge and wisdom of the ancients. They, re they resemble mystical orbs or globes that glow in the dark and in the dank. What? Now you're just making stuff up. I kid you not. After the ancients pass on from their spirits are separated from their corporeal forms, in times like these, they all... In times like these, spirits and all the knowledge they possess crystallize into Zaubers, which are then eventually discovered by us, the Zaubermancers. We then draw out their power and wisdom, take for ourselves. Some of us use this power for good, others for evil. What are you doing? What the flip are you doing down here? Me? Why, this is my home. It's been my home for centuries, ever since I overloaded myself with the powers of the Jello Zauber and mutated into a plant. I've hanged around here, meditating, pondering the many facets the universe, and guiding goofy dwarfs to greener pastures. Can you give me a Zauber? Ah, so you two are drawn to their immense power. Yes, perhaps in time you too will be a Zaubermancer, but I can't simply give you a Zauber. That's not how it works, my young friend. Zaubers must be earned. Ah, oh, shucks, another dumb errand, huh? Patience, my child. Patience. I only ask that you take those seeds in that barrel and sow them there in the first floor of the sewers. What? Are right, you going to your flippin' gourd? No, not at all. There are many fertile spots down here that you can use to sow the seeds. All you have to do is find them. I don't think these things will really flourish in a sewer. You're mistaken, they will flourish. I have foreseen it. Sow as many of those seeds as you can, then return here for your reward. Will you accept the quest? Yay, of course not. I guess I could sow your seeds. Good, very good. Sow as many of them as you can, then return here. You will not regret this. Are Zaubers dangerous? Looks to me like they've done a number on you. Yes, indeed they have. The elders warned me of the corrupting power of the Zaubers, but I did not listen. My unsatiable lust for power turned me into what you see before you today. Whoa, I'd better steer clear from Zaubers. No, that is not true. Too much of a good thing can destroy you. But if you tread with care, you will be safe. Do not realize the warning signs until it was too late. With every magic spell thrown from my magic wand, my glamp deteriorated. I grew weaker and weaker. My goal was to become stronger. <laughs> you see, Aaron. Again, I don't know if this hinting. I still don't understand if Zowers were even supposed to actually be a thing in the game. I guess they were. It seems like using magic would lower your stats. That's such a peculiar... So many fucking bizarre mechanics. Look, I appreciate the warning. But if using Zowers turns you into a shrubbery, then I don't want to go anywhere near him. I can tell you were wise beyond your years, youngster. But you, ne you need not be alarmed by the power of the Zaubers. Each time you tap into the power, your glamp gets demolished. That is true. But this effect is only temporary. Use Zaubers sparingly. And no harm will come to you. I see. Okay, so it's a temporary thing. Hmm. Very interesting. Wow. This is delicious looking uh, fruit. I feel a strange sensation in my spine when I look at it. Oh, here, here's, here's the seeds. These are the seeds I'm supposed to throw around the sewers. Ah, spot for me to sow a sewer seed. All right, here it goes. Ah, 
I completely forgot about this side quest. Like I said, I definitely did not fully explore the sewers or the entire demo. The orbs of the ancients, indeed. Indubitably. I should guns breed my miniguns away. I fucking hate the miniguns. I already wasn't here. This was the other room. This was the other room with the this. Okay. These heal you, so I might as well use it. Can I only select for my... Oh, I oh, never mind. I was like, can I only select for my bandolier? Um... Minigun, oh, Gatling guns and miniguns are different. Again, there's so much weird random. Look at all the effects and all the stats. All the stats and effects. I'm not good at, like, figuring out this shit, okay? I've never been good at this kind of stuff that they put in video games. You see, like, the gun's parentage, which two guns were created to create this gun. Oh, it's so much. It's too much. All right. Select a Gatling gun, and then the other one shouldn't be a Gatling gun, because if I just do two Gatling guns, I'm going to get another Gatling gun. Thanks for stopping by, Vasilia. I do I honestly appreciate hearing just people in general, people who aren't, like, total Barkley freaks, what their thoughts on this game is. Oh, of course. It's a minigun. A darling gun. Promote. Oh yeah, you can name your guns and put them on your bandolier. I will call you SSS. Finish. Fave, unfave. Um, what else shall I look at? Equipment, jerkin, increase, equip the booty jerkin, equip the booty, of course I gotta equip the booty jerkin. Um, did the gun I make have shit damage stats? That's hilarious. You just gotta use what you can use. Damage on this gun is fucking dog shit. The fucking like, insane screen shake for the minigun is a. Uh, whoops, I'm out of ammo. Oh, crap. Out of ammos. What's the button to switch between your non bandolier guns? I forget. I know how to switch between the random ones, but I wasn't paying attention for the. Um, I only remember how to do it on, on controller. See, shift is between the uh, non-bandolier guns. Shift is between your gun's bag. Uh, the gun's systems are so complex that it's actually impossible to make something worth using. I don't know if it's actually possible, but it might as well be impossible if it's not. They should have had melee in this. They really should have, to some degree. Especially considering I don't have any ammo. I'm gonna have to just avoid enemies and die horribly. I'm trying to get my way out of the sewer. I forgot that when you get blasted and killed, it takes you into the sewer. This game has so many features, I know, right? Clearly the enemy AI never got that advanced, if you know what I mean. Oh, great, I'm on the wrong side over here, too. Brast it. If I leave, I'm trying to remember now. If I leave the sewers, it will be Huskow on site, right? Oh my god, they're just like hanging out here waiting for me. I believe time has passed. Here we go. 
This is so much more fun than my last forced servitude. Hey, I made a song about being trapped on a sewer plantation and constantly teetering on the precipice of disciplinary torture. You want to hear it? Oh, uh, sure. Okay, great. Ahem. Oh, I work all day and I work all night. What comrades call plight, I call delight. Rutabagas in the green pile, garlics in the red. Confuse your roots and you'll end up dead. Wow, that's, uh... Seven out of ten. Really? You think so? Yeah, I think you have a real gift for libretto. Your your plight as a slave clearly inspires your transportative lyrics. Oh, well, I was going for more celebratory tone, but it's still open for revision. I, and I guess uh, for interpretation. Anyways, thank you. What can I help you with? What is this place? Oh, it's just the Glory Sewer Plantation. What, you've never seen a place like this? Uh, not really. You must not have been looking. Our plantation overlord says that a sewer plantations are locked up in a tight economic battle for superiority. Overlord? Yeah, they're in that hole over there, but I wouldn't go in unless you have something for them. Butter, most likely. Fortunately, all we've planted recently are a variety of tubers and tuber-like root vegetables. Roots and tasteless tubers. The overlord pretty much only wants butter, and there isn't much in the way of dairy in the sewer, so we grow a lot of root vegetables, boil them down to sludge in those barrels, and the sludge eventually coagulates into a foamy cream, which is then further processed into a spatty spoon of full sustenance. Wow, you dwarfs are so resourceful. Well, the overlord and, my, and their desires are tantamount to all. My job is mainly just to fish out those troublesome Columbus Day garlics that grow like weeds here in the sewers. Why do you need to remove the garlic? So you don't want the garlics. Well, I think they're delicious, but they're expressly forbidden by the overlord. Do you know why? Something to do with debilitating autoimmune reactions? I'm not really sure. The overlord are really wise, so they would know what they can and cannot handle. Who is the overlord? They, or uh, it, is many. I guess it's hard to explain. You'll have to see for yourself. Plus, I have to get back to labor. Talk to you later, X1. Please, I'm hoeing. Don't put me on garlic duty. The smell makes me faint. The heat makes me faint. At least, when I pass out from the hoeing, I can hold on to the hoe. I'm not ho, ho, ho. I love to hoe. Work with the hoe is better than garlic duty. Mecha Rexo. This seems really long for demo. Again, it's not exactly a demo. It's more like just them tidying up what little bit that they had ready to show people. Rather than never releasing anything. You know what I mean? Did you see Grigory on the way here? I don't know. Who is Grigory? Grigory is my best friend. He tried to escape, but Rubby went after him. I heard some laser fire, but Rubby came back alone. I was hoping Grigory managed to escape. I don't think I saw your friend. Maybe he got away. You would have seen him running. Grigory is big and slow. He cannot hide so well. well. I'm sure he got away. Probably just went a different way. I doubt it. Babby vaporized as anybody who escapes now. Probably why I didn't see him. Well, thanks for talking to me. I better get back to work before Babby cuts another one of my toes off. I don't have many left. It is not polite to stare. You're the one staring at me. Heh. <laughs> The only person that's looked at me here that's looked at me. Actually, just stopped to find out more. Most dwarfs just pass me by, you know. You must know something they don't. Uh, not really. I have amnesia. Doubtful. Come clean. Who do you work for? I work for three people. Me, myself, and then your beeswax. Vigilante, huh? Me likey. Probably gonna turn up dead. But it's nice to see someone and you're plotting their own course at the end of the red line of the universe. What about you? What about me? Do you work on the butter barrel? Ha! Chris Paith, no. I'm just here because the gas mask works surprisingly well, and it's obvious your nose doesn't. Yeah, I'm starting. I'm tearing up, actually. So who are you? You seem different from everybody else I've met. Just an observer, paid to keep an eye on things. Call me Stall. Nary ye mind. I'm out of here. All right. Hmm. Since I have these garlics, I wonder if I should add them to the butter. Let's, uh... Do I really want to drop both garlics in the butter? Two garlics. Let's throw caution into the wind and really dose this swamp butter with two. Count them. Two Columbus Day garlics. Clisp. Hey, help me withstand the stench. Added two garlics to the butter barrel. There we go. Wonder what I do now. Oh, this is truly wretched. 
the sewer foam is congealing with the tuber and garlic scum. It's butter now? Skimmed off the sewer butter. Guess this is all I need. Frightening armaments. Fall in Gordo. Babby, we require more butter. You're not Babby. What have you done with our Babby? Babby! Yipes! Sorry, I didn't mean to intrude. Who subjugated you to the glorious plantation? Was it Babby? Where is your mask? Oh, well, I'm just passing through. I have amnesia. Your feeble mental posture is no excuse. Get to work! We require more butter. Why are you down here? Who are you? We are falling, Gordo. Masters of all you see and hear. We are in our we are in our realm, so you better be on your best behavior. Oh, so you run the plantation? We are the plantation. Without the guidance of our fist, this plantation would fall into ruin. Through this remote, we control the greatest symphony of torture and agriculture in the history of time. You should stop being so mean to your workers. I think it's really mean what you're doing to all your workers up here. They're all miserable and don't even know it. Flattery will get you nowhere, Fraulein. We mo we would not lower ourselves to procreate, procreate with something such an unbecoming hairstyle. Why the first person plural? What do you mean we? You're just one person. One person? You know nothing. Your insular mind cannot comprehend fallen Gordo. So when, so when are you this fat you count as more than one person? Wrong all the time. When Babby comes, you'll put on garlic's removal duty and it'll be your job to remove those repulsive bulbs. Counterfeit bagel. This game is officially canceled, right? That is correct. This is just playing the scraps. Uh, Procre eat. What's that? We were once one inside. Now we are many inside. When one Duragar eats another, one may appear to be left, but inside there are two. When stupid, pitiful dwarf eats, it is one divided by one. When noble, strong Duragar eats, it is one plus one. Uh, when this Duragar eats more Duragars, that Duragar too is added. All Duragars are added to Fallen Gordo. We are all here. Uh, so limit the amount of your life forms. Uh, that may be added to a collective. Such a thing as a power of procre eating. Okay, yes, I get it. So if one Duragar eats another Duragar, the mind of the Duragar eaten becomes part of the eating Duragar. Correct! Gross. How many people am I talking to right now? You are in the presence of nine great minds. Pug, Aloysius P. Arbogast III, Jung Jong, the baby from dinosaurs, Orlando Opie Leaf, and Chair. Chair is an unusual name for Duragar. We've also absorbed the chair we are sitting in. When you speak to us, you're speaking to Chair. Poor chair. Chair is pleased despite our complaints of the oppressive weight. I'm just saying it seems like a rough life. You will know the true meaning of a rough life when Babby tears your arms and legs off and forces you to walk around on your tongue. What if I got you some garlics? No! Don't you know anything? Garlics are not to be procreate eaten with. Garlics are non-compatible with the eroticism of Duragar metabolism. Okay, so no garlics then. No garlics. Or else. Or else what? Or else. Boom. What if I got you some butter? That is Babby's job. Get Babby to get butter. Butter is already with us. We can always have more of it. Uh, okay. Great plantation overlord. I have some of your hourly helping of sewer butter. What? Where? We can't turn around. Come here, bring the butter. Ah, yes, masters. Now slather it on our belly. Miss not one spot, ignore not one crease. My clisp faith, you can't be serious. You must, we command it. Won't worm away from this duty. Can't you see how much you want to eat instead? You know, master, why don't you taste it instead of the belly application? Don't you want to eat the glorious butter? The smell disturbs us. We'd rather have it on the skin. Prove to us that it tastes of the butter of old. Eat the butter, eat the butter. Gulp. Fine, I'll eat the butter. What am I doing? <laughs> Mercy me, this taste, it burns. I must summon my strength. Feel the butter bonding to my throat, my stomach, my soul. You suffer a minus one penalty to your glamp. No! 
Mmm, this has to be the best sewer butter I've ever tasted. What? The best? Are you procreating with the sewer butter and not us? Give it, give it to us. You are right. This is delicious butter. We will share with no one and only ourselves. You have served Fallen Gordo well. We may just consume you after all. What? What is this? What is this? Feeling? I do not know this feeling. This. This feeling. Garlics! <laughs> now that's what I call an eye-opening experience. Now I think I should investigate that switch on the wall over there. According to the plate, I might have just opened a gate somewhere. Hmm, where is there a gate here in the plantation? Could it be that this switch just opened a way forward? He won't be subjugating any dwarfs from now on. Couldn't you have just shot that guy instead of killing Garlic? No way, he's a super powerful nine Duragars in one. Hey, guess what I just did? I don't know. I just gave that fat guy a lesson he will not soon forget. What fat guy? The, uh... The fat guy! The one who runs the plantation! You're free! You can leave! Why bother? I've been here my whole life. Just like a couple others here. Tried escaping a couple times and Babby always finds me and brings me back. But there's nobody to take you back anymore! Everything's fixed! There's nothing out there for me. Saved a couple- escaped for a couple of months one time. I didn't know what to do. Farming is all I know. I'm better off just staying here, sticking to what I know. But thanks for going through all that trouble to save us. Uh, I wish I had something to give you, but I don't have anything. You're a nice person. I hope being told that is its own reward. Hey, you guys are free to go. That fat guy is a goner. What? Where would we go? Why would we leave this plant? What are you saying? Why don't you want to leave this awful place? To be honest with you, no. I, I belong here. Picking up veggies is all I know. It's all I care about. But there's no one to keep you down here anymore. Oh, I'm sure they'll send someone else down here after a while. This happened before. B but look, I appreciate what you've done for us, but I'm afraid it was all for naught. This is our home. Sorry. Oh, ho, oh, oh. ho. He doesn't even give a fuck. Squished a rat. Let's just squish that poor rat by stepping on him. Am I getting further into the sewers or am I getting. I can't tell. Oh no, I got. I got got. Now I'm gonna get killed because I don't have anything to shoot the. Uh... I should just figure out what the uh, proper key is for pulling out your bandolier guns. Which is 9 through 11. Oh, I guess they do go away after a while. Okay, there I died. The game seems to be chiding you for playing it. Seems so determined to make you not want to play it. No, it's just trying to filter out the people who don't have a... Don't have true gumption, I believe. Is it going to put me back at the same trash pile I originally came from? That's what I'm wondering. Yeah, real gamer hours. Yeah, it is. Sewers of Nog. How do you, um... Hmm. I'm gonna press every key on the keyboard. And... Okay, now I don't know how to get out of the no notes held screen. I like how convoluted the pause menu is. Yeah, it is a strange game, to be, to be for sure. Again, I, it would be easy if I could do some kind of controller hybrid, because at least when I'm on the controller, it just it feels bad in combat, but moving around regularly is okay. B pulls them out. I guess I'll just have to use both. I 
it's annoying the game doesn't let you freely switch between um control styles on a whim. That would be a lot more convenient to be honest. Yeah, so you can get bandolier ammo like that. My bandolier ammo. I still don't know if I should be killing these guys. Or uh or not. Hello, Shy Comforter. Glad to have you here. I'm always glad to hang out with new people on stream. Oh, those actually hurt you. That's funny. Left bumper is roll. I'm so bad at learning different control schemes. Dying Dwarf. Help me. Please, youngster. How long has the demo been out? I thought Barkley 2 was basically non-existent. Yeah, this came out when the project died, and that died about four years ago. Yeah, whoa, mister. You're all right. Not quite, youngster. I think this dwarf's days are numbered. Looks like you're really bleeding. Where were you hurt? All over, youngster. Surprised us. Looks like my time's almost up. I'm in a bad way. Was scouting, blasted into a room a few floors down. Think it was a tomb. A banshee caught up to me. Got me good. Not much strength. A banshee did this? Where did it get off to? They sound like really bad news. Really bad. Tracked it for a while. Lost it. In the tomb when it appeared. Got back to here, but too late. Strength is decreasing even further. Okay, we're gonna get you out of here. Uh, how should I do this? I'm not going anywhere. Paper, pencil, help me. Get my paper, check. My pocket. In your pocket, huh? Got a piece of tattered paper. Did you need this to write on? Yes. Give it here. Here's the paper. Gave the tattered paper back to the dying dwarf. Thank you, youngster. I thank you for being here. Now I must record what I saw. Help others. There, it's done. Thank you, youngster. Now I can finally... Hey, stay with me! I should have asked him about the tomb. Damn it. I think he's passed on. Didn't finish writing his note. Looks like he's a soldier of some kind. I wonder if these longinous fellows I'm looking for could help me with this mystery. Ah, spot to sow a super seed. Seems like these switches should be like a thing you can actually use, but they aren't, as far as I can tell. Oh look, it's the uh, piss pipe from... What's his face? Ugh, what is this smell? Someone just die down here? Mysterious yellow stream. Wonder what this is. <laughs> Take a slurp. Leave it alone. Hey, this thing could be like radioactive. Maybe it'll give me superpowers. You suffer a minus one penalty. <laughs> that kills you if you drink the piss. That's too good. What happened? Oh, now I remember. What happens in the sewers, stays in the sewers. <laughs> brutal. Simply brutal. Oh, not, not that. Anything but that. Your name containing Cyber is the longest setup for this game I've ever seen. Oh yeah, it was all just a bit. I shouldn't have come in the sewers. I deliberately was avoiding the sewers, but I forgot then if you die when I died to that Duragar. 
It's gonna send me to the sewers, yeah. And now I'm gonna get keep getting combo destroyed. If I if I knew where the entrance was, at least I could make my way out. Oh yeah, the more I die, you're gonna see me keep changing my brain. Like when I get back to one of those um, things I can show you, and those uh, tubes, one of those tubes. I don't know if it have. I don't think it has any like effect on gameplay, but it will at least update that graphic, at the very least. I wasn't here again. This was the clamp tube. Banish to the sewers for the rest of the stream. I might just do a quick restart if I can't find my way out. I want to get taken to the Hooskow. Persistent little bastards. What the hell is up here? Never thought I'd see someone instantly die from drinking piss. Fictional or real life. It happened. Super A man. It's no cesspool X, right? The disparity between, like, all talking gameplay and then all of a sudden it's all combat gameplay, I have to admit, it is a little odd. I have a feeling, like, if I could just have get a few good guns with, like, huge ammo counts and then, like, cycle through them, it wouldn't be so bad. But uh, the beginning of the game is definitely not good, unfortunately, in terms of the action RPG gameplay. Oof, they do a lot of damage too. There is some way out of the sewers, I just can't remember exactly where it is. I think somewhere I have, like, a giant map of the sewers. I should have opened that up on my second monitor. Found a draw point! Faraga found! Who will draw? Stupid fucking, what is it, like a Final Fantasy VIII joke or something? Stock five Faragas. Here we go. The forlorn cyber ghetto. It's curfew, right? Yeah. Huh? What's going on? It's as silent as a crypt in here. It's almost like a curfew or something. Better stay on my toes. This is just a hunch. But I think the Duragars might be up to no good. Now there's a stealth section. I don't even know what you're supposed to do. Is there anywhere you can go in turn? I thought you, you have to get taken to the Hooskow, right? Do we have any Barkley heads in chat? I don't really know what you're supposed to do at this point in the game. I always eventually just get caught. I just walk around until I get caught. Hey, it's this guy who wanted to sell me that game. I might as well buy it. You got the vid game Creepy Ghoulie 4. I will, mister. You can count on that. I'll be here if you want to talk about tips or tricks or anything, really. If you want something more than that. I think I need to go to the uh, tube to activate my VidCon. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find one again. Oh no! There's a Duragar. Like I said, I don't even know where I'm supposed to be going. So there's no way- there are- there are some ways in this game to make money. Like if I had taken the other guy's quest for the- the um... You know what I mean? The- the other guy- if I took the other side of the container, the other- oh that's- that's this room. Got it, got it, got it. If I hadn't trusted the Duragar, if I instead trusted the green guy... Thank you, GA Shuffle. What's up? What's up, people? Oh. Ah, it got me. That's fine. What the fridge? Because, again, I have no idea where I'm supposed to be going. Oh, you are in a world of hurt right now. Gulp. No. I think in the final game, Hooskow might have been an optional place. Um, time for reality check, pal. You're going to the Hooskow, and you are never coming back. <laughs> Yo, what's up, big? 
Yeah, I love Frankie's pixel art so much. Look, can you see Wilmer, the guy who was, who was supposed to pay his rent for? He's in the Huskow because I didn't pay his rent. I think, or it might be because I gave his paper to Gelasio. One or both of those. Stop right there, bootlicker. Looks like you have the privilege of witnessing one of Warden Thrax's legendary gloom sermons. Pay attention. Oh, wait, there is a way to finish the main quest here, which is um, you're just a body swap with the upcoming governor. I never actually finished that quest. Citizens of the Huskow, I'm your warden. I am your future. I control your fate, and your fate shall be thus. Your bones shall bleach in the glaring sun. Clisfaith will not find you. Your puny bodies will be torn apart, and Clisfaith will not put you back together again. You'll be cast to the deepest abyss without a torch. Clisfaith will not light your way. You will be buried to your neck, the deepest trench of the deepest ocean. And Clisfaith will not part the waters for you. Whatever you were in your past life is forfeit. Now, you are all meat, and the starving earthworms eagerly await what scant nutrition they can squeeze from your worthless corpse. Some of you may already be thinking of escape, but let me put these thoughts to rest. There is no escape. Everything you knew is gone. Every dwarf you knew is dead. Every hovel you cowered in is now destroyed. Every succulent fruit you first tasted is rotten. Every gem you have hoarded has been lost. You are the Huskow. The Huskow is you. Welcome to your new lives. <laughs> How does it feel to know you just lost every last bit of hope, shrimp? B but silence! Enough dicking around. Move it, dickwad! You're about to get processed into the system for the rest of your natural life. Well, well, well. What do we got here? This youngster was caught wandering about during curfew. A rebel plotting to overthrow the government, no doubt. Pfft, sad. Let's see now. One count of getting roughed up, six counts of walking on the street, two counts of conspiracy against the state, four counts of being a dwarf. That amounts to 1,293 years in the Huskow. No chance of parole. Get fucked, pal. What? But, but... 1,293 years. Cyber dwarf. I'm sorry. Yuck, yuck, yuck. Get fucked, pal. Get fucking fucked. Make your cell a f fat home shrimp. Whoa! -ho -ho. And then this is the Huskow part of the game. Boltheos. What are you in for, Jug End? Me? Uh, well, heh, don't matter anymore, youngster. This place is a way of forgetting the past, erasing history. Some dwarfs come in here. Dwarfs with the future with promise. Took a wrong turn. That's all it takes. One wrong turn. Who are you? <laughs> that don't matter either, youngster. When I got out of here, my old life won't be waiting. My old lady, my kids, they've moved on. Left me behind when old blue slapped the chains on me. For the best, all for the best. When I get out of here, ain't nobody gonna recognize the old me no longer. Clispakes, clisp sakes. Huska was scary. Clispate has nothing to do with it, kid. It ain't this place that frightens dwarfs. The real thing you should be frightened of, youngster. The thing that'll keep you up in a cold sweat in that bunk of yours. Is what this place turns you into. Golly! Looks like my time is almost up, youngster. Here, take these. The dwarf that was here when I got locked up gave them to me. Only fitting them, pass them on to you. Plus, where I'm going, I won't be needing them. Got pack of smokes. Holy smacks! Who scow smokes? Maybe they can help you avoid the next wrong term. Clisp knows they helped me through all these years. Uh, thank you. Don't mention it. Time to see what's on the other side. So long, bitches! Wow. The who scow really changes you. Uh oh. I, uh. I gotta go! I need to find some place to, uh, get relief quick, or else. Guess I get bottom bunk. Take a rest pause. It's 
should really look around for a bit. Ugh, they take away your roll. That's really the most devious thing they could do to you here. But, uh, yeah, this is basically the end of the demo. I don't, I th there is a way to escape the Hooskow through the toilet. But I forget how to start that minigame. Hello, is this the line for the bathroom? Dark Amides. It is! But well, what's it to you? Well, I, uh, gotta go. Tough squat. This is gaming clash territory. What are you? Salvatrucha? I'm sorry. MS-13. You, uh... Gang banger? No way! I walked the straight and narrow! I'd never be a gang banger! Alright, well, these turlets are for the gaming clatch schemes only. There are plenty of corners for you to pop a squat. Uh, well, I think I can hold it till I find a utility station. Know of any in here? Utility station? What do I look like, a lone guns braster? I guess not. Anything else? Well, it seemed like a weird place to want to control in the Hoosca. Don't worry! We gaming clatch of a plan. Plan? Yeah. Let's check this out. See that turlet up there? Yeah, I see it. Looks beleaguered. <laughs> That's right. We've already got taken down three of the four turlets, one by one. The duties of countless prisoners. You know what happens when all four of the pipes clog up? Kablooey. Dag gone. So if you're going to join up with the gaming class, you better, you better just be ready to do drop trow. Contribute to the cause. What do you say? Well, I uh, I would if I could, but I kind of have a problem with, you know, going in public. We're in the Hooskow, X1. Everything is public here. You need to unclench yourself from the fear you cling to. Leave it all out there. I'm tr I'll try. I'm just not ready yet. Very well. Come back when you need to answer the call. Dark Comedies. I just wanted to use the, um, the fact facility. The facilities are tied up a turf war. Can't be letting only any old jumbo talk or jumo walk in without a good reason. Well, I can think of one very obvious reason you should let me use the bathroom. No can do. Tell you what, you joined the gaming clatch and I'll grant you access. Well, it's not that I don't want to join the clatch. It's more that I can't really, um, go with others around. This is who's going to You better get used to a lot of things with others around. I, I just can't. You're going to need to come to terms with that. Until then, get scooting. Hi, I'm X1. I'm new. No shit, you don't say. Uh, what are you in for? Look, if you're here to bust me out, I'm not really up for making friends. Wait, Lafayette didn't send you, did he? Uh, no, I don't think so. Hmm, damn. How about Lou? Dr. Rita Marie Lou? That ring a bell? Uh, sorry, haven't met her. I'm sure she's a great doctor. Looks like I'm stuck here. Stuck in the Hooskow for the rest of my natural and virtual life. Is there anything I can do to help? Unless you can pull a secret Longinus dossier out of your keister. I don't think so. Uh, I don't think so. Frack. That's it. I'm stuck here. I'm sorry. I wish I could do something. We all do, kid. Hey, what's up? I'm X1. I'm new. Benedict Moldus. New? You wouldn't happen to be affiliated with Longinus now, would you? Why do you want to know? Look, just cut the crud, okay? I'm all business, no pleasure. Who exactly are you? The secret informant, working for Longinus from within the system. I'm not getting too convinced about you being Longinus. What? Hey man, you see this green armband? That's all the proof you need. Come on man, you gotta help me. Give me some juicy intel or something. Maybe some other time. The, the, the no music in the Hooskow is spooky. Looks like you got yourself into a tight spot, X1. Not unlike the last time we spoke. Oh, what's up? Thank you very much, the Inquisitive Mug. Can't believe you did a Mystic Knights reference. Hell yeah, Shell. <laughs> Thank you. Looks like you've gotten yourself into a tight spot, X1. Oh, hey, um... Wait, how do you know my name? What do you mean? You don't remember me? We've certainly met. Uh, we have? I think I had remember meeting you. What is that supposed to mean? I'm hurt, X1. I really am. I would just spilled my guts to you a few hours earlier. Now you don't have the decency to remember me? <laughs> you think you know someone. Playtime has transpired! Proclaim thine identity! I ain't got no time for this goof troop bullpuck. 
All right, cut the bunk. Who are you? How do you know me? Not so fast, X1. Information is shekels, and shekels are power. There is no th such thing as free lunch in this parsec of the galaxy. If you want me to refresh your memory, you'll need to pay up. Oh, yeah? How much? No, no. Shekels may be your power, but I'm more interested in the former. Information. Let's play a game. If you can figure out who I am, I'll tell you how to get out of here today. Really? What do you say, X1? Hmm. Think, X1. Who have I met that I couldn't see their face? Someone with a mask. I think you're Putty from the plantation. I think you must be Etim Lejim, the plantation guy. You must be Gruff, the slave. You can't fool me, Durigar. <laughs> you're the bandage prisoner who gave me those smokes. Boltheos, you're Stahl from the plantation. You're Darkimedes from the gaming clutch. I actually don't remember the answer here. You're stall from the plantation. Well, well, well. Looks like you have a brain on you after all. Yeah? I knew you were stall. It's not that difficult. I mean, the clues are all there. Who else is on Necron 7 speaks in my vocabulary level? Uh, you all kind of sound the same to me, to be honest. That's because we're all from the same maker. Uh, what? Our lord and savior, Clispeth. He gave his life, so... So we could have ours. I didn't take you to be religious. We all have to find our way somehow. Now take this military grade M80 and drop it down the turlet. The turlet? Yeah, the turlet. Drop this thing in there and you'll have your way out of this place. Got the military grade M80. Gee whiz, a real M80. I've only read about these things in the anarchist cookbook. Well, now you have one in the palm of your hand. But I'm still confused about what to do. All right, look. See that room over there? Yeah, what about it? Isn't that where the warden went in before? Yep. Inside is the control room for the whole prison. If you can get in there, uh, you'll be able to open not only the cell doors, but the gates to the prison as well. And then I can get out of here. We can get out of here. Exactly. But how's the toilet factor in? You'll see. Just drop that charge in the prison turlet, and the path will be obvious to you. Gee, thanks, Stall. Uh, why are you helping me so much? Let's just say I represent some vested interests. You've got a lot of fans out there in the galaxy. X1, good luck. You'll need it. So hold up, X1. Get to the prison turlet and drop in the M80. It's the only way to get out of here. You got it, Stall. Uh, Wilmer? Oh, hey, X1. What's cracking? Is that really you? How'd you get thrown in the Huskow? Delinquency, I guess. Figure one of those Durigars and tear to know caught wind of my mortgage payment. Decided to round me up. I don't understand. I thought I took care of... Wait a minute. I gave that paper to Gelasio, didn't I? Did he sell my info to the Durigars? Wilmer. It might be my fault that... Let me stop you right there, Tyke. You don't need to apologize. In fact, I've never felt better. I should be thanking you. What do you mean? Look at this swole. Look how yoked my boy, your boy is. I'm a freaking hench beast. You certainly have changed. The Hooskow really changes you. So, have to wait for me to finish this arm. <laughs> Come back in a few hours. Oh, no, I didn't need to lift. I was just coming to see if we were still cool. Yeah, we're cool, brah. Um, okay, see ya. Oh, one more thing. I can't help you much inside the Hooskow. That's MS-13 in Clash territory. But out here in the yard, I got your back. Little and <laughs> thanks, Mr. Wilmer. Okay, back inside. Are you in jail for stealing soda? I wish. It's for being a dwarf. Crime of being a dwarf. Was there anything over here? No. What is it, X1? I think maybe I can go now. No headway. I'm using toilet. First of all, it's pronounced turlet. And second of all, we're in the process of clogging the pipes. You, you either contribute to the applause or you get behind when we bust out of here. Daggone. Can't get over myself. I'm this explosive fellow. Explosive? What in the zooks? You're holding that beauty all this time? How did you even get in the Huskow? It's a long story. Well, it all started with an I can it. Come here. Stories can wait. Liberation for the gaming catch can. Hell, head straight to the turlet and drop this sucker in there. Does that mean? Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. 
to the gaming clutch. We'll see you at the meeting in all Akihabara. Here, you'll need this. Got Darby's gaming clutch invitation. Cool beans. I'll be sure to make it. Great. Now get in there and blow this combo to smithereens. Here goes. Seven. Great. Googly. Hmm. Looks like my path lies before me. Now there's a swimming mini game. This game is so odd. What is this, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? Again, the game is just absolutely peculiar in terms of the feature creep and bloat. It's like I'm playing a real video game or something. Sewer Grail. Uh oh. Enemies! No, give me that air! Give me that sweet, sweet oxygen! Ah, monsters! Drowning sim? It's literally a drowning sim, you're absolutely right. Ah. Sound effects are good. Sewer chalice. I have no idea where I'm going, though, to be honest. But I'm just hanging out. Grabbing my sewer kenningkins. The lungs had purpose, that's right. I don't know if the bowels actually, like... I don't know if you can actually lose. You know what I mean? Like, shit yourself. <laughs> Bastard. So weird. Yeah, it's literally the eel from Mario 64. You're totally right. Gamer's Tavern. <laughs> the breathing sound effect cracks me up every time. Again, still not 100% sure where to go, but I'm having fun vibing. I think this is the start, right? This is like, this is where I came out. It seemed like a time limit prison. I know, I agree. That's what it seems like the, uh, the bowel meter is for, right? But I don't know if it was going down or not. I'm not sure what happens if I had guessed wrongly to, uh, what's his face's MAD question. I'd just be stuck. Might have been a soft lock. Because I don't know how to get out then. Why don't you go first and blow up the turret? Gilbert's Peak. Check out the peak. Phew! That was a doozy. Wonder where I am. How to get out of here. That way is blocked. Looks like my only option is to go north and left. Oh, what the cuff? I'm back at the Huskow again. Oh, no. There's no way out of here. Wait. That must be the control room. I bet you I could open these gates from there. I just have to make sure I don't get caught by those blue baddies. All right, more stealth, baby. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Rules of engagement, brassed on sight. Ah! No, don't brass me. No brass me on sight. Ah, I'm died. I'm died. Were they fucking fighting each other? What the hell was that? <laughs> yeah, wow, I went big time. Um, Looks like you fucked up the old prison. Time to get back to basics. Oh shit, they just 
give up on the prison section if you fuck up there. Fascinating. I guess it's that was probably something they added in the jank demo. Look, it's fucking Dark Souls. Crestfallen gamer. Well, well, well. Do we have here a new gamer? Let me guess. A youngster on his path to be to a gamer's destiny, right? You're not the first one to try and grasp that glorious destiny. <laughs> All right, the Necron 7 Wilds is officially, officially out of content. The game is going to start blocking me from exploring now. There might be some combat out here, though. Yep, here we go. They call me the Dark Draker. Why? Let's just say my swoop attacks have the force of a drake snapping maw. Other names they call me. <laughs> Too many to count. But I vlog under the repro. Of, I vlog about repro katanas under the nom de guerre blood fang X. Weapon of choice? Dual wield wakazashis. Age? Unknown. Race? Classified. Special move? Zeitgeist of swords. The last thing you'll ever see. If I see you out there in the Necron Seven Wilds, I won't hesitate to cut you down. If I even suspect you endanger my person or ideals. All right. So, the Dark Draker was just a placeholder they drop in area that to mean like unfinished content. So that means like you can't go that way in the janky demo. I'm curious if there is a demo that lets me fully explore, like that guy was saying, or if I'm gonna have to manually go in Game Maker and just look at the maps. Husko. I thought, okay, my, the reason I failed that stealth so hard was because I was anticipating it showing me the, the, the ring circle around them. Maybe it was. It was just on too light of a background. I couldn't really make it out. Gilbert's Peak. Check out the peak. This is just that same hallway I came from, right? No, it isn't. Oh, see, here we go. Dark Trigger. Oomph. You've tested my patience. Well, know this. I've killed a man seven times before he hit the ground. My wrath is legion. Dare not awaken it. Game Maker Stream. I'm not opposed to the idea. I'm not opposed to it. Okay, so this is the same map. It's just a different... They blocked the tunnel on the bottom. Got it. Got it. Cybersoul finishing. No, I'm not that talented. Sorry. No Game Maker. I'm no Game Maker studio ishin. But I would love to just pick at the pieces. Pick at the remnants, see what's left, because there's plenty I haven't seen yet. I like the crucified guys, though. Second Kickstarter one now. Just, you have to give up hope like I did. It's sadly the only way to maintain your sanity. No! The Dark Draker. The Dark Draker strikes again. There's nothing to finish. This is all there is. I know that's what I mean, like... The original team left, so it's like, at that point, you, what's the point of even finishing without them, you know what I mean? Without the original vision, without the original team members. Well. Like I said, you gotta know when to hold them, and you gotta know when to fold them. Alright, the stream's almost done, but, uh... Skip the stupid prologue. I uh, I want to show you what happens if you actually remember to pay Wilmer's rent. Oh god! See, there's all these other quests I didn't do. I didn't do the bank quest. I didn't do the governor quest. I didn't do the creepy pasta quest. There's so many little side quests I still didn't even show off. I didn't finish the Eric quest. Fuck, I just won a big circle like an asshole. Like an idiot, moron, asshole. These towns aren't even that big, but I keep getting lost in them. It's your deal. Hey there, youngster. You know anything about the sewers? Oh, I already talked to this guy. 
just thought he might give me a, a fishing rod. I'm surprised all these quests are actually doable. I know, right? I know, right? It's crazy. This is what you're supposed to do. If you're a responsible gamer, you wouldn't be going around being the DJ Booty Daimyo. You go straight to Tier Nano Housing. This is really what you're supposed to do, by the way. I'm not, like, doing a bit. I mean, I am doing a bit by not talking and just dragging out the tedium. <laughs> Hello, Quack. How's it going? I love that little animation of the, uh, the printer going directly into the paper shredder. <laughs> Papers, please, joke. Very much so. That's such a good fucking game. It's not the kind of game I would personally play on stream, but Papers, please. Whatever that guy's name was, I forget. But he also made Obra Dinn, right? That guy's a ledge. A ledge! And you know what he can do? He can actually finish his games! Sorry, I shouldn't... I really do have m many ambivalent mixed feelings about it all. The whole situation. Lucas Pope, that's the guy. See, I knew it was a guy with a cool name, too. What an asshole. He gets to have a cool name and be like a game maker guy. Gamers must unite! I love the DMV quest. I mean, it's not a DMV. I'm paying rent at an office, but like, <laughs> it's like standing in line at the DMV. So many of these games, this game's jokes are like just make you wait for a really ta long time, make you read like an obscene amount of text. How bad was the drama that caused the development team to break up? There was some bad blood between people. Like I said earlier, I don't want to necessarily go and rehash all the exact details, but there was some fallings out, some people leaving the project on not super good terms. Can you even leave once you're in line? I think you can, but I don't want to, because I know if I leave, they, they'll move forward and steal my spot, and I'll have to wait to the back again. <laughs> Yeah, Justin Wang, he's like the only guy that actually made a video, like the only guy that made a video about the, the blow-up drama when the jank demo came out and everything, you know what I mean? It's a pretty good video. I wanted to make one, a Bark 2 video that, was, that wasn't just that. It would be like that video, but it wouldn't just be, oh, here's the, all the drama. It would be like everything leading up to Barkley 2. Like the, the big Barkley video. I'd love to make the big Barkley video and release it this year on 11.11. I don't know if I have it in me, but if I do, it'll at least, you know... I gotta start by playing through the games on stream. We're doing it, guys. We're almost halfway through the line! It's not that I don't want to do a Barkley video. I'd love to do a Barkley video. It's just... I have a lot on my plate. Or I don't have a lot on my plate. The point is I need to... I would love to do it. I just need to make sure I'm getting shit out consistently in the first place. Someday I'll do it. Someday I will do a bright thing. I can't, I can't promise you. I will not make the promise that they did. That it'll come out on 11, 11, 23. But I will someday make a nice sparkly video. The promise has not been made. I'm going to be honest, I remember that this took a million years. 
but I forgot it took this long. <laughs> That's what makes it funny, okay? I get it. I'm not an idiot. I get it. Release an unfinished video just like the game. Not, not even the worst meta joke I can imagine. Well, I'm assuming you can see why I, this is what you're canon, not canonically, it doesn't matter what you do, or it's like, it's not canon to help Wilmer or not, it doesn't matter. He's happy in the prison too, so, point is, you can see why I didn't want to do this as the first thing after the game actually started, right? <laughs> People were already, like, getting, tearing their hair out just from me talking to NPCs, which I actually consider to be gameplay, whereas this is just a very, very, very long bit. <laughs> Now imagine doing this when you're not streaming, you're not hanging out with your friends, you're just sitting at home alone, playing Barkley 2. Turns out talking to NPCs is much better than combat, it is. I was doing a bad job, I'll take some of the blame, but I will also cope and seethe by saying yes, the combat's not very good. Like I said, some people are going to groan. I already said this, but people are gonna this is not my last Barkley 2 stream. I'm not, it, the next stream probably won't be Barkley 2. I'm going to take some time and really get a bunch of resources together, download Game Maker 1.4, blah, 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 and do another real Barkley 2 stream. And that was when I was going to show off a bunch of alternate quest endings, but I fucking got thrown, I fucking got taken to the sewer before I wanted to, and then I got thrown in the Hooska before I wanted to. Um, so I think I'll just do this. I'll show off the uh, Eric Pet Store quest, and then I'll probably call it a night. Oh man, John Eleven. So was the game actually going to feature Charles Barkley again, or did they just carry the name over for recognition? Well, it's not for recognition, it's for, because it is a direct sequel to Barkley 1. But, yes, that was something people were wondering about from the beginning, which is that Barkley 1 was just a silly game for fun, for free. Would you, legally selling a game using the name Charles Barkley, I don't know if that's covered by, like, parody or whatever. I think, the point is, this is, takes place, like, thousands of years after the first game. I'm pretty sure Barkley's meant to be long dead. Although, I believe I read from something from a dev... There's going to be, like, a scene where, Bar where Hoops talks to his dad. I don't know if it's going to be, like, a dream or what. But, um, I think at some point Charles Barkley would have shown up, whether they actually will ever explicitly say the words Charles Barkley in the final of the game. I mean, obviously it's never coming out, but would they have? I think it m they might have gone another way not to say it as a joke. Either way, I don't think it should be illegal. Barkley 2 was been in development since before Enter the Gungeon, before all these other amazing indie shooter games. So yeah, um, if the game did come out in, let's say, 2019, let's say somehow they managed to finish it, but they took them long, people would have very negatively compared the gameplay, the gunplay. Gunplay to one of those games. Assuming it wasn't more better refined, which obviously it would have been, but you know, you know. I love the bit of the clock sound just getting more and more intense over the time. Shibi says, the game's combat art style kind of reminds me of Shadowrun. It's not entirely unlike Shadowrun. I guess you could say that. The post-cyberpocalyptic feature. Any plans for channel points? I don't actually have any plans. But it would be nice to have something. If I could come up with a good idea.
Am I up next? Is this the housing department? Yes, yes, yes. This is the department of population and housing. Where is your papers? Oh, um. Would you like to give amortization sketch on this? Um, I'm here on behalf of Mr. Wilmer. He needs to me to make his mortgage payment. Um, I, I've never done this before. Am I, am I doing it right? Mr. Wilmer. Yes, yes. Bungalow 2. More like Mr. Delinquent. That'll be 100 Nero shekels to renew. With a 20 surcharge for, um, let's call it, expedient processing. Bringing the total to 120 Nero shekels. But Wilmer said it would only be 100 Nero shekels. Is Crybaby going to have to go back to the line or is Crybaby going to pay up? Pay up for a dispute. It should only cost it. No, no, no. Just, I'll just pay it. Well... I guess I've got no choice. I don't want Mr. Wilmer to get evicted after all he's done for me. Okay, here's the money. <laughs> Thanks for your business. We'll make sure Wilmer gets to stay in his house a little longer. Now get out of here. We're closing. It's my lunch break. And I'll be damned if I miss my potted meat with termites spread for use. Now scram, kid. Anything else? Hurry up. Anything else? Well, I have something else for you. Make it quick. Um, I guess you can bring Alphaleda's paper, too. Interesting. Yeah, I definitely never did the Alphaleda quest. Somehow I doubt that they would let you, like, you know, save her. <laughs> now I gotta find Eric. Yo, what's up? It's everyone's favorite. Pimp Ouija. Raid me again. What a lad. Maybe if you give yourself Chi Engine to give yourself unlimited Nero Shekels. You know what? If Chi Engine can work on this game, I don't really understand how Chi Engine works, but if, if that's like a possibility, I'll give it a shot. It would be nice just to like explore the boundaries, see anything that's possible. Every I just want to see everything that's possible in this game, okay? You know what I mean? You know what I freaking mean, man? I just freaking like the game so much. I just want to know more about it. Now I just need to uh, find Eric. Find Eric, then find the pet shop. It's so not hard. It's so not hard to navigate around this city. But I still get lost. I still continuously get lost over and over again. That's okay, though. I'm having fun hanging out. I'm having fun hanging out. Okay, so here's the pet store. The pet store is near this little nook and cranny. I'll take your quest. I'll do your quest if I can remember it. So another thing I didn't finish is the stealing the fruits subquest. I'm not sure how this one plays out other than I think if you do this subquest, then you know at the end, right at the end before I restarted, there were all those crucified corpses. I know there's a graphic in the game files of a crucified cornrow and juice box. So I think there's a way you can get them killed. I can empathize with feature creep, you know? I mean, I get it. I get it. They just wanted to make the coolest game they could possibly make, all right? Go north from Gilbert's Peak. Is, is this a b-ball court? The tall, dignified post stands proudly on the asphalt. Rusty chain hoops hang like leaves of the weeping willow. This is definitely a b-ball court. Huh. That was from a poem, I think. Just an empty b-ball court out here in the middle of Tierna No. Nobody playing. Nobody hooping or picking rolls or making free throws. No jock jams or cheerleaders or dunks. Nothing. Guess that's kind of like me. Why do I have to find the cyber dwarf? Why do I have to be here on the Necron 7? Why can't I just go home and shoot hoops? Who am I? Sigh. Look at this court. It's barren as the sands of Al Akihabara. Not to mention, we don't have enough players. So any attempt to just slam just ends up getting jammed. I hate to say it, but it might be a baller's worst nightmare. It's a crying shame. These hoops are useless without enough B-ballers. Yeah, hey, are you a baller? 
I ball to live. <laughs> my baller? Oh, dip, me too. They call me Tiernan Oak Bowler Queen. So you better believe I'm all about ball and words. They're starting up an all new dwarf league in the um, in Brain City. I love to put a team together, but sadly, there's very little interest besides Emilio and the tenement buildings in the north. Why is it so hard to find b ballers? It's the best sport. Sign of the times. I guess this brave new reality of wrist comps and MMOs keep prospective ballers off the courts, glued to their screens. Now I know oligarchy online is all the rage, but I think you'd think some dwarf would want to get out and play 60 every now and then. The Terran and Oak Baller Queen. Maybe there is some way I could help her out. Frub off, no. Well, I'm kind of an amnesiac searching for the cyber dwarf on a quest to find out my identity, but I guess I've got some time to help you look. <laughs> I knew you were down. The name of the game is pure three-on-three -three street ball, so we'll need a third baller for our team, and then three others to play against. I know Emilio would love to play, but he put on too many pounds, cooped up waiting for more players. Now he can't fit through the door frame. Too big to ball? Sounds like someone didn't play 60. Yeah, we kept on to play 60 or even 45, but he wouldn't even play 15. We should get the word out to more kids that even even in the off season, play 60 is an important part of your daily activities. You said it, X1. Gotta play 60. Pimp Luigi. Does Cybershell have a Discord? No, I do not. I used to way, way, way back in the day, but I didn't really, I didn't really care for managing a Discord. So, anyways, we need to find a third baller. Any ideas? No one comes to mind, but I'm on the case. I wouldn't dally. So the governor doesn't catch wind of the game and put put hoop locks up. So you can actually play three on three basketball. It's like a good tactics game. Um, I think it's in this version. If not, there was a separate standalone EXE they re released where you could play b-ball tactics. Hey, what are those glasses you're holding? They look pretty cool. Oh, they're nothing. Don't worry about them. Or me. I've seen glasses like that used for VidCons. You put on the glasses and it's like you're actually inside the VidCon. Are they kind of like that? Not really. Maybe. Do you want to buy a chair? That chair down there? I don't really have anywhere to put it and it's kind of beat up, so no thanks. Oh. I'm trying to get rid of it. 40, 40 Nero shekels. Let me know if you won't know someone who wants it. Sure. See ya. Hey, what's going on? I'm kind of new here. What are you guys doing? Are you there? Why are your glasses red? Dad gummit. Think this guy might be gone. Um, that guy who looks like you. Do you know him? Uh, he's not moving or breathing or anything. Leave alone. Uh, hey, there's a guy who's not breathing. I think he needs help. Not now. Really think something might be wrong. But hey, uh, hey, I don't know if you can hear me. One of your friends isn't, uh, he's not moving or breathing or anything. Mm, mud boot. I really think this guy needs help. Cubic says, Jesus is kind of dark. Yeah, that's a recurring theme. His Barkley 2 end up being randomly, insanely dark all the time. Hey, are you with all those people with wearing glasses in the apartment back there? Huh? Yeah, you want to buy a chair? Uh, I think someone there might... I think they might be dead. He had red glasses and he wasn't breathing. The chair, uh... Oh. I'll clean him up. Yeah. I'm, uh, I don't know. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry. 25 Nero Shekels to chair. No, 20. No, I don't want the chair. I... I just wanted to let you know. Okay. Hey, you look kind of a baller. You ever hear about the Chaos Dunk? It sounds kind of familiar. What is it? Well, it's just a rumor, but apparently it's a dunk that has the power of a 150 megaton nuclear blast. Only oldest and wisest of the ballers could ever pull it off. Sounds pretty crazy, huh? Supposedly someone pulled it off a long time ago and destroyed some of, destroyed some Earth city called Neo New York. Yeah, that does sound crazy. I don't know if I believe that. I've seen ballers do some pretty crazy things, but a jam as verboten as that? It's gotta be a fairy tale. Holy dunks and vamp slams are one thing, but a chaos dunk? There's no way to ever get that kind of power. P power. See, there are actually, believe it or not, a few little tangential references and threads to Barkley 1. Yeah, Amelia does seem like the kind of character they would have gotten a portrait. Probably would have had a portrait if the game, you know, was finished. Do you want the share? It's eight Nero shekels. Um, do you really need money? You're not better than me. Give her a stern tongue wagging. 
Now look here, Missy. Sounds to me like you need to get off your rump and take some control over your life. Get a job. Get a life. And most of all, get a grip. Capiche? Shut up. Shut up. Clispate, shut up. Well, you'll never learn the value of a Nero shekel with that attitude. Go away. <laughs> doesn't seem so bad, you just gotta make the combat not shitty. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you mean, man. I know what you mean. This is definitely the same guy as there. Well, I'm going guns fishing. It takes me a little time to get to the lower levels. I still haven't found fucking Eric. There he is. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Am I gonna help him? Yes, I'll help you. I'll help you get a job. Now I just gotta find the, uh, bloody... Whatchamacallit again. Ooh, ooh, mmm. Mmm. Hey there, you alright? You waiting for the doctor? Hmm. Get back. Marble. No, rats! I lost. I was at level 48, too. Ah, sorry. I hope I didn't bother you. That's a wrist-mounted video game console, huh? Now I've seen it all. Heh. <laughs> no sweat, kid. Being able to tune out distractions is half the game. Didn't even know you were there. And yeah, it's a wrist comp 2054. Pretty ancient. Really ancient tech. But it plays pretty much everything you could think of if you got the right emulators installed. And look! It's on my wrist. I see that. Looks kind of red. Yeah, yeah, that's what the doc said. It's fine. And like I told her, of course, it's got a it's got a mount to the skin. Only 0.12 picoseconds of latency. Is that wild or what? Yeah, really wild, I think. So, what kind of game are you playing? Well, it's a unique VidCon take on a traditional dwarf game of marbles. No offense, but I doubt you've ever heard of it. It's a bit of a rarity. Marbles, huh? Let me take a look. Oh, that's Castle Cat's Eye, Solace of the Marble, Rabbit Hole 40, Grid Zero, a marbling game, or Bolly Mix. It's got to be Grid Zero. I may be wrong, but that's G-R-I-D-S-0, a marbling game. Of course it's not, you imp- Heh. <laughs> Did you say G-R-I-D-S-0? I never liked the original, but the prequel had some pretty interesting stuff going on. Not a masterpiece, but it has some taste really ta tasteful mechanics. Yeah, tasteful. I'll use that when I rate it. Anyways, that's an interesting vintage pick, kid. <laughs> wonder what else you've got up your sleeve. Thanks. Probably no more than me, though. Anyway, I'm playing Marblers in Pass 2. You wouldn't think it, but it's pretty cerebral for a marbles game. But I wouldn't be playing it if I wasn't stuck waiting here. Doc says I need to hang around until this ointment sets in. If it doesn't, I'm gonna have to get surgery. Sarcoptic Mange. You ever heard, even heard of that? Well, I have zero medical expertise, but I think you should probably do what she says. Sarcoptic Mange? Just the name sounds scary. Oh, come on, you're siding with her in there? What a joke. Don't get me wrong, I cherish every chance I get to squeeze in some gaming time. But I've got important stuff to do in Tirnanog. You see, I'm closing in on some rare game. Rare games. Or, I mean... Maybe we should talk later. I think I should focus on getting out of here. Oh, okay. Well, good luck until then. I'll let you catch up later. Cool. Hopefully out in the real world and not cooped up in here waiting. Dr. Tachiyoni, what's your problem? Oh, sorry, I didn't know I couldn't be in here. You can. It's a clinic. What's your problem? Oh, I see. I don't know who I am or, or where I came from. I think I might have been born out of an egg. Hmm. Grapes, twice a day. Grapes? Yes, grapes. How are grapes gonna help me? They contain an abundance of vitamins and plenty of other important things. T tannins, maybe, stuff like that. You aren't allergic, are you? T to grapes? Allergic to anything. Grapes, garlic, slamacite. Um, I wanna say diabetes? Hmm. Grapes, thrice a day. How old are you? I don't know, I have amnesia, remember? Good, come and see me in an hour. Until then, get to a bar and drink some of the grape. Okay. Thanks, I guess. Most people don't like to hang out at clinic. What makes you different? Oh, um, nothing. I think I'm gonna go. Get some of the grape and see me in an hour. I don't know. I don't know what happens if you come back to her after you do the grape drinking with Gelasio. Ah, uh, frick. There's nothing up here.
This must be Corn and Rose Granny's house. The door is just wide open. Corn said, just ignore the tape, and here goes. Hmm, I think this is that fruit basket Mr. Corn asked me to get. Should I take it? Got the fruit basket. Gotta feed those kids! Huh. What's this behind the Rambutans? A note? Wait, this isn't a note. It's a map! Found sewer floor two map. See, that would have helped me. Wow, this could be really useful. Hmm. Should I tell Cornrow? Keep it for myself. Welcome to Mortimer's Candy Shop, youngster. What can I get for you? This is a candy store? Then I want candy, of course. Candy, candy, candy. Well, I just sell recipes here, actually. During the transition of the new governor, we can't sell candy. Go to the bank or get out of Tiernanoke. A candy store with no candy? What kind of scam is this? Well... There's no law against selling recipes in case you come across another confectioner out in the wasteland, or, I suppose, a 3D printer would work too. What do you mean by printing candy? And what I said, candy printing from a 3D printer. Wow, you can do that? Of course you can. What year do you think we're living in? 2053? You can print out anything you like. Guns, candy, organs, vidcons, even if you aren't a purist. Wow. Too bad the governor also outlawed 3D printers, but maybe outside Tirnano you can find one. So what do you say, want some recipes? Sure, let me take a look at your recipes. Obviously, I don't have enough for any of this shit. I don't even think it's possible to get 900 neuro shekels. Hey, X1. Surprised you aren't tired of talking with me yet. Not that I have anything against you. I really like talking with you. I'm fortunate you're even talking with me. It's just, um, excuse me. Have we met before? Yeah. Yeah, we met before. You, you really don't remember me? No. Just as well. I hate to mess up your life any more than I already have. Thanks for talking with me as long as you have. It means a lot that you tried. What do you mean we've met before? I don't think I know you. I... That's unfortunate to hear. I was really hoping you'd remember me. What? Never mind. There's like this whole weird subplot by this guy where he like, he experiences time like backwards. It's, it's really strange. Is this how you get into the sewers normally? Yeah, the sewers. This is the real entrance, but I'm not trying to go in the sewers yet. Can you even leave the scene to someone? Yes. Um, you can take into the Huskow, then you escape the Huskow, and as soon as you do that, then you're just done. You're basically done with the demo, unfortunately. Discovered the fishing lure called Ladybug. Can you even get additional Nero shekels? You can. At least there's at least one subquest gives you gives you some. And I'm almost positive at least like, a few more. There's, there's got to be some ways to get them. But there aren't a lot of ways. There's almost positively not enough way to get 900. Enemies, as far as I know, don't drop Neuro Shekels. Mayhaps they do, but I don't, I don't remember seeing that. Alright, Eric is over here by this part of the game. Enemies can only drop more shitty guns. That sounds about right. That sounds about right. Extreme rolling. I'm not even 100% sure that this is faster. Howdy, you new here? Yeah, I'm kind of lost. Know the feeling. We're new here too. Me and the girls. The girls. Those cows over there. I'm a rancher. Guess I used to be a rancher back when I had a pasture to put my cows in. Nowadays, there's nowhere for them to graze. They're stuck eating the grass in between cobblestones. I'm really worried I might have to get rid of them. Or worse. Girls are getting skinny. Nobody likes a skinny cow. Getting worried I might have to find a pasture or get rid of them soon. Okay. Cow. Uh, hey there. Moo. Settle down now, Bess. Don't mind her. She's just a little hungry. I've never talked to that person before in any of the times I've ever played this demo. Remember to floss. I'm really fascinated by how alive the city feels. It's, it's, it's odd. It's an odd game. Um, time passes and like you'll get locked out of certain quests too, so you can only do so much in a certain playthrough. It's a peculiar game. I don't understand why they were so ambitious.
It's not even that big. Ternanog is not even that big. And I still get lost in it. I guess that means I did something right. Yeah, see, look, now the uh, housing is closed. Um, if I go back to Wilmer, he'll be like, I think he'll be like, oh, thank you for paying my rent. The bank. There's another little quest here. Look at those posers, rebels, sitting on their bumpers all day, waiting for someone to fix all their problems. Well, that ain't gonna be me. I'm here to party. Where's that purple stuff at? Old Gutterhound's got a wet his whistle. Oh boy, I'm gonna get cuffed up tonight. What's your problem with the rebels? I got two problems with them. First, they don't know how to party. That's the big one. Second, they don't do diddly. I hiked all the way through the series by myself to see what kind of shenanigans are going down. What do I see when I get there? We've got this chair that'll scramble your brains and all that egghead bunk. Waste my damn time. Wait, you made it all the way through the sewers on your own? Let me tell you something, kid. I eat fistians like like I eat grapes. By, by the cluster. Hey, speaking of you, you got any of that purple stuff? Purple stuff? What's that? Ah, uh, you're straight off the vine, my friend. It's grape juice. Mother Nature's sweet, sweet gift to dwarves. It's how the real rebels roll back in the BC, Brain City. That grape stuff sounds good. Well, I'm not supposed to talk to strangers. Bye. Hey, now, we just started chewing the flubber. No need to rush off. Tell you what, I got an idea, kid. Want to hear it? Well, I guess you can tell me. boy. So, look, I got a plan. If I'm going to get fully cuffed up tonight, I'm going to need to get some serious scratch. Moolah, you know. You know where they keep it? That Kukulin safe house, where the Duregars keep their loot. All day I've been watching the blue skins marching in neuro treckles by the brain load. Thinking we bust the place up, run off with the dough, split a 50-50, and then we hit the purple stuff. <laughs> what do you say, kid? Sure, I'm in. Well, I don't know about stealing, but if it's from the Duregars, I guess it's okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I like to hear. So here's, here's the skinny kid. The bank is closed down, it's all changed up. Plus, they're blue skins lousing up the place all hours of the day. But I got a little birdie told me something might be hitting the mainframe shortly, and then poof. Lights out, we get to work. Ah, what does that mean? It means it'll be time to make a withdrawal by force. That sounds extreme. Not only extreme, but in fact, triple extreme. So I need you to come back here in a bit and we'll start the operation. Got it. But there is actually something you can do for you now. You see, we come busting out of that bank with a low beneath all shack. Because well, you're going to need a place to lo lay low for a bit. There's going to be a lot of blue heat on the street after this ice. Oh! You're right, I didn't even think of that. What did my pappy always say before the particular potent strain of Concord juice took his life? Plan your heist? Nice, your plan. Well, we made a lot of good friends in Tiernog recently. Mr. Wilt, nah, kid. Nog's out his eye on the walls. We rounded up before the new governor even got here. We got to go deeper. Deeper? Yeah. What are those rotten blue skins patrolling the sewers? But if you know a good hiding spot for us, we're going to lay low until the heat drops. Okay, so I'll try to find a safe space in the sewers. Got it. Don't forget, kid. We don't have all day. This borking is going to hit the system shortly. We'll be here before then we can start cashing in. But don't be late. Okay, I'll be back. I'm probably definitely not going to do that subquest this stream. I'm just trying to fucking find the pet store again. What about you? I can recruit you for b-ball tactics, right? Piss off, kid. Maybe. There's some there's some people you can recruit for b-ball tactics. Someone was mentioning it earlier. Maybe this guy is not one of the guys. Although I swear, I swear I remember seeing this guy when I played b-ball tactics as one of like the, the character sprites. I was trying to see if I get extra. Here we go. See? Hey, we have a game of b-ball starting pretty soon. We need some more ballers. Wanna join b-ball? Eh? That old pastime and not something more athletic like land darts. <laughs> there's a whole b-ball court on the other end of town. Hmm. 20 shekels. What? 20 neuro shekels. That's right. If you want the skills, you gotta pay the bills. Diabolical. I don't have it. Sorry. 20 steer rich, my blood. I'm sure there's someone else I can recruit. I could recruit. I'll do b-ball tactics next time. Don't worry. Five hour down. We're not even done the quest. No, there's plenty. There's plenty you, you folks haven't even seen. You weren't even aware of. Here's Eric. I did a complete fucking loop of the whole city. Perhaps this is the real Barkley too. No more, no less. So true.
Finally. Uh, well, I can't really afford to keep someone on for too long, but I think I have a job you could do. Do you have any promoting experience? Do you think it maybe advertise this place, convince some people to check us out and get a pet? Well, I'm asking for a friend, but I think that'd be right up his alley. Okay, great. I'm excited to see what your friend's skills and qualifications are. Just take this application and get your friend to fill it out. It's basic resume stuff. Resume, huh? Perhaps the real Barkley 2 was the friends we made along the way. So bloody true. X1, my man. Look at that basket of fruit you got there. Ooh, baby. Look at those strawberries. Juice box green. Good tonight. Good job, kid. Here's a little change for your pocket. Cornrow took the cornucopia and Ramby Tans. Wow. Thanks, Mr. Cornrow. Does He didn't even give me fucking enough to hire the guy. <laughs> now let's see. What the? There's no map here. Fucking Viv is screwing us again. Juice box sounds like Uncle Cornrow is angry. Kid, there wasn't a map in here, was there? Oh, yeah. I found this map. Oh, so you had it the whole time, kid. You holding out on me in juice box. Yikes, yeah, that's not what I was trying to do. They just uh, fell out from behind their ambutans. I was going to give it to you, I promise. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Who said I wanted to touch it, kid? You got your prints on it. It's your problem now. Oh, so I should keep it? Look, man, I don't know. I did not see them. I did not know they were behind the ambutans. I do not know anything about that map and wherever it leads. Just for your sake, I'd keep that thing out of Duragar eyes. Oh, okay, so a secret, you say? Catching on, kid. No, hey. Got something else for you. This one's a little tricky. Uh, my nephew Juicebox. He's a good kid. You don't get math. I just don't get math. Gave him some money to get candy at Morty's shop. Well, Juicebox cognates old Morty a tenner for a dime candy and gets one euro shackle back. Poor Juicebox. Didn't know we got the wrong change. Numbers mystify me. So I need you to go to Mortimer's candy shop and get that change back. Think you can do that? Sure. Now that's what I'm talking about. Okay, now. I'm going to give you my gun. Just show it to Morty to let him know that they're representing me. Thank you very much, Raffle, my pancakes. Thank you, thank you. Otherwise, you'll think you're just horsing around. Shop is next to Granny's place. You must have seen it when you were there earlier. I do it myself, but uh, I gotta teach juice boxes and numbers. Got Cornrow's gun. All right, Mr. Cornrow. Be back in one time. Oh, yeah, kid. Mr. Cornrow, anything else for you? Just take that, too. Okay, Mr. Cornrow. Trying to remember where Eric is. I think up here is the B ball court. No, it's not the B ball court, but B ball court is up in general. Cool to see you streaming, longtime fan of YouTube. Thank you very much, Raffle, my pancakes. It's much appreciated. Right, are people trying to actually give me directions? And I'm completely failing. Great, it's okay. I know you guys like me just aimlessly wandering around, and just extending the playtime. Yeah, the music, the whole vibes. The game has some immac immaculate vibes. You got to admit that much. Making this segment time doesn't assert. Again, it's not timed in the traditional sense in that it's physical, real life, just time passing by. It's more like the more things you do in the game, more quote unquote time passes by or whatever. The vibes are off the charts. I know, man, I know. I know we're close. Here we go. Finally. Your imbecilic presence inches you f closer to my bad side and further from the grandeur of my most prized possession. Speak. Hey, Eric, guess what? I've got some great news. You're never going to believe this. There's a pet store that's hiring in Tirano Tenements. There's only one thing. They need a resume. Uh, resume? You know, like a list of your personal qualifications, your previous jobs, your skills, and all that. I mean, I think. He gave me this sheet that you need to fill out. And do you expect me to do this myself? Well, I guess I could help you out. Uh, yes, I fully expect you to help me out, as you so crudely put it. Okay, we're well, not really sure how to answer some of these questions. Like, references? What does that even mean? 
You sound woefully underqualified for the job. Once again, I'm forced to babysit you through your own overbearing incompetence. Nevertheless, I accept your help, no matter how minuscule it will be. Are you even ready to do this now, or must I wait even longer? Yeah, I think so. Let me take let me take a look at this application. By all means, take your time. Not like I was preoccupied with far more important things. Hmm, so the application has a list of criteria we need to fill out. Looks like there are only five. Bio, references, previous work experience, qualifications, and skills. Sounds pretty easy. All we need to do is give stock professional sounding answers, and you'll definitely get the job. No! I refuse to betray the pet manifesto and my core values for the sake of your precious capitalism. I will veto any answer that requires me to forego pet decency. Know this well, X114JM9. Sigh. We'll just have to find some middle ground that casts you in the most presentable light then, whatever that means. This could have been really easy, Eric. As much as it pains me to suffer your presence, we'll agree to your terms. The first part is simple enough. Do you have a photo lying around? No, I don't have a photo laying around. However, I do have a photo on my person, yes. Ask the right question next time, and you'll make less of an ape of yourself. Your full name? Are you deaf in addition to being thick? It's Eric, E-R-I-C. Peesh? Okay, how old are you? Unknown. Unknown? Ugh, get on with it already. Time might mean nothing to you, but it's of the essence to those of us who have better things to do with it. There's a whole range of incubators eagerly awaiting my ear review. This part seems a bit trickier. It's a personal quote that tells a bit about yourself. There are far too many quotes and credos that resonate with me. Choosing one is like choosing my favorite lizard substance. Any quote will do. No gods, no masters, only pets. Okay, so the next field is for references. I think that's for like people who can back up your work or something. Uh, I guess you don't really have any references, do you, Eric? Guess we could put Exxon for J9. Lots of animals. Let's put Kukule. I guess we could just put my name. I, I don't think this field really matters. Clearly not if your name will suffice. <laughs> Once again, Eric knocks the pet Philistine down a few pegs. Please, faith, Christ. I'm trying to help you out here, Eric. I'm just putting my name down to get this over with. Whatever. Let me take a look at the next field. Uh, looks like it's your previous work experience. I think it's probably better if we didn't mention that chimps and a drink thing. I think it's probably better if I never have to deal with your utter and mitigated incompetence again. You know, man, I've been extremely nice and patient with you. I have no idea why you're being so abusive to me, but uh, the sooner we're done with this, the better. Humph. <laughs> so you do just want my most prized possession. Pathetic. No matter, uh, pathetic, no matter about my previous work experience, none but lots of gumption. Full modded dwarf net pet sub for him. Full time MO player. Cave bad guano. I gotta, I gotta do the moderator. I modded the pet sub for him on dwarf net with the extreme distinction of accumulated a body of work made up of over 20,000 posts. I guess being a forum mod is. is Kind of like a job. I mean, it involves some level of responsibility. It kind of works. I fully intend to utilize my gift and curse, uh, and my curse in the faces of misbehaving pets. Next question. Okay. So it looks like the next field is your qualifications. That's something we could put probably put a positive spin on, right, Eric? I mean, this is a pet store. How qualified do you actually have to be? Rule number one of the pet manifesto: never overestimate. Okay, whatever. What are we gonna put in the mother cuffing blank? Love animals with daily. Unbelievably loud falconry. My barn stars will with you. None. Dysfunctional green. What did we just talk about? No! Had it up to here with your imbecilic suggestions. We're doing this my way! My qualifications? I'll, put, I'll, I'll let these photographs of pregnant moles speak for themselves. What does that even have to do with? You will never understand the way of pets! There's nothing more to say. Your ignorance speaks for itself. Next question. Phew. Looks like we're the last field in this application. Feels like a, a load off my shoulders. Let's see what it is. Outside skills might be re relevant to the job. <laughs> this will be the easiest field to fill out yet. So I'm one of the most talented people I'm even aware of. Yeah, you know, at this point, I don't even care anymore. You're the most talented and most, <laughs> most pleasant person I've known. What else should I put? Okay. Cut through the pet bullshit. I've never was sorry. No skills, product of entropy. <laughs> For starters, I cut through the pet bullshit. Pet bull, I mean, pet bull chips. What does that mean, Eric? Cut the cruft, you know precisely what it means. If you truly don't, then <laughs> you never will. through the pedal. That's it! We're done. That was it. That was the last field we needed to fill out for the resume. I don't think I've ever felt this relieved in my life. We're done, Eric. It's over. Okay, just need your signature and... Oh, oh no. What are you blathering about? Cooperate with this insanity long enough? My precious possession requires my attention. Go on, spit it out. It says we need a cover letter. You know, it's like, I... I can't do this. A cover letter is like an essay about why you want the job. We're gonna have to write a whole paragraphs together. I mean, I... Ugh. Eric, I just can't. I can't do it. 
An essay about pets? As absolutely none of my tutelage wormed its way into that vast, empty cavern you call a skull. I'm the author of the Pet Manifesto! The Pet Manifesto? Is that a spark I see? Into your shriveled, worm-like brainstem sparking in recognition? Who you're talking to and just what I have accomplished? Ha! Pet reality is beyond, fully beyond your mental grasp, it seems. You know, that's probably true. Give me your manifesto. I can't imagine there's anything in here that will ingratiate you with an employer. Or anyone. Anyone at all. I'm gonna go deliver your application to Cuthbert at the pet shop. I'll be back. Who knows? Who knows? Who even cares? <laughs> Got the completed application. Got the pet manifesto. Alright. Back. Back to the pet shop. This was great. I'm glad you liked the pet... The Pet Manifesto sub-quest, or whatever you want to call it. Oh no, this is just a cow lady. This is just a cow lady! Okay, alright, 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 alright. The hoops court. A little unfortunate we're not going to be able to fit any b-ball tactic in today's stream, but whatever. in a circle again. I'm so fucking bad at navigating. It's, it's actually kind of insane. Well, welcome to Mortimer's Candy Shop. What can I get for you, youngster? Hi! You're gonna pick up some money for Mr. Cornrow and Mr. Juicebox. Mr. Cornrow said Mr. Juicebox gave you some money. You got the wrong change in return. Huh. Kid, you're too nice to get mixed up with the likes of those two miscreants. Is a miscreant kind of a harsh word? Mr. Cornrow, I should show you this gun so you know I'm here for him. Whoa! Let's slow down here. Uh, yeah, what the hell is Cornrow trying to pull? Tell him I wasn't moving in on a shipment. I was just trying to get my piece of the pie. Oh, I'm sure this isn't that big of a deal. Mr. Cornrow is just trying to help Ju Mr. Juicebox with his numbers. Look, man, take the recipe. Tell Cornrow I didn't mean anything by it. What recipe? The Choco Mallows recipe. Oh, that's how you get it. I was like, it's cost 900 fucking neuro shekels. There's no way. Wow, this looks like a great recipe. Mr. Cornrow will love it. J just put the gun down. Let me run my shopping piece. Oh, what about Mr. Juicebox change? Cliss Paith Christ. Where are the Duragars when you need them? Thanks, Morty. I'll see you later. Hey, there we go. There's some nice, uh, there's some nice money. Hello. So have we met before? Does it matter? Probably clear by now we aren't capable of having a meaningful conversation. Um, I guess so. I'm pretty sure I've never seen you before. It's not like we were good friends or and I forgot or anything. I don't really know what I am, but I know I wouldn't do that. Yeah, that's what I was saying. We had never met before. This is a strange, strange bit. Alright, alright. Gelazio is over here. When do we start a budding romance? Like, I don't know! Now I want to know what's the deal with the cow lady and where's... What's her subquest like? Look who it is, Juicebox. It's our new best buddy, X1. You get that recipe from old Morty? Hey, I didn't know he was also going to give me a recipe. Heh. <laughs> Call it a hunch, kid. Choco Mallows, am I right? Hand it over. Oh, uh, sure. Ah, we got it, Juicy, my boy. We finally got it. Yeah, yeah, kid, whatever. Juicy, you got a leg up on Mr. Z now. Mr. Z? Forget about Mr. Z, kid. You don't want to get mixed up in that scene. Wow, okay, Mr. Cornrow. Oh, I almost forgot. Morty said he owed... You even more than what you said. He gave me 63 old Neo Shakes. Woo boy! Give it to your. Oh, come on. You dingus. Keep the rest for yourself. Wow, thanks, Mr. Cornrow. Hey, no problem, kid. I'm always happy to do favors for people in need. Right, Juicebox? Yep. Now, let me tell you something, kid. People talk about all those other cities. Though. They're the Brain City, the Social. Forget them. They're not real. I think people can get away from Kukulin on his own. Ziggurat? Ain't nothing outside here, no, no. No way. And the Cyber Dwarf? Yeah, people talk about him like he's a leader of Longinus or whatever, but I say he's a fairy tale. Ain't no cyber dwarf. Ain't nobody fighting our fights for us. N no cyber dwarf? Never was, never will be. But forget about it, kid. Got one last thing for you to do. Think you're up for it? I, I guess. Yeah, that's the stuff, kid. Remember Granny? She's a sweetheart, but she's getting a bit old, starting to forget things. You know how the elderly can be. Well, this morning she up and left her house without taking her vitamins. Can you believe it? She's getting on her years, and she needs those vitamins. I've just got her best interests at heart, you know, so I want you to take the syringe and inject her with vitamins. Think you can handle that? Uh, sure, Mr. Cornrow. That's really thoughtful of you. Take care of my kin, kid. Takes care of his kin. Here's the thing. Just make sure Granny doesn't see you do it. Do it from behind or something. She's an ordinary old coot. She doesn't like to take her medicine, even if it's what's best for her. At this point, it's really up to us to take care of her, you know. I understand, Mr. Cornrow. I'll make sure Granny gets her medicine. Do you know where she is? She's at Giuseppe's place. Oh, yeah, that lady I couldn't talk to. 
He's in that warehouse with the weird sign in the door. You know, the one in the main shopping district. All right, I'll go look for her. Like your spirit, kid. You're going places. Got Granny's medicine. Lovely. Hey, you're back. You got your friend's resume for me? Yeah, here it is. Great. You have his cover letter too? I have Eric's pet manifesto. Should I give that? I love it's on the, the lined paper, like from grade school. Here's the cover letter. You can tell he really wants to work. Huh. The pet manifesto. Dear class, this is going to be 50 pages long. It's for a cover letter, not a book. Okay, um, don't tell your friend, but I'll just hang on to this and read this letter. I'm trying to run uh, a business. I don't have time for a novella, but I'll take it as a good sign. I guess your friend must really want the job. I can't believe that went over well. Okay, now the application itself. Let's see. This... This is, um, this is really tough. I can't tell if this guy is serious or not. I assure you, he's serious. He's extremely serious, actually. Well, I'll tell you what. Serious or not, this guy needs to learn some professionals. He can't just phone in an application expect to get a job because I'm desperate. I'm going to be destitute if I don't turn the store around. I mean, he totally can. That's my problem. But what a screwed up thing to do. I just want to be a businessman. I understand reservations. He's a strange guy for sure. He definitely cares about his pets, though. That much I can guarantee. Damn. Those love to take a chance. I'm not in much of a position to turn down help. All right, and he's got the job. I want him here as soon as he can get here. It's a lot of work to do. Got it. Thanks, mister. I'll go tell him. Unbelievable. So much back and forth. Back and forth. Again, you're supposed to be doing multiple subquests or little plot, like, side quests at the same time, so. Got one nothings. Oh, hooray! Are you about to commit murder? Perhaps. Perhaps. Sorry, I know Eric is to the right. I'm trying to remember where the uh, church was. The church must be the left. Hey Eric, guess what? I'll begin to fathom what sub-simian process is occurring behind those glassy eyes. X X114 Jam 9. So I'll not even venture a guess. You got the job! Cuthbert, the pet store owner, said you should start immediately. <sighs> I suppose you think I owe you now, don't I? Sad. But not surprising. Yes, I did promise you my most precious possession, but it pains me to part with it. I'm willing to give you as payment. If I promise to use it only for good. Sure, I guess. Here you are then. My magnum opus. The pet manifesto. Eric, you already gave me your manifesto. Oh, did I? I believe you fingered yourself as a careless reader then, X114 Jam 9. How could you miss it then? Act 4. Further treatises on petdom. So clearly it hints at the existence of a secret. Here to for unpublished chapter. Here is my final work. My masterpiece, painstakingly crafted for many arduous nights, guided only by the light of my prize winning glowworm collection. Received pet apocrypha. Thank you. Yes, I am appreciative of this. No, I'm not completely convinced of your noble intentions. It's only fair of me to uphold my end of the bargain. Use it as wisely as I have. Now it is time for me to leave you here to mull in your pet store. Pet ignorance. The trials and tribulations of the pet world await me. Bye, Eric. Classic. Simply classic. Oh, right, the church. I was like, I go to Granny's place. Hello, nice to meet you. We just met. I... No, you're trying to trick me. Why would I trick you? I'm Eintag Dwarf. I'm very valuable, supposedly, anyways. I don't know if that's still the case. What does that mean? I'm not sure how to say this. You're the only person I've ever spoken to. I don't really understand. It's difficult to describe, but I'm an Eintag Dwarf. We have many traits, most of which we aren't aware of until we're a little older. Or is it younger, if we even get that far? What does this mean? Most of us just pass by the people whom we belong. Only if we're really lucky can we establish some sort of bond with someone. Oh, so that's me? I can help you? I don't know if you can help me. Eintag dwarves have a different perception of spatial reality than others. Even other dwarfs. We're born, born knowing quite a few things, but aren't always on the proper spatial trajectory to do anything about it. Most of us just fade away. How can I help you then? We're friends. Really? Definitely. Thanks. I'm not sure if our lives share the same trajectory. The, th the things you've said to me thus far suggest this. You may not be able to help me, even if you want to. What do I need to do? Ask me to come with you. Where? Anywhere. Away, not here. I'll die if I stay here. Okay, then. 
Sure, join my party. Please, I need you to come with me. Huh? What? Come on, let's go. I want to help you. I don't understand. Go where? Anywhere. Away. Not here. You told me this is where you wanted. I didn't say those things. I don't even know who you are. Yes, you do. We just talked. You told me all about you. No, I've only just seen you. I don't understand this. Please let me help you. I don't understand what's going on. Things are really hazy now. Is this what it's like to be an Eintag? I don't know, Ludwig. Okay, yes, it's the whole Father Giuseppe speech again. Hmm, I think this is Mr. Cornrow's granny. Should I give her the vitamins? Okay, well, here goes. Wha what, young man? No need to be so uncouth. I'm feeling... Uh... <laughs> Looks like I got here just in the nick of time. I guess going so long without her vitamins made her tired. I'm not going to want to wake her up. She needs all the rest she can get. I'm not going to bother her. You sure saved that granny. I know, right? I guess you could say I'm a little bit of a hero. Just went in a big circle like I always frickin' do. What's down from the tutorial gremlin? Just this asshole. Just this fucking asshole. Um, I don't know. What's this? Huh? Looks like cornrow and juice box are gone. There's a note here. I wonder what it says. Caught cornrow's plea. Hmm. The note says there's a gun by the crate. Got juice box's gun. Looks like cornrow and juice box are in trouble. After all that hard work, I can't possibly just sit on my laurels while my buds are in danger. Wonder where they were taken. For now, I worked up a sweat all over. I worked up a sweat running all over town. I'm tired out. For hard day's work, I sure got my due. Sure was tough, but in the end, I think it was worth it. Hey, I even got to help out the community in the process. I consider this mission accomplished. Mission complete. Mission complete. Mission complete. I've spent my life training for this moment. I'm fully aware of the gravity of the task ahead of me. My vow to uphold the dignity of the pets in this store, even with force if need be. If you know this well, X114 Jam 9, I will not fail these pets. Okay. Okay. Well, I just really wanted to finish that subquest for why? No reason. No, no bloody reason on earth. And, um. Look, it's the guy whose piss I drank. Um. Oh, wait, I guess I can talk to Mr. Wilmer. This will be a good place to end it. Hey, Mr. Wilmer, I took care of your mortgage. You're going to stay for another 30 years. Uh, I knew you'd pull through, and that wasn't so hard, was it? Nah, it wasn't too bad. Just some really long, slow lines. Kind of afraid that I wouldn't make it in time, but I guess I did. Proud of you, Sonny. Here, take this as a token of my gratitude. Found Wilmer's new recipe. Wow, thanks a bunch, Mr. Wilmer. Don't mention it. I can't thank you enough. Can't handle the lines and the crowds like I used to. Now, there's something old Wilmer can do for you. What is Tirnanog, really? Why is this the home of the dwarves? Tirnanog? Well, it's home, whether we like it or not. It's a rough and tumble place, so we don't have much. Uh, but it's what we got. What do you mean? See, youngster, kool has been... <laughs> Excuse me, I got a little... Something stuck in my windpipes there. He's been rounding up the dwarves all over the galaxy and putting most of them in Tirnanog. None of us knows why. Some people say it's because when he takes all of the dwarves here, it's going to take us to a new place. A better place. I don't know if I believe that. I don't know if I disbelieve it. It sure sounds nice. I don't get it. Why is this Kukulain guy doing all this? I don't get it either, youngster. <laughs> what I do know is that we can't leave. At least not at the front door. The Durga Durgars will stop us. There is lackeys. Some folks say get out through the sewer system at the north end of town. But I think that tired notion is a load of horse patoot. Me? 
I'm staying put. Tiernan Oak's a tough place, but old Wilmer's even tougher. I know this is going to sound crazy, but what the hedge is Necron 7? Youngster, don't sound crazy at all. None of us, none of us really knows where we are anymore. We do know a little. This, all of this, we're on the ancient dwarf space ziggurat, the Necron 7. Now, ain't that a mouthful, huh? Dwarf space ziggurat? What does that even mean? This is the Necron 7, this spaceship or something. Nobody knows how big it is, but some people say it's the size of a whole planet. Maybe it's bigger. Maybe it's smaller. I don't know. Right now, we're floating somewhere in outer space. Uh, that's where we've been for as long as old Wilmer can remember. We are in Necron 7, youngster. Ternanog is part of Necron 7 we're in. New home for dwarfs, for better or for worse. Uh, okay, oh. And by the way, youngster, I wanted to saltwater taffy. Oh, Mr. Wilmer, Mr. Wilmer. Oh, did he actually fall asleep? I want to ask him more questions. Ah, that's okay. You know what? I'm just going to call the stream. I'm just going to call the stream. I, I already I was going to call the stream when I originally finished, but then, uh, no, nah, I'm good. Okay. I had a great time. I had a great time hanging out playing Barkley. I hope you were intrigued by this interesting, interesting game, right? It's, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of content I didn't even show, okay? I didn't even show the main way to complete the, the quest in Tyrion and Oak and stuff. And there's all this stuff that I don't get to see because I haven't, like, I'm going to, I'll do a real crack the, crack the old egg open stream on Barkley 2. Not next time I stream, but like at some point in the future, I'll do another Barkley stream, a more in-depth Barkley stream. I had a great time. Thank you everyone for hanging out. Thank you everyone for the raids and the subs and the messages and just the hanging. Goodbye. Goodbye, guys. Goodbye.